dignitaries, the faculties to please uh, lighten the lamp and we should start the inauguration function. Thank you. Dr. Jha. Rajiv, sir. K.P. Agarwal, sir. Dr. Roshan Vate, sir, please. I request everyone to take their seats. Hmm. So we have a first talk on the meniscus tear type and repair technique. To deliver the talk, we have Dr. Shwetabrai. Dr. Shwetabrai is a young dynamic arthroscopy surgeon. I request Dr. Shwetabrai to deliver his talk, please. Thank you, Swaroop. Pointer, hai pointer, kuch hai? Uh, <coughs> a very good morning to all. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee, especially Dr. Swaroop and Dr. S.K. Singh sir for giving me this opportunity. So I'll be discussing on meniscus tear types and repair techniques. It's, it will be a brief overview of, of the tear, the types and repairs. It is not working. So meniscus tears are one of the most common knee injuries. Once considered a vestigial structure, meniscectomy was performed at the first sign of meniscus tear. However, over the past few decades, uh, it has been seen time and again that patients with meniscus injuries tend to develop osteoarthritis several years after the injury. And with better understanding of the role of meniscus and advancement in surgical techniques, the indication of meniscus repairs have expanded. If you look at the meniscus, the meniscus are actually cartilaginous structures which are present between the femoral condyle and the tibial plateau. The medial meniscus is a C or rounded shaped structure and the lateral meniscus is a U shaped structure. Uh, it has been seen uh, that a medial meniscectomy decreases contact surface by around 50 to 70 percent and increases contact stress by around 100 percent and the lateral meniscus on the other hand decreases contact surface 
by 40 to 50 percent and increases contact stress by 200 percent. So a lateral meniscectomy is more likely to lead to uh, arthritic changes in the knee later on. So the meniscus, they perform a very vital role of joint stability and force distribution. So coming on to the vascularity of the meniscus, and on this basis, the zone classification of meniscus has been done. If you look on the photograph on the left side, the uh, vascular supply of the meniscus is by the perimeniscal capillary plexus, and it has been shown in studies that the injection of the uh, penetration of the plexus is around 10 to 30 percent in the medial meniscus and around 10 to 25 percent in the lateral meniscus. So on this basis, the proximal 30 percent is known as the red red zone, which is having the vascularity, then which is the zone one, then there is the red white zone, which is having some vascularity, and then there is the white white zone, which is avascular. The role of this is on deciding which meniscus to be repaired and which meniscus to go for meniscectomy. Another important thing to note down is the collagen framework of the meniscus. The meniscus, they are composed of a superficial red network, then the lamellar network, and the most important, the central uh, layer, which is made by concentric collagen rings. And this is uh, actually performing the hoop stresses function. And then there are the radial interwoven fibers. So the variety of meniscus tears are basically longitudinal, the radial, which depends on the, we'll be looking at the biomechanics later on, the horizontal, the oblique, which is uh, basically, uh, it could be an anterior oblique and posterior oblique, depending on the base. And then there could be a complex tear or degenerative tear, which is a combination of above tears. So let us look at the tears one by one. So the longitudinal tears, actually they result from the disruption of superficial radial collagen fibers in line with the circumferential collagen fibers. So this is in the line with the coll circumferential collagen fibers. And the last years of these, the inner meniscus may flip on itself, which, lead, which may lead to the commonly known as bucket handle meniscal tear. And we can appreciate that depending on the size of the uh, longitudinal tear, if we go ahead with a meniscectomy, a partial or even a complete meniscectomy may result. Coming on to the radial tears, the radial tears are in this direction and they actually transect the circumferential, the collagen layer which is circumferentially, they transect it uh, uh, perpendicular to it. And it has been shown that tears of up to 60% of the central zone have insignificant effect on the contact pressure. However, when the tears involve 90% of the meniscus, then there is significant increase in peak pressures and it has been said that a complete radial tear is as good as a complete meniscectomy. Coming on to the horizontal uh, tears, in this, the circumferential fibers are intact from anterior to posterior, but they are divided in the axial plane. Now, these tears do not result in notable changes to the total contact surface area, and it has been a practice to remove the uh, unstable leaflet, but it has been also shown that a single leaflet resection significantly reduces the contact area up to the league of 59%. Then the oblique and the uh, complex tiers are the combination of these tiers and there are uh, root tiers and ram tiers which will be taken up in subsequent lectures. Coming on to the technique of meniscus repair, it can be open or arthroscopic. So in the open uh, repair, uh, as the name suggests, it allows direct exposure of the torn meniscus by using an incision which is posterior to the collateral ligaments it is rarely used and sometimes indicated for horizontal tear repairs or to access a complex posterior horn tear in a very tight medial compartment. Now coming on to the arthroscopic assisted techniques, the first one is the outside in technique. Now in this, initially a test needle is uh, used to check the, ex once we have done the arthroscopic examination, a test needle is used to locate the direction of the needle which has to be perpendicular to the meniscus tear. Then a short incision is made outside, trying to spare the cutaneous nerves, and then two needles are passed through, the t through both parts of the tear. One of them is containing 
a suture loop and other is containing a free suture. The suture is negotiated in this loop and then both are, uh, the end it is brought outside and tied on itself subcutaneously to repair the tear. Now outside in tear uh, technique is usually indicated for tears of the anterior part of the body and anterior horn tears. And on the medial side, more um, posterior tears can be dealt up by using pike resting technique of the meniscus uh, of the MCL to open up the posterior joint. And infrapatellar branch of saphenous nerve is at risk in this technique. Coming on to the second uh, technique, which is the inside out technique, in this single or double lumen zone specific cannulas are used basically to negotiate the sutures on flexible needles which are passed from inside to the outside and tied over the capsule and especially in the posterior parts an incision may be required to expose the capsule and place retractors for safe retrieval of the needles. Now it is considered to be the gold standard technique for meniscus repair and tiers of posterior and middle thirds of meniscus are suitable for this technique and it is especially useful for repair of large tiers as in this diagram and bucket handle tiers because we can use multiple sutures, it is, uh, it is going to be an inexpensive as compared to the, uh, uh, the all inside devices. However, the risk of neurovascular injury and the chances of needle stick injury to the handles, uh, to the surgeon's hands, uh, lead to development of the all inside technique. Now in the all inside technique, we basically uh, use two bars which are connected with sutures which are pre-tied and non-absorbable and they are introduced successively through the meniscus tear and then the running knot is tightened manually on the suture outside the portal to bring about the compression at the meniscus tear. These are some of the devices which are used for uh, all inside type of repair. It is a very good uh, method but it is uh, uh, quite expensive especially in our context. Then there are problems of loss of the bar inside the joint and also the because the needles are uh, little big so sometimes damage to the cartilage is also seen. So once we have seen all the techniques, uh, we come on to the indications of meniscus repair. Not every meniscus has to be repaired. We have to look at the patient factors like a younger patient less than 40 who is active with no significant comorbidities with a BMI less than 30 and who is willing to comply with the post-operative rehabilitation regime is a good candidate for meniscus repair. And if it look at the tear characteristics, it is not mandatory, but a red-red or red-white tear is ideal. If the tear is simple, it is less than three months old, we are also doing a concomitant ACL reconstruction. These are good in uh, favorable indications for a meniscus repair. The tear should be reducible without excess tension and we should have a low threshold for repair of complete radial tears as we have already discussed because it is ad, as good as a meniscectomy. And if there is grade three to four osteoarthritis in the same compartment as that of the meniscus tear, if the tear is irreducible and if it is a central radial tear less than 25%, these tears should not be repaired but rather subjected for meniscectomy. The reported rate of failed meniscus repair ranges from 0 to 43.5 percent in uh, different studies with a mean of 15 percent. The clinical signs of repair failure are similar to the meniscus tear. For the evaluation, MRI has a limited role because the signal changes of meniscus repair are also prolonged and recently MR arthrography has shown promise. A relook arthroscopy is the gold standard for assessment of meniscus repair but is rarely used. and uh, the literature has shown that in carefully selected patients, a revision meniscal repair can also provide good results. In order to enhance the meniscus repair, uh, several techniques uh, have been, are being used like mechanical stimulation, marrow venting procedures, fibrin clots, plated with plasma injections and stem cell based therapies. However, the evidence for their effectiveness is still conflicting or of poor quality. So to conclude, the meniscus repair provides better long-term clinical outcome and less arthritis compared with partial meniscectomy. For a good meniscus repair, we might need to use a combination of the different repair techniques and patient selection and counseling is very important as failure rates as high as 43% are reported and patient must 
be counseled for a possible reoperation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shwetab Rai. That was very crisp. So now I would like to call Dr. Ajit Singh. He will be speaking on cartilage lesions of knee and treatment, uh, treatment algorithm. Dr. Ajit, please. We will take all the questions at the end of the talks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the organizing committee to giving me this talk. Uh, today, I'm going to speak on cartilage injury of the knee and its treatment algorithm. As we all know that cartilage defect in the knee poses a significant burden, especially in a young population, sports person, because uh, that lesions are associated with a considerable amount of pain and disabilities. So articular cartilage is a specialized structure uh, which consists of uh, extracellular matrix and uh, sparely distributed, highly specialized cell, which is called as a chondrocyte. Along with the extracellular matrix and chondrocytes, they make a microenvironment. And that extracellular matrix is composed of uh, water, collagen, proteoglycans, and non collagenous uh, proteins. These articular cartilage uh, is deprived of vascular structure or nervous structure, so, healing is uh, debatable still uh, healing of these cartilages is debatable. Nutrition point of view, uh, if we speak, uh, earlier theory was uh, that articular cartilage obtain its nutrition only from the synovial fluid, but now the recent studies says that it gets its nutrition through subchondral bone also. So uh, with this aspect, uh, subchondral bone is also important uh, for the healthy well-being of the articular cartilage. Along with it, joint motion loads are very important to maintain the normal articular cartilage structure and function. So regular joint movement and dynamic load is important for the maintenance of healthy articular cartilage metabolism. So movement is very important in case of articular cartilage uh, uh, well-being. If we speak about the uh, mechanism, either it could be a trauma, which is a single episode major trauma, or repeated micro trauma and other pathological conditions or patho uh, pathological condition which is associated with the cartilage injury is a subchondral bone disease which is uh, involved in osteochondritis desiccans uh, and there is a vascular theory behind it. So traumatic causes, uh, if we speak about knee ligament injury is approximately 1%. 45 percent is uh, anterior cruciate ligament injuries and these injuries poses a valgus stress and shear forces around the knee joint that can lead to bony contusions and uh, cartilaginous damage. So it, it might be as high as 16 to 46 percent, but it doesn't indicate that almost all ACL injuries are associated with the cartilage injury. So we should be very careful whenever we are looking for a, uh, ACL injuries. Second most common cause of cartilage injuries after ACL is a uh, 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 patellar dislocation. And Terry et al. denoted that uh, knee hyperflexion injury can also lead to uh, cartilage injury without any ligamentous in involvement. So uh, special uh, investigations includes initial x-rays, but we should, ha we should uh, have very high suspicion of cartilage injuries because there are chances, high chances of missing uh, cartilaginous or osteochondral injuries in plain x-ray. So one study has noted that uh, chances of uh, picking up uh, osteochondral or chondral injuries is only 32%. So MRI is the investigation of choice because this has a very high sensitivity and specificity. So this much of strong suspicion is required whenever we are looking for a cartilage injury. So fresh chondral or osteochondral injuries, large, um, uh, if the fragment is large, we can fix it like a fracture with headless screw, biopins, absorbable suture materials with guarded prognosis. But the delayed presentation 
or subchondral bone disease present, uh, poses a challenge. So if uh, we want to classify, uh, there, there are two uh, classification. There are a number of classification available, but practically two classification. One is a, uh, outer bridge classification. So in that, grade one is a normal, one, normal cartilage, microscopically normal cartilage. Grade, uh, grade one is focal thickening. Grade two, there is a superficial defect involving less than 50% of the cartilage or area less than 1.5 centimeter square. Grade three, uh, deeper defect, more than 50% uh, of cartilage involved or area more than 1.5 uh, centimeter squared. Grade four is full thickness cartilage defect with exposing of subchondral bone. So surgical management, if we speak about uh, cartilage repair, it has evolved and mainly it is classified into three. One is a marrow stimulation, second one is a osteochondral grafting, third is a cell-based implantation. So marrow stimulation is nothing but a stimulation of a subchondral bone. Uh, in the first step, we have to remove all the unstable cartilage, make a rough cater, and uh, uh, either we can drill or we can use a micro hall uh, to make a uh, puncture in the subchondral bone starting from the periphery to the center. And it should be wide apart, that it should not break within. So there should be three to five mm of uh, gap in between. And it should, uh, uh, so the key of a microfracture is to establish a marrow clot. What does that marrow clot do? It leads to formation of mesenchymal stem cells or progen uh, uh, progenitor cells to differentiate into a stable tissue. At two weeks, they, uh, uh, they form a chondroblast or chondrocyte-like structure which produces type one or type two collagen resembling to the fibrocartilage. So uh, this is the unstable cartilage. We have to remove it. We have to make a base, a rough base, and starting from the periphery, we can make a, a, a drill hole, or we can use a hole to make a subchondral bone puncture. And uh, to allow the maturation, we uh, keep the patient for uh, non-weight bearing up to six to eight weeks. But unfortunately, within one year of uh, microfracture, uh, we see there is a fibrillation of the uh, cartilage because of increased water content. So uh, for microfracture, if patient is young and if there is a focal cartilage defect and if you are replacing a highline cartilage with a fibrocartilage, it tend to fail early. Though microfracture in old patient, if there is a varus or valgus deformity, diffuse cartilage lesion are there and we are planning to do a osteotomy, a high tibial osteotomy, uh, this microfracture increase the procedure survival. So it has increased my, uh, this one also, okay, if I'm planning for a, a high tibial osteotomy, I will uh, like to put a scope. If there is a cartilage lesion is there, we just debride it and uh, make some holes, so it increases the procedure's survival. Osteochondral uh, oats or mosaicoplasty, if we are using a single plug, then it is called as a oats. Larger defect with a multiple small diameter plug is called as a mosaicoplasty. We take uh, osteochondral uh, cylinder from uh, non-articular area of the trochlea, especially medial and lateral femoral condyle above the circus terminalis. So uh, depending upon the learning curve, we can start with mini orthotomy or arthroscopy. Still, I'm not hesitant to open it up if uh, I'm using two to three cylinder because it is my learning curve. Still, I'm very much comfortable with one or two plugs, but if it is more than that, I'll open it with a mini, uh, with a mini orthotomy. So these are the system available, Smith and Nephew and Dupic systems are available. So for oats, if it is, it is a single stage procedure, it is best suitable for a small osteochondral defect. If uh, the lesion is less than two centimeters square, it is relatively cost effective and it can be performed during the surprise lesion. And uh, I feel it is definitely superior than ACI when there is a subchondral bone disease involvement because it addresses both subchondral bone along with the cartilage. There are cell-based implantation which is called as autologous chondrocyte implantation which replaces the highline cartilage with the highline cartilage. Earlier generation ACI, especially first generation and second generation ACI, we have to put a cultured chondrocytes over the defect 
uh, sealed with a periosteum flap. But there was a disadvantage like leakage of cell, hypertrophy of cartilage, difficult to address the irregular defect, and difficult in suturing over the cartilage. But now the third generation ACI comes with a, uh, uh, it is a gel-based formage and it gets uh, solidified within eight minutes and uh, that use fibrin as a scaffold. So it is indicated in symptomatically focal condyle and osteochondral defect, especially outer brace grade three and grade four when the lesion is more than two centimeters square. Contraindications are joint space narrowing, inflammatory joint disease, unresolved septic arthritis and obesity. So ideal, it is for ACI, it is an ideal substitute. It replaces high-line cartilage with the high-line cartilage. It's a two-stage procedure, so no scope for surprise lesion. If the disease or, uh, origin is subchondral bone, it needs to address uh, subchondral bone separately with a graft and cost constraint. So diffuse lesion, varus valgus deformity, microfracture with osteotomy, focal chondral and osteochondral defect, less than two centimeter square, then uh, it should be deal with oats. Focal chondral and osteochondral lesion, more than two centimeter involved, then it's the ACI. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ajit. Now I'll request Dr. Rajiv Gupta, sir. Dr. Rajiv Gupta, sir, is a stalwart in arthroscopy. He's from Jaipur, and he will be speaking on meniscus root tear and ramp lesions. Uh, warm good morning to all of you. And I really, uh, uh, this is my first visit to this holy city. And I was surprised uh, to see in late night, there was uh, really very enthusiasm in the market, all crowded, restaurants are full. Everything is was really uh, seems to be encouraging. And uh, especially I would like to thank uh, Dr. S.K. Singh, Chairman Apex Hospital and other, all the organizing team members and the Smith nephew for uh, inviting me and giving me, giving me this opportunity. And I am going to talk on a ramp and the root tier. I, I can exceed a uh, little bit my time limit. And why uh, important is to save, the, as uh, our first speaker told, save the meniscus. As our understanding is improving, we are uh, looking away from the routine arthroscopy. As I can sh I, I, I share you with uh, initial days, I just uh, finish by looking at the posterior horn and the middle part and anterior because I just want to finish my surgery within time. But as my experience grew, I start looking away from this. I started uh, looking at the posterior aspect of knee and uh, sometimes as your 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 failures as your you did a nice ACL instead get not you are not getting proper results and you start finding why it has happened and uh, you find that th this was the reason some were something that is uh, there in the hidden it is the reason for your failed ACL and uh, uh, how wh what is the ramp reason how we care about it how to diagnose. Uh, uh, our ramp and uh, uh, how we can do the arthroscopic way of treatment. And uh, rightly said for the ramp, uh, ramp can see you, but you might miss this uh, ramp lesions. As uh, we all know, importance of meniscus, they are uh, really ro low dist uh, distributor shock absorbs, circumferential fibers are very important. They distribute the hoop stresses. And uh, they are, of course, they are stabilizer. They, they give the stability addition to the ACL reconstruction. I again emphasize on try to save the meniscus as you can. Uh, how to define the ramp? Ramp is a tear in the posteromedial part of menisco capsular junction. We can add on menisco tibial ligament also. This is a term coined by the Strobel in 1988. Uh, it was well established in 98. Now, uh, from last five to 10 years, if you see the PubMed, uh, we are emphasizing on ramp lesion. 
there was a gap of around 20 to 30 years. Uh, if we see, uh, they, they, we see around 9 to 16, 20 percent in concomitant ACL tears. And most of the time, they are uh, unrecognized pre-op, uh, depending upon the investigation. And of course, when don't, we don't keep our, we don't put our scope in the postromedial compartment, we can miss in the intraop also. Uh, what is the risk factors for ramp lesion? Of course, if the ACL chronicity is very high, we can have the ramp lesion. If age is 30, less than 30 years, of course, it is there. Uh, there is a concomitant ACL with ALL, chances of ramp lesion are there. If you have lateral meniscus tear, always, always look for the ramp lesion on the medial side. Uh, this is a uh, classification uh, given by uh, in 2016 by Laprad. Uh, type one is simple uh, peripheral uh, meniscocapsular tear. This is just uh, uh, simplest one, stable one. Type two is a partial lesion, but it is in the superior part of the meniscus. They are again stable. Type three is inferior lesion. Uh, what, how, how to identify this is sometimes we probe the meniscus that is not coming and we just uh, uh, say that uh, this meniscus is stable. But always, always keep in your mind that RAM can be there and feel the, the uh, mobility of meniscus in the posterior part. This is how you can find out the RAM lesion. And fourth one is a combined, it's a com complete longitud longitudinal vertical tear along with RAM lesion. And of course, type 5 is a double tear. A uh, lot of literature is now uh, they well established that if you do ACL, uh, the prevalence is around 16 percent. And with the chronicity of injury, uh, we all know that uh, meniscus injuries are increasing day by day uh, if the chronicity of uh, uh, disease is there. And uh, male patient less than 30 years, they have more chances of ramp as compared to other. Uh, why we miss this? Because what we do, we generally just do anterior scope and 60% of time we just only diagnose medial meniscus, posterior horn tear, some uh, longitudinal, horizontal, radial tears. Uh, if we do uh, some extra effort, we can find out 40% of hidden meniscal tears uh, by doing a uh, Gilquist view. Uh, this is how you put your scope along the medial femoral condyle between the PCL. And of course, you can find out extra 16% by putting your scope in the postromedial portal. This is how, and this is a paper well uh, published in AJSM 2014. This author uh, very well described uh, if you put your posterior medial compartment visualization or probing, you can find out additional 15 to 20% hidden lesions. Uh, how I do? I just, uh, this is how I uh, do my diagnostic. I pass my uh, spinal laden through the postromedial portal and assess at this area. Because sometimes what happened, the synovium get uh, come over this, uh, this uh, lesion and you might miss this uh, 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 ramp lesion. And this is how I just probe it, uh, try to uh, remove the synovium and see this is a ramp lesion which you can, if you just don't probe it, you can miss this ramp lesion. Uh, again, uh, in paper 2016, ramp in a ACL deficient knee, it increases the anterior table translation and external rotation. And if you restore everything, uh, then uh, uh, the uh, anterior tribal translation and extrusion get restored like intact uh, ACL. Again, cadaveric study is same. Uh, this is how if you repair the ramp, anterior tribal translation reduced significantly. And again, if you repair the ramp, uh, the forces on the ACL get significantly reduced. How to diagnose? How to diagnose? Yes, high index of suspicion you have. Uh, if there is a, uh, it is rarely isolated, always combined with the ACL. Uh, try to find out the ex proper MR scan and do the examination. Arthroscopy is the gold standard. If your uh, patient is young, male, less than th 30 years, with postromedial joint line tenderness, suspicion of ramp is there. Uh, 
uh, MR scan, I'm not going through. Uh, Non-treatment, if you have a stable ramp, you can leave this along with ACL reconstruction, they get healed. And uh, there is a uh, two ways how we uh, can treat. It is two ways, use all inside uh, fast twig devices or by uh, use the uh, suture lasso device. What, how I do, I do my ramp uh, through posteromedial portal. I uh, use uh, 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 instruments from the shoulder tray. This is uh, how I probe, see the mobility. This is very important to assess the mobility of meniscus in the posteromedial compartment. This is what I made uh, uh, my uh, posteromedial portal. You can see there is a big ramp on the uh, uh, posteromedial part of meniscus. And this is uh, lasso. Uh, you use, uh, if you are doing right, then use the left. And if your left uh, knee is there, use right curved 25 degree lasso. And uh, do some uh, uh, roughening of part to make more bleeding on this point. And this, see the big ramp on the posteromedial part. And this is uh, lasso. Pass your Lasso from menisco capsulars. Uh, in the if you uh, you can use the uh, cannula also if you find trouble in managing your sutures. And I advise, I advocate in initial you can use your cannula. Uh, this is my suture shuttle, and now you can pass number two fiber wire. Anything. Uh, there is a, a literature that sh shows that uh, if you use uh, uh, PDS, the the uh, results are good. This is uh, I put uh, almost around five to eight mm gap. Three. I need chairman sir, if you allow, I need five minutes more. Uh, uh, three sutures uh, uh, around gap of five to eight mm. Important thing is just just go and uh, take your time to for a proper diagnostic examination of the knee joint. This is my final repair. How I rehabilitate? Of course, uh, you can give the braces for four to six weeks. I don't allow them weight bearing, partial weight bearing. They can do 90 degree knee bending up to the three to four weeks. After that, I start. Uh, uh, weight bearing and uh, agility and activities after six to nine months. And in summary, uh, ramp are rarely isolated. They are associated with the ACL injuries. Uh, we care because they are frequently missed and they have the role in giving stability to the joint and the, again, uh, they, are, they are additive to our ACL reconstruction, MRI. If there is a uh, bone marrow edema in the posteromedial corner, suspicion of ramp is there. Of course, if your patient is young, less than 30, always, always keep in mind uh, ramp lesion. And again, Gilkis review is the best way to diagnose. And uh, my next part is a meniscal root tear. Uh, this is how uh, anatomy, biomechanics, I am not going through that. A uh, little bit faster. Uh, is it very important where to uh, repair our meniscus? Uh, if we talk about medial uh, meniscus, posterior root is around posterior point five seven mm lateral to medial tibial eminence, and it is very close to uh, PCL uh, menisco uh, tibial ligament. And again, like this, lateral posterior meniscal root is again 1.5 mm posterior and 4.2 mm medial to lateral tibial eminence. It is there. Yeah. Uh, again, literature is there. Uh, lateral meniscus root tear. If uh, there is an increased knee instability due to lateral meniscal root tear, if you have a patient with uh, high grade pivot that you think of root tear is there. Again, anatomic reconstruction of root tear is very important because it is like anatomic ACL reconstruction. If you don't uh, do in a proper way, if your medial reconstruction is there, then more stress is on the tibia. If it is a reconstruction more lateral, that more stress on the root repair and going to fail. Uh, 
lateral meniscus associated with the ACL injury and 20% of ACL injuries lateral meniscus root tear near or posterior to root insertion. Medial meniscus can be isolated. If you have a patient uh, giving history of around uh, age group 45-50 years giving of history of sudden pain when getting up from the floor sudden popping sound uh, always think of root tear. This is the classical history for root tear classification. Uh, well, as Laprade gave it in 2014. Uh, this is how my risk factor for uh, root varus alignment, BMI less than 30, sudden onset of posterior knee pain, popping sensation. This is the characteristic of root tear. Evaluate the patient joint line tenderness and see the go sign in the MR scan. Surgical indications. Uh, my uh, let me one fast quick. Uh, this is X-ray of a patient around 45 year male with mild varus uh, ghost sign. It is no non visibility of posterior horn of meniscus. And uh, on the this axial view, this is the root tear on the medial side. And short. Uh, Sorry. This diagnostic examination, grade two uh, chondral defect, uh, you have to need uh, mobilize uh, some pie crusting of medial meniscus looking for this type of root tears. Uh, uh, remove the cartilage to get the bleeding bone. And you can use your standard ACL jigs. Now we have uh, uh, side-specific root repair jigs also. Uh, pass your guide wire. I think we have life surgery also on this root tear. Yeah. Uh, uh, I use two threads, uh, not only your single threads, and I cinch them. Uh, one uh, just uh, passed through the menisco capsular region, and other thread is through the body of meniscus. And I fix uh, this all threads over the post. And this is how I do see the nicely sit well seated. This is my x ray HTO with root repair. Uh, this is short, short, short. <laughs> One last video. Uh, this is why uh, this is combined uh, type 4 root repair. Uh, we see a lot of times uh, uh, the root is extending up to the posterior one centimeter away from the insertion and this is medial compartment. This is type 4 root. Uh, it's a complex root. If you don't treat it, is it is like almost total meniscectomy. And uh, you can see, as uh, first speaker told, lateral meniscus removal gives arthrosis very fast as compared to. Uh, uh, what I did, I did, uh, I uh, leave the flap of the uh, meniscus, uh, use my shoulder instruments, took bite from that uh, edge of uh, meniscus, and repaired it like a root and after that uh, I fixed both with the my fast fix. This is my root repair and after that I used one fast fix. In conclusion, uh, I think uh, these uh, postero posterior corners are very important. Uh, we try to preserve as we can. Uh, rehabilitation like all uh, as a meniscal ramp. Uh, it's a common injury, easy to miss. Complete root tear has a devastating consequence like total meniscectomy. Uh, meniscectomy is still we are the literature, literature is not clear that how uh, they heal. Thank you. Thanks for patience hearing.
Thank you, Rajiv sir. Now uh, I would like Dr. Neeraj Shivastav to come on the podium and present his talk on HTO planning and execution. Thank you, uh, Team Apex, SK Singh sir and Saroop for giving me the opportunity. So uh, my talk is on STO, high table osteotomy, planning and execution. I'll be mainly speaking on the middle open wedge osteotomy and not the lateral closed wedge because we have just 10 minutes. So uh, the current indications of STO, the classical indication is middle compartment osteoarthritis in varus knee, middle compartment osteoarthritis in ACL and PCL deficient knees in which we change the slope also. STO in combination with posterior lateral corner efficiency in the varus knees because if you repair the posterior lateral corner and the knee is in varus, it tends to fail. And as a treatment of arthritis and instability, in conjunction with cartilage restoration procedures and even with the root repairs and other procedures as it was shown by the last speaker, and the lateral compartment OA in valgus knee. So I'll just come to the talk. What and how I do STO for OA varus knee? So first and foremost is to get an scanogram. What I want to emphasize that we must plan the wedge correction before the surgery. For that, we need scanogram standing, and it is very much available in our city now. After scanogram, you can plan the wedge, and I will show in the previous in the next slide how to plan the wedge. Whenever in doubt, we should get an MRI to look for the lateral compartment cartilage status in selected cases, because we have to unload the middle joint and we have to load the lateral joint. So we have to be 100% sure that lateral joint is fine so that our osteotomy is successful. And whenever in doubt, do put a scope, it just take five minutes. And you'll be sure that your osteotomy is going to work. And fixation, there are various devices, Tomofix or similar devices, classical Pudu plate, Orthofix and even Elizarov is being used. I'll just show a small uh, uh, video in which the joint which actually looks very arthritic, we did STO and it was very good on the arthroscopy. So this was a 62 year old farmer. He wanted a painless knee but he wanted to squat and do all the farming activities. So THR was, a TKR was a big no for him. Otherwise by seeing this x-ray we all will think okay only TKR can be done. I was in doubt so I just scoped the knee. The video quality is not very good so pardon me for that. This was the uh, suprapatellar pouch. We can see osteophyte, but the pain was mainly on the medial joint only. So patellofemoral, we didn't do anything for the patellofemoral. So we'll go to the medial joint and we'll see all the osteophytes and the cartilage lesions and the degenerative meniscus tears. This is the medial joint. We can see tibia is gone here. Big cartilage lesion in the tibia. Again, full thickness cartilage loss in the femur. As Ajit told earlier, we can even do microfracture, but I'm routinely not doing microfracture because these are the large areas. It is shown that if you do microfraction in the large area, the subchondral bone tends to collapse. The ligaments were fine. And in this, when we entered the lateral joint, you can see it is almost like a new, young lateral compartment. The meniscus and the cartilage is totally fine. So by seeing this, we are sure that we can actually go for STO. We did STO for him, and the follow-up is almost six years is doing well. Now the technique of medial open wedge high table osteotomy. So uh, there are various ways of actually uh, quantifying the wedge correction. This is one of the ways. I'm not going to confuse. I'll just show one method of how to measure the wedge correction. So in a standing scanogram, this is the mechanical axis, which usually passes on the outer side of the middle joint. OK, you can even see sometimes in cases it passes through here. So in preoperative planning, we have to draw a line from the center of the femoral head to the lateral tibial eminence. And the next line is in the anatomical axis of the tibia. So the bisection is this. So this is the angle alpha. And this is the correction of the, the angle of correction. OK. So you have to take a paper which is transparent and draw it and superimpose and then measure the angle. The classical teaching of one centimeter, one degree, it is not true because it depends on the size of the tibia also. 
In a smaller tibia, it can be lesser. In bigger tibia, it can be more. So don't go by one degree and one centimeter correction. Again, on table, we have tendency to just see through a wire or through some special rods. But remember that whatever you are correction seeing on the table is not weight bearing correction. Whenever you are getting correction on the table, once the patient starts weight bearing, that tends to under correct. So you have to get your correction beforehand. Nowadays, many softwares are available in which you can directly put your scanogram and they will give you the correct angle of osteotomy. Even free softwares are available, but I am still doing it manually, but we have to upgrade to softwares soon. Now the second thing, the lateral x-ray and the lateral slope correction which we tend to miss. We just see on the AP the correction is fine and we go for the osteotomy and plate fixation. But we actually change the kinematics of the knee because the slope is very important. So you must see the slope and then go for correction. So how to uh, draw the slope and how to measure it? So in lateral x-ray, you can just draw two circles. The tangents are anterior and posterior cortex. Two circles, then join their center and go up. This is line one. Oh, sorry. This is line one. Then perpendicular to this, this is line two. Perpendicular to line one is line two. Now the third line which is measuring the slope. This is along the slope of the tibia. Now this is the angle of the tibial slope. Normally it is nine, but it depends on patients. Sometimes you will see lesser, sometimes you will see more. So you have to make sure that you never under over correct the posterior slope. Now the special indications of STO in which we are doing it with ligamentous insufficiency, the most common thing is PCL insufficiency. PCL insufficiency leading to middle compartment osteoarthritis. It is very common to get that. So in PCL insufficiency, we increase the slope. So the sag of the TBI is gone and without doing PCL reconstruction, we can actually handle the case. Now uh, I'll just show the uh, pictures of the technique. So this is the incision, always be generous don't give a small incision because over retraction will lead to wound dehiscence, especially when you are fixing with plates. When you are fixing with the external fixators, you can put a very small incision. So I'll show how to do with a plate. So this is our incision. I do in leg hanging position because many of times I am doing scopy prior to the surgery. Always protect the patellar tendon by putting a retractor. Next step, which is very important, always you have to elevate the superficial MCL because the joint is tight on the medial side. If you're not elevating superficial MCL, you'll correct it and later you'll find that the skin has become tense and blisters and all formation is there and later it can lead to infection. So this step is very important if you want no problem in your wound. So elevate the superficial MCL like we elevate in our TKRs. Properly elevate, either with cautery, I do it with periosteum, so I'm using it here. After that, it is all classical teaching that we have to put a wire. It has to stop almost one centimeter prior to the lateral cortex. We aim at the tip of the fibula, the head of the fibula tip. Here, the osteotomy should be there. And we must stop our osteotomy at least one centimeter before the lateral cortex so as to prevent the hinge fracture. There are many ways also to prevent the hinge fracture. We can put a wire, K wire from here to here so that it will prevent the hinge fracture while opening. So osteotomy has to be done below the guide wire. We have to go for a biplanar osteotomy to prevent any patella baha and also to increase the osteotomy uh, surface area so that the healing is better. Because nowadays with tomofix like devices, we are not putting bone graft. So increase the surface area, we have to do a biplanar osteotomy and the patella height is not altered. So this is the STO which we do. We fix with the plate after doing. Personally, I am not using saw because I'm really scared of the posterior structures. When you are doing osteotomy in flexion and your the posterior most cortex, I used to break with a small osteotome so as nothing goes beyond the knee and your osteotomy doesn't injure the vessels. This was the x-ray after this. So now the complications. Vertical split, which I said. So uh, whenever you're opening the osteotomy, if the osteotomy is not properly opened, you tend to force and always the assistant is over enthusiastic, he will over open it and you'll get a split fracture over here. This is very common. So if there is a split fracture, 
Don't worry, just put a CC screw. It will compress it, then you can put the plate. So vertical split is common. To save this, you have to properly cut the osteotomy before giving any force. And now, uh, instruments with Tomofix and R6 plates, they have beautiful spreaders, which will not uh, uh, have any force on the tibia while opening the osteotomies. Additionally, you can put a wire over here to prevent this. Second, the complication of lateral cortex. This will happen if you have completely gone till the lateral cortex or not stopped one centimeter prior to the lateral cortex. To prevent this, you have to put a wire over here. And again, I said that the assistant has to be soft. A enthusiastic assistant will do this. If you have broken the lateral cortex, then you cannot put an orthofix. You have to put a plate only. And with tomofix plate, you have this golden screw, which the cortical screw which you put will do the compression of the lateral cortex, but the weight bearing has to be delayed then. And the healing will be slower because our osteotomy always heals from the lateral to the medial side. Purdu plate classical, you can put, but now uh, we are uh, putting these uh, normal tomofix like plates only because even Indian plates have come with uh, low profile plates and which are in the budget. Plates are coming with wedges also. Our own Dr. Seigel has made such plates. So after putting this wedge, you are more confident that it will not collapse and you need not put any graft over it. With, with orthofix also, we can do. But with orthofix, we have to be very sure that the lateral hinge doesn't break. Orthofix has certain advantages that even if you have not corrected the correction prop the wedge properly, you can change it later because you have to sequentially increase one millimeter daily. But the uh, disadvantage of orthofix is patient compliance and certain pin tract infections and sometimes collapse of the osteotomy after you remove the orthofix because it needs minimum three months for the consolidation. Now the contraindication, if the varus is more than 20 percent, if 20 degrees, if there's flexion contracture more than 15 degrees, knee flexion less than 90 degrees, tibial subluxation more than one centimeter, inflammatory arthritis, obesity with a BMI of more than 27.5, but still this is relative contraindication we are doing in obese patient also with special demands. Just one to two slides. Other indications. So now we are not just doing middle open wedge for uh, ONE. There are other indications. Like in this patient, there was a severe posterior drawer. And we did an open wedge osteotomy anteriorly and put a pudu plate. And the, you can see the slope is restored and the tibia has come forward. Failed PLC reconstruction. Many a times we are just seeing the ligament. Big laparate uh, reconstruction was done, but the varus was not taken care. You can see this knee was in varus and it opened up and the reconstruction failed twice. We did a middle open wedge osteotomy and this stabilized the knee and the patient was walking fine without doing any other ligament reconstruction. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neeraj. Uh, now the session will be open for discussion. So the first talk was by Dr. Shwetabrai on meniscal tear types and repair technique. Second was by Dr. Ajit, cartilage lesion of knee treatment algorithm. Meniscus root tear and ramp lesion by Dr. Rajiv Gupta and HTO planning and execution by Neeraj Shivasto. So anybody having any questions, please raise your hand and okay. My question is, uh, Dr. Rajiv, sir. Uh, actually, uh, recently I have done two cases in which uh, it was a neglected ACL avulsion, almost 15 years old neglected ACL avulsion. So in both the cases, the uh, lateral root anterior horn, the lateral root, the, the anterior part of the lateral root, it was involved with the fragment and almost uh, fibrillated. And we have to remove those fragments. So the some part of the lateral meniscus root was gone with the uh, removal of the bone piece. I was in plan to, to fix it later, but the tissue quality was not very good. And there was a very small bit of the 
anterior root remaining. So what is your take on such cases? Uh, rightly said, whenever you remove the ACL bony avulsion, it's always attached with the lateral meniscus anterior horn and it is well established in literature. It is, does it better? It is a, uh, clinically, uh, they are not uh, uh, relevant if you leave as such. And uh, sometimes so what happened uh, if you have meniscal cyst because of anterior horn lateral meniscus uh, problems, then you can manage. Otherwise, I think uh, uh, symptoms and uh, patient's uh, results, it doesn't uh, matter if we leave as such. Okay, thank you. Even I left it at <laughs> in both the cases. Yeah. We could not do anything. So uh, what we can do is uh, take a bite and through the ACL tunnel, if you are planning reconstruction, through the ACL tunnel, you can take the threads out and tie it on the post. So you can do that. So anterior horn is very close to ACL. You take a bite from the anterior horn, take it through the tunnel only, and put it on the post. That's how you can fix it. Sir, 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 take the mic and. Would you give more weightage to the clinical picture or to the radiological findings? What will be the deciding point for you? Regarding if, what? Uh, regarding a root repair. Uh, yeah, suppose uh, we are faced with a patient who is symptomatic, but he's got very mild symptoms. And if you look at the radiological picture, it is not a complete break or it is something like a partial tear. It is not a complete avulsion. So what would you think of if the patient is young or if the patient is middle-aged? As uh, rightly uh, as uh, literature, and I discussed it by lecture, if it is a root tear uh, and patient is symptomatic uh, regarding pain, and uh, we must uh, treat it because uh, in future due course of time, it, the patient will going to have arthritic. Uh, the indication for me, it say on first is the patient history, second is the symptoms, third is the radiological finding if meniscus is extruding in the uh, coronal planes uh, and the gauze sign is there i always always advise them to get surgery because uh, there is a literature and i have i have also experience if you don't you miss your uh, roots and uh, j for example if patient comes to me uh, few months back uh, around eight to nine months uh, i advise her for surgery and i if, and uh, yesterday she visited again me the joint is getting reduced this is uh, that's why we always advise them for surgery okay okay thank you uh, okay. might be uh, in uh, first instance for, for example with me uh, patient uh, 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 did not have so much symptoms but in due course of time no, no, no. she will have reduced medial joint compartment clinically and radiological do the pictures always match uh, yeah absolutely for root tear yeah you always have a confirmation yeah. okay always always and uh, uh, as now my city is doing good in radiology uh, uh, now radiologists are uh, now up. yeah taking care of roots. Otherwise, uh, three to four years back, they don't comment on. You have to yourself uh, evaluate the MRI scans. Okay, thank you. So, Dr. Rajiv, so there's a question. So, uh, uh, even no no, Rajiv. So, it's for Dr. Rajiv, uh, not Dr. Rajiv. Even do a root repair, sometimes Rajiv, that centralization doesn't happen. You extend the knee intraop, and you can feel the extrusion of meniscus still happening. So you do put some centralizing kind of uh, anchors or, or uh, stitches to the meniscus. Uh, for the root, if so it root, is a chronic. You have, you have if fixed the root, chronic. chronic, correct. Yeah, uh, I release the capsules okay. in that case. I don't use anchors, I release uh, in the back side my capsule and then repair it. Thank you. Uh, there's a question for Shweta. We have time? Uh, yes, one more question we can okay. take. Shweta, in uh, dis discoid meniscus, more often than not, when we resect the meniscus, we see a horizontal cleavage kind of tear. So you prefer repairing it or leaving it as such? <coughs> Actually, uh, the recommendation uh, uh, as of now is that we should try to repair it. And uh, uh, we can also use an open technique and take stitches from uh, outside in and repair them. Because it has been seen that later on these patients can go for development of uh, uh, osteoarthritis, especially if we remove one of the leaflets. Uh, can I comment over this? Uh, uh, it's a horizontal tear. Uh, there is a still mixed literature. Uh, if you leave uh, unstable flap, uh, it still uh, doesn't uh, uh, 
increases it does not increase the chances of arthritis second option you can make a rope you can put a one and uh, one suture above one down and make a rope to give a uh, good quality uh, meniscal tissue and uh, one more comment over uh, neeraj lecture uh, in the pcl neglected we can increase the slope uh, in your uh, neck uh, failed pcl reconstruction so that we can address both uh, posterolateral instability and pcl instability so it is a better idea use two plane uh, correction uh, increase the slope and do the coronal selection yeah uh, last question yes by uh, dr roshan wadi small comment basically okay, uh, comment. today uh, somebody asked here about the uh, root repair and hto I think I think Dr. Neeraj was there. Yeah, some s senior person has asked the question. I think okay. uh, this is a debate which is going to come back again, and we are here to discuss science every ten year, five year, and as we proceed, we are making things more and more complicated. And as rightly said by him, uh, Dr. Vinay, regarding the getting back meniscus inside the knee joint, even if you do a root repair, because what happens is these degenerated new, uh, roots. Usually they are subluxated. The meniscus is going out of the joint, and then you try to pull it inside the joint. So unless you release that, that means you are creating an artificial ramp. So again, Dr. Rajiv will come in picture because he does ramp, uh, he does root, and I do HTO. So Sir. three surgeons will come together and make things more complicated. I think. With the weight bearing axis of the knee is changed completely. So we don't need a root repair with STO, yeah, according yeah. to me, sir. Yes. Uh, so the weight bearing axis of the knee change. Now the function of that root is zero. Agreed. Sir, I so, so I feel I feel whenever you do a root with STO, it is the surgeon's ego rather than patient's need. So we we, we sir, sir we won't go into debate, sir. <laughs> sir, sir. Okay, so healthy discussion, no fighting. Now I will invite Dr. Ernest Arthner to present his talk on ankle instability and ligament injuries and its treatment. Dr. Arthner, please. Yes, first of all, thank you all for the invitation. It's a big pleasure for me and a big honor for me to speak here in this uh, meeting. I'm Works. I come from Austin, I've seen far away. That's the hospital where I'm working to. We are in a totally different to here. It's our hospital, we have only 70,000 70, people, but our hospital has more than 1,000 beds. We're covering the whole region, and it's a very, very big hospital with 33 different departments. And that's the situation now in Austria. It was from 4th of, of April when we were driving home. That's the situation. It's a little bit colder than here. And, and you see, that's our scenery. But let's go to the ligaments of the ankle. We're always discussing chronic instability, but not acute injury. Acute injury, there's not much debate. In acute injury uh, in our region, very often, most do nothing. They say, okay, the injury, nothing broken. Okay, go home and never come back again. That's a, but the, the ankle is the most frequently injured big joint of human bodies. And there are the most frequent injuries in sports injuries. Yeah. By history, up to the 60s, all was casted. And then came a, a, a period where all was operated. Up to low to five degrees of, of instability was operated. And then Freeman came and said, uh, after fixing in the cast, it's the worst thing. But he did uh, state that the radiological instability is not the same as the, like the functional instability. And they uh, developed the functional degrees. And at this time, it was very long ago, we made a, a quantification of the extent with the radiological examination. We really could show that the uh, uh, amount of, of, of tilting in the X-ray in the ankle joint does not correlate with the amount of injury to the joint. 
That means it's an X-ray with a stress X-ray. You can see it's stable or unstable, but you cannot say how many ligaments are torn. Yeah? Since 1980, functional treatment was recommended, and there had been a big number of orthoses been developed, but mostly elastic bandage was in all. And that's the end of this situation, totally different to other joints. We make now no diagnostic and make no therapy. Yeah? If you look in the shoulder, what has been de developed, or in the knee, or in the meniscus, what has developed the last 20 years in acute injuries to the, to the ankle joint, we d don't uh, take care very much because all, is, all will heal and so on. And the people think the same. The general mean of our patients is ligament of the ankle are only minor injuries, they are healing by themselves. It must be healed within some weeks, and if it's not healed, it's a malpractice. But about one third of my patients who get a total ankle arthroplasty are caused by chronic instability. And chronic instability comes from acute injury. And that's what we really must decide. We must de decide is it the first an acute injury or is it a chronic injury? And that's really very important. And there's a paper from Gerber, Persistent Disability Associated with Ankle Sprains, a prospective evaluation of an athletic population. And he sh could show 95% of his person, uh, patients were back to sport at six weeks, but they had in 60% a limited range of motions and a limited primitive in about one quarter of the patients. That looks good. But after six months, all had returned to sports, but in 40% the range of motion had decreased and that limited in pivoting. That means the, the healing at the beginning is very fast and then the patient uh, stays with problems. And he says, his patient, 40% of his patients have after six months uh, still some problems. And what he mentioned was very important. You must decide, is it an ankle sprain or a syndesmotic injury? Now we take ca more care with MRI on syndesmotic injuries, but 80% of ankle sprains are truly syndesmotic injuries, partially or totally. And that is, for me, no place for a diagnostic nihilism in acute and chronic ankle injuries. Yeah? Very important is the clinical in examination, the history, and to ask the, the patient mechanic what did happen. Diagnostic algorithm in our country is history first or recurrent. And that's, for me, one of the most important questions. You must ask, and not only, did he ever have it? No, said the patient. Yes. Did he really? Must really ask the patient. And we made a, we made a study, I showed it later on, where we collected 80 patients which had really true, the true first injury to this ankle joint. And we, it lasted 33,000 patients to find 80 who were really true first injuries. Many have recurrent injuries, but they don't mention it to us. The pattern mechanics means is this inversion or an eversion injury? Because the big difference is between inversion and aversion. Inversion leads to injuries to the lateral ligaments, eversion to the syndesmotic injuries. That's the reason why it's so high at 18% of syndesmotic injuries, because the patient was not, was not asked. No one take care how it did happen. And it's a pronation injury, it's a risk for the syndesmosis. Supination is an injury, is an in, a risk for the anterior ligaments. And the most important thing is to ask the patient, where, is, where does it hurt at the beginning? Where was the pain worst? And where did the swelling begin? Because where the swelling began, there is the point of injury. And all in the foot. And basic for the clinical examination is check the ankle joint in a perpendicular position of the foot to the leg. That's a slide from Atrex, from an, from an internal brace. And, but you see, the TF, uh, anterior TF ligament goes from the uh, fibula to, to up here, yeah? Not like here. That's typical. What's, what is shown, this, this ligament, go, TFA in the, in the slide, goes down. It's wrong. It goes up about four to ten degrees. And it goes really to, it goes this direction. And that's so important if you make an artificial ligament in there, it's biomechanically wrong. And I will show we have really now problems with these ligaments. Yeah, with, with in summary, the extent of the damage can be checked with the tip of the index finger. You can really feel where it does hurt. All is under the skin, and you can say here, it, and, and here it is the problem. That's are the structures we must look for. And of course, and we still make stress X-ray. Last week I had a meeting that was discussed on this uh, Artrex implant, 
and they made an MRI and sent them made an operation. And after the operation, they made an MRI. And they asked, and how stable was the joint? We don't know. We only checked the MRI. And in the MRI, it looked perfect, of course. In an MRI, it, it can. And they said, one third of the uh, artificial ligament was a little bit loose, and the other was tight. And said, what's the difference? Yeah, pa patient was happy. 100% good results. That's crazy for me. And that's the stress. Is, and that, if you overlook these injuries, yeah, you can imagine what can happen in such a joint. And the same is with the anterior trauma. And that's our study. It was a, one of my, my residents who did it. It's a prospective study of 80 patients. And we, we really were looking for acute first injuries, first acute injuries, and that's not recurrent injuries. And we, we compared instability less than 20 degrees and more than 20 degrees. And when we, and we compared functional to operative. And after six months of the functional treatment, about almost 50% had still some pain. In operative, it were better. But for the stability, there was no difference. That means in the, in, if the instability was less than 20 degrees, we had the same healing rate, but it was a non-healing rate of 15%. But it was the same between operation and non-operation. When the instability was greater, bigger than 20 degrees, there, the results were similar. But for the stability, there, in the follow-up, about the double of the numbers were unstable. That means if you have really a big instability, the rate of healing is much lower. And that's still for us. And that's a, a paper from Pinenberg is from 2000. It's 22 years old now. But he came to the conclusion: no strategy, no treatment strategy, leads to more residual symptoms. Operative treatment leads to better functional results and functional treatment. And functional treatment leads to better results than casting. And he recommends still make in some cases an operation. And that's a thing, still a thing what you can think on in the acute injury. And that's the result after this dealing with this problem for more than 20 years. And we say if the instability is more than 20 degrees in the teletate, that's really a big amount of instability. There's still an indication sometimes, especially in active sportsmen, to make it operatively and non-operatively. If it's less than 20 degrees, OK, we do it all non-operatively functionally. And the internal brace now came on the market and it acts as a seat belt to protect the native ligament repair. And for me, it's really the question, is there a need for such an implant? If you look, our treatment protocol after acute trauma without internal brace, but with operation, we make an operation, we give still the patient a cast for four weeks. We are very conservative in Austria and make still a cast and make not a notosis. We give them a cast for healing, but the patient is allowed to wait beer. After four, four weeks, the, the, the cast is removed. We start with physiotherapy. After eight weeks, he, he can start with, with, a, uh, with a tape. And he goes with non-pivoting pivoting sports. And after 10 weeks, he can start with pivoting sport with a tape and no restrictions after 16 weeks. And that's Hein Laura from the Olympic uh, Institute in Frankfurt, who made a, made an, uh, a paper on it and how he gives a scotch cast ortosis for five to four to five days, non-weight bearing four to five days. And then he has a protective, very expensive shoe for three to four weeks. And after six weeks, he starts jogging and, uh, jogging and running. And after eight weeks, sidestep. And after 10 weeks, pivoting sports. That's a, the question is, what's the difference? That's almost no difference. Only the price is the difference. That's what it is. And that's for me. And if you look at this, at this case, that's out of the papers. If you look at the direction of this ligament, we know this TFA is going to anterior, and that's about 45 degrees plantarly. It's biomechanically totally wrong. In conclusion, there's not a big difference with, a, with an internal brace to a standard uh, operation. But in my hands now, since we, some are using the internal brace, the number of patients which have still problems after this operation increased. And now I have in, in short time, seven cases, and all the doctors who were treated them said, okay, if you have still problem, we must take out the internal brace. In, an, in, an, in, in a reconstruction, almost never have any big problems, but with internal problems, you can produce problems for me. That's the case, you see, it's from 30th of, 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 of March this year, and there uh, is a dislocated screw of the in, in, internal brace. The screw came out of the tailors, and the patient did feel it under the skin. And in the, in the look at this car, it's a big incision. 
for me is no big advantage, risk of complications. The published risk assess, all can be happen. It's a good marketing tool, of course, and it's very expensive. And said no, I don't take it, I don't know how do you do it. Now we come to the chronic instability. That's what we, and again, mostly are sports injuries, and in 20%, that's all the old papers, remains uh, instability after an acute injury to the ankle ligament. Yeah? And our concept in treated cis chronic ankle instability is always first clinical examination, stress X-ray, we still do it, stress X-ray, because we measure the instability. And it's difficult to feel if it's really unstable sometimes, and we measure stress X-ray, and then the patient was sent to physical therapy for legal situation for six to eight weeks, and then if he still stays unstable, then we make a ligament reconstruction. The absolute instability is only one information, but it's, it's a rotatory instability. That means really you feel it during the investigation. It's not only tilting, it's rotating out of the joint, and that must be, must be checked before. That's the stress I have shown before, and that's for me the grip how I do this rotatory instability. I take one hand to the tibia and then push with the, on, over the calcaneus, they push the, uh, the foot forward, and during pushing, I make a rotational component. And with this, with this grip, you can distend it. That means we have the, the shape of the talus. If you shape, if you if you distend the ankle joint, it's unstable. You bring the talus out of uh, out of the uh, of the ankle joint, and then you can make a rotational component. And what, when you make this, you see this hole. Yeah. When you see these holes, that means there's nothing between the tip of the fibula and here. And that means the typical rotatory instability of the ankle joint. And that's for me the biggest advantage of the manual examination of this, of this, of this case. That's a, a, a crazy case. You see, it's almost stable in X-ray, but you see here, there's a, here's an avulsion. That means there's a chronic instability. And the patient really did feel unstable. And due to this, situation we said okay you have a rotatory instability yeah and you need a reconstruction we made, made a reconstruction you see it here we made a reconstruction in this case and then you see it after the reconstruction he was totally stable after it and happy and you see there's almost no difference in the stress x-ray but the patient was totally stable and they came two years later with the other side yeah and again what you see here that is the insertion point of the anterior tfa that's a mitic anchor that's for the posterior uh, uh, ligaments, but that's the point, and, and that's the point where it must go in. That's so important. Yeah. What ligaments reconstruction do we have? Anatomically and non-anatomically. There are dozens of methods what can be done. Yeah. That's a paper from 2002. It was an uh, eight-year follow-up after of reconstruction, and it was anatomic reconstruction and non-anatomic reconstruction that you could see. With a non-anatomic reconstruction, 60, 36 patients after eight years, 15 were moderate and bad, and here with 41, only five. That means the anatomic reconstruction makes more sense, and it's, it's, it's normal. In all, uh, in, in all situations, anatomic reconstruction is better than non-anatomic. Yeah? The simplest procedure, what I still use very often, is the brustrum gul procedure. It's a very simple one, but it's very effective and there exists some traits. It's an augmentation of the still existing ligament structures with the extensor retinaculum. And the trick is to find the extensor retinaculum. The extensor retinaculum goes direct to the synastasi and in inserts in the synastasi. That means you must see the synastasi during this operation if you make a brustrum good. It replaces but mainly the TFA. That means for the CF ligament, there must be remaining structures that you can shorten and with shortening, you get a still a stability. If you have no CF and no TFA, you must change your method. Again, the situation, you see that the rotational instability, and again, you see the hole here, but this is missing. I always make this incision, because with this small curved incision, you can do everything. You can make a brustrum good or other procedures, and it make it very simple. And then we look, here is CF, it's too long, and that's uh, the scarring of the TFA. That's, that's the scarring, that's the brustrum gut procedure. That means you can shorten these structures. That's brustrum and gut made a, a, a retinaculum. And the trick is to find the retinaculum, is to open it here. 
like in this case, and then I take my index finger and that there is really, uh, you can go over the retinaculum with the index finger. And you can really take the, in I always say it's a Tastovich, a Russian instrument, an index finger, you can really feel it, and then you can take it out. And then you see, with this incision, you, f you find this, these structures. And then, that's the retinaculum. And then you can find this really strong structure. And this structure goes to the sinus tarsus. And we take this structure and connect it uh, to the tip of the fibula. And that's biological reconstruction. And at the end, you see really, it's a very stable construct. And that's a really good, good, good method. And it's biological. That means if you make it too tight, it loosens a little bit. If you make an artificial ligament or a synthetic ligament, it never will lose. Yes. But this can lose a little bit. And that means we don't have any troubles after it. Because if it's too tight, it loosens a little bit. And it's a long uh, 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 scarring here. It's like the, the old ligament. And then you see, that's supposed the beginning. And then we were making the stress. After at the end of the operation, it's, it's totally stable. If you find this, free bodies or the, uh, uh, avulsion bones, we always take it out. We have sometimes tried to review, refuse it, but it never works. We always take it out. And when you have not no ligaments, no C TFA and, and CF, then we take a half of the peroneus brevis tendon or longus tendon. Most of it takes the peroneus brevis tendon but only half. And that there exists some tricks to get it really in the, in the exact lengths. And, you, and that's a little, that's you, you look on the subtalar joint and then behind there's a, there's a perineal tendon. And what we do, of course, we make again a hole in the, in the tailor neck with an anchor. And the second hole is in the calcaneus. It's in the insertion of the, insertion of the CF on the calcaneus. The length of the CF is an average about 22 to 25 millimeters. And the angle is about 45 degrees to the longitudinal axis of the, of the fibula. And the other one is a little bit anterior and above in the tailor neck. So we make two anchors, and then we make a hole so the fibula to bring in the uh, uh, peroneus brevis half. That's, that means now we decorticize it and make a, a hole in it. And, but then is the trick, how can I get a long parcel pa tier, uh, part of the peroneus brevis muscle without making a, an incision of about 20 centimeters? And the trick is, you have here the peroneus brevis, that's the, the, the sutures of the anchors. And then I make a small incision here. And this small incision, I can find the muscle belly, then make a cut in the muscle belly, and longitudinal cut, and bring in a uh, 2.0 vicule suture. That's a 2.0 vicule suture, and I pull through. That means I have, ha have taken half of the, of the tendon, and then come from downwards to upwards through the tendon sheet with a, with a mosquito, a long mosquito or something like this, and bring these two sutures down. What you must do, don't cross it, because then it cuts everything. Yeah? You must make it parallel, and then you can bring it down, and then you can take it like a chili saw. Yeah? And with this uh, vicule suture, you can really uh, make half it, then you cut it, and then you see, you get such a long uh, transplant with a small incision. And that's a big advantage, because you have much less scarring, and the uh, postoperative procedure is much easier. And then, of course, we bring it here. First, we fix it to the calcaneus. When we fix it to the calcaneus, we make it in supinated position because the tendon should be re relaxed. We make it in a pronated position. You have a tenodesis of the peroneus brevis. We make it, must do it in a supinated, and then bring it to pronation and pull the tendon through the fibula and then fix it to the tail and neck, of course. Then you have both ligaments. but. Because it's such a long uh, transplant, with this you can reconstruct the capsule too. And that's really a very, very strong construct. You have reconstructed both ligaments and the capsule with one implant, and it's anatomically. And that's for me the best method, because it's really strong. And again, the patient after this gets a cast for, for four, only four weeks. It's allowed to full weight bear, as it can tolerate. And after four weeks, it goes to a, a, a short rehabilitation program. Yeah. Of course, you can take the same T. Of course, you can take the same T for everything in the body, even for the ligaments, but mostly we don't need it. But we have sometimes 
taken it, especially for papers and for presentation, but generally I don't take it. And there exists another situation that's an extra anatomical ligament reconstruction. That's the third what I will show you. That I do in total ankles. In total ankles, when you have an unstable total ankle, make not an anatomical, make an extra anatomical because it's much easier. And then you see, that's a very old slide, that's an ankle prosthesis, and after 18 months it became unstable. And then you see here how this, this foot is shifting, medial and lateral. Yeah? And what we, in this case, we made the same longitudinal incision, but then we take the peroneus brevis and mobilize the peroneus brevis and bring it from posterior, here it is, came from here, and shift it to anterior, make a groove here, and in this groove, we bring the peroneus, you see, under the groove, we bring some 80 pounds sutures, and then take the whole peroneus brevis to anterior, and then fix it there, it's a tenodesis. We make a tenodesis of the peroneus brevis to the fibula, and then we suture it, yeah, and that's the end, and it's really stable, and that, but the range of motion is not decreased by this. That's a very simple method in these cases if you make a total angle, but we make it only in, in total angles, not in, in active sportsmen, and that it is. And then you can see here, it's a stress X-ray after the operation, how it's totally stable. Cicatic ligament, okay, I will go over, it's, it's too late, but that's again what we did. In summary, the individual re indication for the proposed reconstruction is recommended. We take both muscles, that's the prostrum gould or the perineus brevis half, both are working really good, isolated, Interlateral rotatory instability, prostrum complex peroneus brevis method. Both the same incision and the same uh, approach. Anatomic re reconstruction for me is mandatory, it's really essential. Extra anatomic reconstruction only in special cases. Syntagal ligament only in cases where no material is available and internal brace I really don't like. It's too expensive for nothing. Oh. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for the support of our mission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ernest. And as the time is running short and you have to catch a flight, I request Professor S.C. Goel, sir. Uh, Dr. Ernest, you have to be on the dice. You have to. I request Professor Goel to okay. give a moment to, to Professor Ernest. Thank you, sir. Hello. Still in the Hello, can you hear me? So our live surgery is going to get us started. So I request Dr. Neeraj and Dr. Uh, Ajit to moderate this live surgery. Can you hear me? Yeah, you are audible. You are audible. Neeraj here. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, audible, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, Roshan sir, good morning. Good morning, good morning. So we are going to start with the diagnostic round of the knee joint. I think all of us are worse, well worse. Tell us about uh, something about the patient, x-ray, anything. Yeah, patient, this she is around how old? A 45 year old female. Can you increase the volume of the OT? Knee pain two months back and following which uh, uh, they 
she has been examined by Dr. Swaroop and he found out that there is a medial root tear along with virus malalignment. Hello? Yeah, you're audible. So I yeah. think cameraman is at wrong position because he can't show you well. Cameraman, you have to come here, brother. Come here, come Can we see the X-ray, Roshan sir? Ha, X-ray kida re wing box. बहुत ज़्यादा trolley हो गया रे. Okay. तो यहाँ से आ जाइए camera man because आपको दिखाना ये है ना knee joint दिखाना. कितना बड़ा trolley ले वो. क्या दिखा रहे हैं आप? X-ray दिख रहे हैं आपको? Can you see the X-ray? I yeah. can't. I can't yeah, go very visible. close to the X-ray because there is a big machine standing in between. There is a mechatronic O-arm, so I can't go. I mean, down. Roshan sir, uh, we are having a PPT presentation of the X-rays and all. So we will see it here. Lead apron, Roshan sir, uh, we are having a PPT presentation. Uh, you, small presentation you, uh, here. Uh, please do go ahead with PPT presentation. By then, I'll wear a lead apron. Yeah, uh, I am not aware of the whole case will be presented on that, yes, sir. Yes. So you can just go with or your surgical technique. Yes. Okay. A gown, Lila. A lid apron, then. You need lid apron? Yes. Still, you need? Yeah, yeah, I need. Tight, 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 tight. Safety is always better, Rajiv. बाद में रोने से मत बोलना। I'm I'm only forty। नहीं नहीं। Okay। That is not a issue। Issue is something else, boss। Don't think that you have to just reproduce, you have to survive also। बचेंगे तो पैदा करेंगे ना तुम? बचोगे नहीं तो क्या करोगे? टाटा के राउंड मारने पड़ेंगे। बनारस में भी खुल गया टाटा इसलिए। हाँ। लोग लेड एप्रेंट पहनते नहीं, इसके लिए खोला उन्होंने। so X-ray, I think you have seen the X-ray, there is a virus malalignment. Can somebody put a scanogram there? Can somebody put a scanogram? So you can see the standing X-ray. Can you show the standing X-ray? See the X-ray, let's zoom in. Can you see the standing X-ray? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? So standing X-ray, there is a virus malalignment. There is a scanogram which are done, but they, I think it's only in the digital format. They don't have a print of that st standing X-ray. There is okay. a presentation which I think uh, Dr. Sarup can do it there. Yeah, it is uh, getting started. Sir. Yeah, so I think uh, meanwhile, I'll just go ahead with the diagnostics round of the knee joint. Uh, as we discussed, uh, Neeraj, are you there, Neeraj? Yeah, I'm there, I'm there. Uh, Neeraj, uh, when we were discussing the uh, root repair and HTO and malalignment, yeah. I spoke about it that uh, not every root needs to be uh, repaired yeah. because malalignment is a major cause, it's not a root uh, tear is a major cause. Unless it's a traumatic and athletic population, the root repair per se is not very uh, indicated in every patient which you are going to do a alignment correction because practically you are taking away the hoop stresses which Rajiv described and even uh, Shwetab will describe in his uh, meniscus lecture. The hoop stresses are out, so there is no need for your uh, concentric reduction of meniscus inside the knee joint for your uh, this thing. So, as uh, I think somebody was showing on the uh, arthroscopic image, I think you were showing or? Yeah, I was showing, sir. I was uh, showing. So, degenerative articular cartilage, you can see here the medial femoral condyle is completely gone. Hmm. Uh, can you uh, see a uh, picture in picture? Hai, uh, hai, sir, hai. Dono dikh hai. Dono dono dikh Very yeah. good. So, this is the uh, weight bearing axis which is going through the medial side and that is the reason why it has undergone severe degeneration on weight bearing area of the medial articular femoral condyle. And uh, meniscus, as you can see here, the root which is, uh, we'll just see through the Gilchrist portal. This is Gilchrist portal, the portal between the, uh, the, the uh, medial femoral condyle and PCL. Okay, so we'll just go through it. The anatomy of the um, knee, the, this is ACL. Can you see the degenerated ACL, but it's not torn, it's intact. Mm. This is the PCL needle. So I will make my medial portal according to my, uh, you know, uh, where I want to put my instrument. In case I have to do a root repair, I have to be very parallel to the joint line. 
this is very important huh. okay if if i go in this position i may not be able to go in the right direction right okay so one has to have very proper portal for your route repair in case you are planning a route repair because you have to reach the posterior cord uh, take it out take it out take it out so always use a needle so that you can get a better marking of the portals yeah Niraj, there uh, might be there might be a uh, good number of people who are doing osteotomy because the osteotomy is not, not a new art. Yeah. It is a very well proven and almost 30, 40 year old art, which was practiced by Dr. Coventry and many other, hmm. including Stobelli. And none of them were arthroscopy surgeon. True. Sir. So how many in Varanasi do osteotomy without arthroscopy? Because Bombay, there are a lot of people who do uh, Sir, most of the people, I think, they are doing without uh, arthroscopy, sir. Uh, so, uh, is there any really need of arthroscopy to be done in osteotomy is again a debatable question. You know, since morning we are discussing, debating uh, science, whether what is right, what is wrong. And academic platforms are the best thing to discuss this. Nothing against anyone. Just because I know arthroscopy, I am doing it. But it is not a necessary art to uh, do arthroscopy in every osteotomy case. Can you see this? The amount of articular cartilage? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Roshan sir, there is a always advancement and with improving imaging, I think uh, with uh, good uh, optics, uh, if there is a loose body, yeah. if you find any chondral flap, I think... Uh, but you know, is, you there, is a, there is a wonderful study from Dr. Koshino from Japan. Uh, and this study is the most quoted study in the history of uh, high table osteotomy. I think uh, the senior surgeon like S.C. Goel and other people uh, will be knowing about it. Dr. Koshino from Japan, where he has done a uh, osteotomies without doing arthroscopy and eventually they found out that many of these patients, they regenerated their articular cartilage on medial side. So Rajiv, uh, it's not, not that only the osteotomy will work here, just a mere change of alignment will give rise to a better uh, you know the better healing potential there is there is paper also that shows the arthroscopic image pre sto yes. post sto well established yes, yes, that yes, chondral yes. cartilage re regrow again yeah. so this is the root tear can you see this uh, i'll just uh, probe give me the probe yeah seen sir so this is the probe and this is the gilcrease portal right and sometimes yeah, they are not Complete root tear, they sometimes they are incomplete root tear. He, here there is probably a complete root tear. Can you see this? Yes, yes. Yeah. And the medial meniscus is not as extruded as we thought of. You know, uh, Dr. Vinay Pandey was asking about the extrusion of medial meniscus. Vinay? So when you uh, think extend about the knee, he is telling extend the yeah, knee. Then he, we will see. No, he said extension only. Show show outside picture. Ah, extension, extension, extension only, yeah. Boss, I am not a cheater. I am not cheating. I am not a simple man. No, no, boss. Uh, see, the, in extension only, you can see this. Correct. There is no extrusion, but there is a root tear. The pain here is not because of root. Pain here is because of cartilage. Cartilage. So even if you do a root repair, even if you don't do root repair, her pain is not going to go unless you take away this weight-bearing axis from the medial tibiofemoral joint to the lateral joint. Lateral. Yeah. So that is what I am trying to explain. And now examining the lateral joint. Sometimes, surprisingly, you will see early degenerative changes in lateral joint, which is commonly seen. But there is, you know, the, there is a kinematic conflict. Uh, if you see JLCA, that is joint line congru congruence angle, it is not uh, same or same after pre-HTO and post-HTO. There are many studies which have suggested that you might change the inclination and gait pattern of the knee joint post-HTO. Okay, so there is always an early arthritic changes which are seen. When you see the medial degenerative joint disease on medial side, Similarly, there will be early arthritic changes seen on the lateral side. But overall, if you see the amount of articular cartilage left on lateral side is good enough along with the it normal meniscus. Much better. Yeah? So yeah. along with normal meniscus, along with normal femoral uh, condyle, and this is the small erosion on the, uh, the tibial plateau. 
So with this findings, I'm very sure uh, she is probably a good candidate or a uh, borderline candidate for HTO and she will be better after high TBL osteotomy because her virus malalignment is significant and that is where we are going to play around. Right? Right. Any any question till now? Uh, Rosan sir. Bolo, bolo. Uh, yes, please go ahead. She must be having this cartilage lessons for one year, two year, maybe more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she was pain free. So, yes. see, see, it is an instability caused by the root. Uh, meniscus gives a stability. Yeah. The instability caused by root. It is, in fact, if you see her gait, I don't know whether uh, they have shown you the gait video. I told uh, uh, him to show a very good gait video. If you see the gait, you'll realize that this. These patients are usually uh, not very happy and they are very painful on medial side. That is because of weight bearing axis which goes through this area. Okay? Yes, sir. And you need certain instruments for passing this route and take a root uh, bite there and then you can pass it. Yes, please. Uh, yes. Is the root here is complete or some part is still? It, it, is, it is not very complete. There is some part which are intact, I as I am showing you. I think that is why this exterior yes. is not there. Uh, probably that is. No, see, you can't say it is incomplete or complete unless I remove this part. This is a shiny white fiber just behind PCL. This is PCL. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Uh, this, is, this is PCL, and these are the meniscal uh, ligaments which goes through the meniscus into the PCL. White fiber, shiny white fiber. So these are the shiny white fiber which are holding the root in that fashion. So if you hold a root in that fashion, probably it adds to the stability. And if, if possible, if you want, we can demonstrate the root repair. Sir, have you done pie casting? No, not yet. Okay, so if you do, uh, sir, please show us yes, where yes. to go, now to go. Yes, it will yes. be better visible also. Yes, yes. Once, yes. Yeah. See, I have to show what is normal first and then we will create an abnormality, right? So now we will go ahead with the medial release. Can we see go the uh, outside video outside of the bike resting? Outside video. See, look at the cartilage damage on the medial side. You, he has to do it there. Okay, outside video. Huh. The bike resting, if you can demonstrate once more. Huh. Okay, Aram Sir, don't do it. Cameraman can go medially and go his laterally. If little bit he can... Thoda idhar aja ho hai, sir. See, this is going through the joint. Yeah. Right? I'm coming inside the joint now. Inside video is not seen. Okay, this is I'm inside the joint. I have to go at least one centimeter down. Okay. One to 1.5 centimeter down, where I can remove the fibers of superficial MCL which can give you a little bit of... Hey, inside video is not seen, sir. Hey, inside video, dikha na, bhai. PIP. Dikha. Hmm. So and your assistant is giving valgus yeah, force? Yeah, he, he is giving a control valgus force because I am I am helping him. My buttocks, my lateral side of my buttocks is helping. Huh. I hmm. don't want him to give an excessive force. See, yeah. usually non-medicals won't understand what is excessive and not non-excessive. So you have to have control on your uh, assistants. Right? Okay. So, so this with a single prick, you are just moving it. Yes, I'm just moving it here. Horizontally. In fact, if you see the uh, all old descriptions of HTO, like Puddu, they yeah. all remove the medial collateral ligament, strawberry. Huh. They all remove the medial uh, bend of needle. So you're not putting multiple holes and just by no, one just hole you are removing you yes, are moving I'm the. Ju I'm needle. just I'm just making one single puncture. Okay. And through that one single point, thoda jada wala needle dena bhai sab. Ek dhami patla dega to bend ho jayega. So 16 gauge needle is your preference yeah. or you go for thinner one? No, no, I always take bigger one here because I want to do, I want to chalega mere. Sir, any preference of doing pie casting over the femoral side or at the joint level or at the tibial level or any Joint level you should never do it because uh, your meniscus is attached and uh, super deep MCL is attached to the uh, the meniscus. So you should not do it at joint level. You should always do it at tibial level because there are good amount of fibers which can you can partially release it. So still you will have some fibers intact. It's not a complete tear. It is just a grade 2 tear which you created. So it is iatrogenic grade 2 injury to the MCL. Okay?
रोशन सर हाँ बोलो सर बांचा हैज डिस्क्राइब द मैजिक पॉइंट हैव यू एवर ट्राइड दैट दिस इज माय मैजिक पॉइंट सी दिस माय मैजिक पॉइंट एवरी एवरीबडी विल हैव गिव अ वेरी गुड नेम यू नो मैजिक पॉइंट नॉन मैजिक पॉइंट विल गिव अ रिलीजियस नेम काशी पॉइंट विनय या या अल्टीमेटली इंडिया रन्स बाय काशी ना currently uh, yes okay. uh, so roshan sir ka uh, i can add on this uh, okay. uh, if you are planning a sto with root repair i think uh, when you release the mcl uh, it will automatically open it and uh, 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 that's how you can see the uh, uh, root and second is uh, whenever you do pie casting do is the postero oblique ligament uh, in extension yes yes and uh, this will is the right proper so this is how you can see the root now Can you see this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah visible. Visible. अंदर वाली picture गई फिर. ये अंदर वाली picture दिखा रहा है. Yeah, yeah. This is fine. This is fine. So this is where we are planning to do a root repair, and uh, I'll just show you how we do it. A uh, hey, scoop, scoop, eh? Scoop the. Degenerative tear root repair may not work. May work. I don't know, but traumatic yes. Young patient traumatic tears you should always repair it. When you are doing ACL or you are doing PCL, that time if you see the root tears you should always repair it. Uh, degenerative may work, may not work. They are not that uh, always happy patient, you know. So any so, change to your tunnel position you make uh, when you are doing HTO with the meniscal root repair? Sometimes yes, because uh, now I have to see the plate because I think here the plate is different, and uh, there are certain plates which are adaptable to these uh, root tears and ACL surgeries, like Nucle plate or to uh, Puddu plate or the uh, other plates. Uh, hinge, hinge locking plates like Tomofix are not designed to be with root repair. हेलो डॉक्टर रोशन यस या इज इट डिजेनरेटिव टियर या ट्रॉमेटिक टियर व्हाट इज दैट इज इट डिजेनरेटिव टियर दिस रूट दिस इज डिजेनरेटिव टियर दिस इज नॉट ट्रॉमेटिक बट आई डॉक्टर आई मीन सेड दैट पेशेंट वाज नॉट सिम्टोमेटिक दो ऑस्टियोआर्थ्राइटिक चेंजेस हैव बीन अप लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग पेशेंट बिकम सिम्टोमेटिक रिसेंटली एट दैट टू क्लासिकल रूट टाइप यस हाउ वी कैन जस्टिफाई दिस क्लिनिकल आई डोंट गेट योर क्वेश्चन सर Since patient is having osteoarthritis changes of long standing, yes. But she was asymptomatic, hmm. but now she became symptomatic. That is because of cartilage, na? Ibernated cartilage. This is look at this pain. But the classical clinical symptoms was like a root tear. With, with this amount of cartilage damage, Maybe. can you see this? Yeah, yeah. So oh, bound to get pain. Yes. Not necessary. You have, should have a meniscus tear. In fact, with this much of arthritis, rather than getting root tear, she should have got meniscus tear, right? Will no, you do any uh, micro fracture for this lesion, or you will just no, no, like no. Uh, see, when you have a degenerative tear involving whole condyle, the role of mi micro fracture is very poor. Okay. In fact, that is the reason why yeah, even the uh, non-arthroscopic cases do well after HTO. Hello, Niraj. Sir, that is the reason why non-arthroscopic cases also do well after HTO. Ah, yes, sir. That's because why. it's not needed. It's a degenerative disease. So that's what if you have a tool, you tend to use it. Yes, that is what I am telling you. No, it's a surgeon's ego. That okay, I see the root, something extraordinary, something. See, one thing we have to understand that we have to keep science very sim simple. Surgery should be reproducible and. Uh, doable by everyone then only it becomes popular correct if correct. you make it very very complicated only industry will benefit i uh, know smitan nephew is not going to give me the ticket return ticket but <laughs> <laughs> but this is what uh, only industry can benefit not the patients so Rasen if you want patients to benefit you have to follow the science and science says that uh, give me the roshan sir first pass eh uh, ye de mini mini मिनी निकालो टेप ले लो मिनी ले लो चलो जल्दी जल्दी करो क्वेश्चन सर देयर इज अ क्वेश्चन बोलो 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 सर अगर अलाइनमेंट नॉर्मल होता वुड यू हैव इट डन एसटीओ और व्हाट इज दैट व्हाट इज दैट 
if the alignment will be normal in this case, C is virus, if the alignment see, would have been a normal, uh, so what treatment protocol you do, you will change in that see, scenario? Normal alignment, you will never get a root tear unless it is a traumatic. Hmm. Yes. Right? See, root tear can be only because of trauma or because of degeneration. There is no third reason which is known. So either it is a traumatic or uh, degenerative. If it is traumatic, it needs repair. Traumatic will not come only with the one trauma. It will be either associated with ACL or PCL. Hello? Roshan boss. Huh? Yeah. So uh, a few papers have described using anchors in this scenario when you are planning H2O with yeah, root Yeah, some repair. people do it. See, it's a fancy so, world. No? So <laughs> So, What's so your take? You always go with tunnel technique. I always believe in tunnel technique because that gives you a very good pull, pull out stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cinch here for the... So what construct you use? One fiber tape, one fiber wire? I'm going to use fiber tape. Only? Tape, uh, ultra tape, not fiber. Smith and nephew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That we know. Sir, you ticket to get a ticket. Ticket, ticket, milegi, sir. Uh, so, you have to go in, hold that tissue there. Can you see this? Yeah, visible. Uh, sometimes that tissue is not that uh, easy to handle, you know. Sometimes they are very difficult and very flimsy. Especially in degenerative tears. Hmm. Okay, give me this thing, you know. Uh, so okay, do you, you, uh, you use, you don't use a passport cannulas for this uh, medial portal negotiations? Usually you can create a virtual cannula. Hold this, hold this, hold this, hold, 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 hold this, scope, scope, scope. I don't use passport cannula. You can create a virtual cannula and then you can pull it. Just a minute, my gloves are sticky. Okay, so can you see this now? Yeah. Yeah, so that is one. And if I want, I can put another also, but I don't think so, it's needed. So that is, I'm holding the root now. Hmm. And I will just, I will try to create a tunnel by using the uh, zig. These so are using the zigs. a specific jig for the root or yeah, the yeah, normal? Yeah, there, there are specific zigs. Can you see this? Yeah. This is for uh, uh, left knee, medial side, medial root. Hmm. So it has got a bend like this. It will go on that side. So you have to bypass the medial uh, femoral condyle. Okay. So and, if you can demonstrate are, and, the and spot. These are, and these are low profile zigs, so you can easily go through it. You can see the profile of this zig. It's very uh, small profile zig. If you can demonstrate the right spot where you are going to uh, yeah, yeah, I will demonstrate plan your it. exit of that yeah, pin. Yeah. So you have to see for the PCL. Can mm. you see the PCL? Yeah, Just see. next to the PCL on the TBL plateau is your zig point. Hold this, somebody. Sister, give me a skin knife. Then I have to make the incision because same incision I'm going to use for HTO. Hey, skin knife. Any sister. I'm going to use same incision for HTO. Huh? So that is why I'm making a bigger incision. Okay. So even if the jig is not available, we can use our normal ACL jigs. You should not because you know what, what happens if you use normal ACL jig you might create the uh, uh, more damage on the femoral condyle because this is a very high profile uh, ACL zigs are usually very high profile zig. Chalo, idhar aja. Sir, we have to do it for two days before. It comes from Delhi. It's a big deal. Shift to Delhi, man. Delhi shift to Delhi? Oh, no, sir. Sir, it's not for Delhi. No, no. Now, you're making a bullet train. तेरा जिक दो दो घंटे में आ जाएगा चल ड्रिल 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 करो ओके अच्छा थोड़ा 
थोड़ा जाएगा जाएगा बस 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 ठीक है चलो निकालो इसको अभी वी डोंट हैव अ रूट सिस्टम विच यूजली वी यूज इट दैट इज कॉल्ड अ स्लीव ओवर द दिस थिंग यू नो सो आई हैव टू यूज सर एट व्हाट एंगल यू हैव फिक्स द जिग व्हाट एंगल या सी आइडियली यू शुड हैव अ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ बोन सो द एंगल डजेंट मैटर हियर लेट मी सी द ओके ए थोड़ा सा बाहर निकालो वायर को ज़्यादा अंदर चला गया सो रियली स्पीकिंग एंगल डजेंट मैटर यू शुड हैव गुड अमाउंट ऑफ बोन फॉर होल्डिंग योर रूट टेयर्स सो दैट यू कैन पुट द लिगमेंट वॉशर्स because we are uh, doing sto also so whether you want to put your tunnel on the proximal part or it should go through See, distal that is why i told you that uh, the there are different plates available for different uh, purpose you know yes sir uh, this for this root repair purpose the tomo fix is not ideal plate chalo give me uh, the new uh, clip uh, ones are ideal uh, for new clip and the even puddu is ideal puddu plate the arthrex one uh, arthrex one so you know they can accommodate that uh, thing chhod chhod do niche chhod aisa pakda multi directional proximal screws ha, so that we need you know you can have multi axial uh, screws you can change the direction you can play around so that kind of uh, playability is not possible with tomo fix tomo fix is very rigid implant so so now i'm going to use the 4.5 mm uh, uh, reamer can you see this aram se na dost so i am protecting my guide pin can you see this yeah this is very important because you are very close to the neurovascular bundle and plus you should not cause damage to the articular cartilage which is already damaged e pani ko pressure de bhai sahab zara e wait 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 aaya nahi na okay नहीं नहीं चलो वेट वेट आउट आउट चलो गेम ही रिट्रीवर सिस्टर किधर था होल किधर ओके गेम ही अनदर रिट्रीवर और गेम ही इथी बॉन्ड रादर गेम ही इथी बॉन्ड सिस्टर इथी बॉन्ड दे दो दो नंबर का सर सो नाउ आई विल यूज द स्विच पासिंग डिवाइसेस डिफरेंट डिवाइसेस सर इफ योर रूट इज नॉट कमिंग टू द एग्जैक्ट एनाटॉमिकल पॉइंट सो हाउ फार मीडियली यू कैन गो और व्हाट यू डू इन दैट सिचुएशन सी दैट इज व्हाई आई एम दैट इज व्हाई आई वुड डिस्कसिंग ना इफ इट इज नॉट कमिंग टू द नॉर्मल पॉइंट there is no point in reducing it i showed you in this case it is possible to reach or rather it is not dislocated the meniscus is inside the joint so probably this is a good case for this thing you know sometimes what i do is uh, when i am not sure where my tunnel is i don't pull my threads in it right hello yes sir yeah. sometimes i don't pull my threads in it i do osteotomy and later on after fixing the osteotomy we can pull it because in that case i may not damage my threads okay right so we'll proceed with the osteotomy now and so pulling how you make sure that your screw point is not coming in the way of uh, that, tunnel that that we will put the guide pin and check it okay so what i'll do is we have drill it with 4.5 mm uh, reamer so what i'll do is in the end i'll put a guide pin and i will check whether my screw is hitting the thread right skin knife dr roshan sir mere ko plate kaun sa lagana dikhao na yaar plate plate dikhao zara because plate maine kabhi use nahi kiya hai wo bhai yes yes sir uh, sir if you want to check the ct is available inside the theater you can uh, definitely check whether the tunnel is coming the, the o arm yeah the o arm is, is available same theater See. No, but at least for our benefit, because we might not have O arm, so it's if you can for, tell with normal. Just for demonstration normal. purpose, because hmm. we are doing the same theater, hmm. so it's there we can have a look. 
एक प्लेट दिखाओ ना मेरे को भाई वो कौन सा कौन सा प्लेट है ये है ओके चलो सो दिस प्लेट ओके आई नीड लिटिल बिगर इंसिजन बिकॉज प्लेट इज लॉन्गर In Bombay, I use the uh, new clip plate, which is a smaller plate, smaller design. Cautery, 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 cautery. Yes. And now, retract. So I'll just go on the uh, medial fascia till I touch the bone and try to elevate it. Okay. Hello. Yeah, we can we can see. Sir. Please please go ahead because I am busy in surgery, so I may not be able to uh, every time ask you. You can yeah, continue sure, sure. asking question and discussion. You can discuss among yourself. So also. you you are elevating the fascia with the cautery always. Yes, I am elevating the uh, deep tissue on the medial side so that I can create a sleeve on the medial side. See, being an okay. arthroscopy surgeon, I don't want to sacrifice medial. Even if you damage the medial collateral ligament, don't worry about it because uh, you are changing the. Um, uh, biomechanics of the knee. Okay. Huh? So somebody inadvertently damages the MCL like this. Don't no. don't worry about it because uh, in fact Dr. Puddu, the original designer of medial open wedge osteotomy, uh, huh. Puddu plate, and Dr. Stobili both remove the medial collateral ligament periosteum. Yeah. Uh, both remove the medial collateral ligament. It is only the sports medicine guys who try to retain the MCL. If you ask all trauma surgeons, they remove. Uh, uh, yeah. So I don't know whether Dr. Uh, S.C. Goel will agree with it, D Dr. Goel, he is a very senior surgeon and I have seen Sir must be doing this procedure for sir, years. Sir is saying he doesn't remove. No, he I doesn't, he is an arthroscopy surgeon basically. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, have, I do arthroscopy also but uh, osteotomy I do directly without ah. arthroscopy. So you know uh, this, this kind of release is important. Can you see this? Yeah. So the, uh, the MCL is uh, int intact here, can you see this MCL? Actually, uh, it is not visible. Hey, uh, we have to see from the lateral side then. Idhar se aaja na. Osteotomy ke liye idhar se aaja tum. Touch nahi karna, piche se jana hai. Hey, dekh. Can you see my hole here? Can you see it, sir? No, sir, abhi nahi. Hey, hey, dekh. Hole yehi dikhta hai. Ha, seen, seen. Yes. Yeah. So that that is a hole for our root. Root. And. This is probably the medial, uh, this is the medial superficial collateral MCL. attachment, superficial MCL, which is attached almost uh, 6.8 centimeter yeah. below the joint. Okay. So I, I believe in two plane osteotomy, that is double plane, bi because, uh, bi planar osteotomy, because I feel unless you have a very good proximal tibia, you can't get a good healing. That is one. Secondly, yeah. the correction is better. Thirdly, you can get a better fixation. Yeah. And so, better fixation. And patella biomechanics alteration also is... Yeah, patella okay. biomechanic alteration is also very less, but uh, it all depends on the amount of wage you remove. The amount of wage. A, a radiolucent spike hai, apna? Nahi hai. Thik hai. Chalo, chod. Sir. Also tell us how you protect the posterior structures. Yes, so that radiolucent spike is missing here. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Eh, bada osteotome hai ki apne baas? So now you are working near the patella tendon. Yeah, now I am working towards the patella tendon. I am trying to raise the uh, tissue here so that I can get a better axis of patella tendon and my assistant can retract the patella tendon like this. Okay. Can you do this? Hold this. Thank you. Give me marker pen, sister. So this is the curved osteotome which I use and release the. Uh, medial structure posteriorly somebody was asking uh, somebody was saying that how to protect the yeah uh, medial structure so this is the curved osteotome and you can push it and try to erase it then there is a there are uh, protectors which are available in market which okay. you can use it uh, saw 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 first and give me the marker pen saw chahiye, saw so now I'm going to mark my osteotomy. Can you see it here? Yeah. This is the vertical cut and this is the horizontal cut. Okay. Hmm? So probably just one centimeter below the my tunnel. And same way, you know, even ACL you can create a tunnel here. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, so how many centimeters below the joint line you are marking your uh, osteotomy site? Probably side? around, I have not checked it, but probably around 3, 3.5 centimeters. So it is not marked through the CM? No. Okay. <coughs> and any changes in your osteotomy site because you are doing root repair or it is? No, it is same. same. See, that is why I told you the zig, uh, show me the root zig. I will tell you the amount of bone uh, which you take, it all depends on angle. Somebody asked a very valid question. You yeah. remember first angle. question? Angle, what angle you keep? And that is very valid. I'll just show you. See this. So it all depends on the amount of bone you use it here. Okay. Okay. So if I if I go like this, it will it will take just a sliver of the bone from here. Yeah. Okay. If I if I go it in this direction, because see your zig is very posterior. Okay. Remember, so it all depends with this. So you are not rigid that at one angle only. It's like ACL tunnel. You don't want to be at one angle. Yeah. Uh, you can change it according to the uh, surgeon's like likes and dislikes. Sir, are you going ascending type double osteotomy or descending type? Means uh, uh, ascending vertical, vertical, vertical upper cut. Ascending uh, type. Haan. I don't know whether ascending, descending. Oh, so descending, why you niche le lete hain uske? So your nee, uh, descending nahi karta. Tibial tuberosity will be forget, attached forget. with the proximal fragment or it will be the with the distal fragment? It will be with the distal fragment. Okay. Yes, distal. The right angle. Laga. So can you see it here now? Sure. My, my yeah, tibial tuberosity, same. this is my marked point. And uh, sometimes, you know, this, can you see the vibration? Yeah. So sometimes it's very important to hold it very close so that your vibration is limited. Okay. Okay. And I do this another cut here because yeah, oh, give me osteotome. Yeah. And so now I'll create a Mackey effect here. So, so you are elevating the yes tuberosity. So this one two millimeter elevation will relieve the pain. The patellofemoral. The patellofemoral pain. Yes. Not big, just a one, one, one millimeter or 1.5 millimeter elevation will relieve the pain. Yeah. So now we'll go ahead with the drill, drill, drill. So I have marked my one plane. Can you see this? Yeah. Yes. Now I'll go ahead with the second plane. Second plane, I will do it with the guide pin. A CM. Bahar nikalo sabhi. CM idha sa na? Tum, tum piche jana dost. Yeah, either on either. Sister, come on this side. Yeah. Sister, come on this side, this side, this side. And give me the uh, tower, uh, uh, Elise, there, the one, one, two Elise. Chalo, see, I'm dhakel on there. So the position of the limb is slight flexion and resting on your thighs. Yes, on my thighs. Okay. So this is your routine. You yeah, are doing I, I do it on the patient. I do it in this way because this is very comfortable for me. It gives me a complete 360 degree exposure to CM, okay. as well as knee, as well as my arthroscopy, as well as everything. You know. Now if they, if you're not planning arthroscopy, then also same position. Abhi yar arthroscope liya hai to har patient ko dalna to padega. Why, why? Majburi. I hope Kashi Vishwanath has forgiven us. We cannot see the Siam picture. If we can. Hey, Raja, Siam, see. Siam. We want both pictures on the screen. Let's take it. 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 Should and uh, <laughs> hey, can you take the table down, please? Anesthetist, table, table down. If we can rotate the image of the CM, yes, yes, we will rotate and rotate make it the, uh, rotate the image as well as take yeah. the table down. Can you see the root tunnel there? Small yeah, root it is tunnel. Same. Rotate the see, other way. Usually, I don't like that to have because you know that then it becomes a very big stress yeah. riser. Fine, there. fine, fine. Yes, a table down, little bit more. 
थैंक यू सर लिटिल बिट मोर 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 बस दैट्स इट चलो शूट सो योर फिबुला हेड शुड बी विजिबल यू नो एंड फिबुला हेड शुड बी सीन एंड योर गाइड पिन शुड बी डायरेक्टेड टूअर्ड फिबुला हेड कैन यू सी दिस शूट 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 राइट सो यू पिनिट्रेट द कॉटेक्स सर Uh, usually i penetrate see unless you penetrate you can't get the uh, correction whatever you say that uh, you will create a green streak fracture on lateral side unless you weaken that bone it will never happen females patient uh, with weak bone it might happen but uh, the male patient elder uh, the younger bone uh, it may be may not be possible so always try to create a uh, weak uh, weakness in that lateral cortex so that you can get a better hold You don't do it. I don't do it, sir. I stop just before the cortex because. So you avoid penetration. Yeah, I always avoid penetration. Sir, how to avoid lateral cortex fracture? <laughs> <laughs> Million dollar question, you. Uh, cameraman, can you can shift to the? Uh, yes. Can you see this? We don't have two cameras for that. Are. क्या दिखा रहे भाई साहब वो तो दिखाओ सीएम तो दिखाओ उनको सीएम देखना है ना कैमरा मैन पिक्चर इन पिक्चर नहीं दो कैमरा नहीं एक ही कैमरा है एक ही है ना एक ही है चलो सो तो टू गाइड वायर्स पैरेलल शूट सीएम शूट शूट अच्छा सर बोलो सो हाउ डू यू कंफर्म द स्लोप ऑफ द टीबीए इन दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेज सी दिस पेशेंट प्रैक्टिकली स्लोप इज नॉट अ इशू but uh, some patient you have to have a good slope in that case you can have a differential opening of the slope you can open more medially uh, more anteriorly mm -hmm. than compared to posteriorly if required but this patient slope is not a issue can you can you see the lateral x ray the slope is not a issue uh, 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 he is having the ppt Dr. yeah we saw sir before uh, slope was fine slope was not a issue in this case yeah. but in in other cases where you want to correct the slope You can increase the anterior opening as compared to the posterior opening. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, take a right angle. So this is very important. Uh, how to avoid complication? The most important complication is damage to the extensor mechanism. Yeah. And uh, what I've done is I have created a first. Can we see the uh, operative limb? Yeah, yeah. Cameraman. Cameraman. Uh. Hey, uh, give me a small ostrum. Patla, patla, patla ostrum. Give me. See, if you're uh, this thing. is vibrating too much na then it is a problem so this is the limit of my osteotomy can you can you see that yeah i have, i don't have to go beyond this point either okay. you can protect it with the help of small uh, little smaller osteotome smaller size osteotome or you can uh, you have to be you know very very careful remember and especially what happens is uh, look at this if if it vibrates little bit also it can damage the the uh, patella tendon uh, uh, the tuberosity attached here yeah. patella tendon is little far no, the, uh, and uh, and that that becomes a stress riser so okay. it is not a da actual damage that remains as a stress riser and then we have a change in biomechanics of patella yeah. then you go for a range of motion exercises and suddenly one day they it breaks breaks you know so that kind of stress riser should be avoided and the best way is by using a very thin slim osteotome which can give you a protection hmm. so don't lift it uh. that stack osteotome we can put yeah you, we can use a hey, hold this hold this hold this uh, so the limb is in extension yeah limb is in extension when i when i'm doing osteotomy sir but uh, extension means the posterior structures are uh, nee nee i'm not going posterior i'm just taking a bite here okay. on medial side okay when i go posterior i have a different technique okay yeah yeah so this is This is how I have avoided this. Can you see this? Yeah. So now, when I want to go posterior, I'll do it in little bit of flexion. Flexion. Not great flexion. 90 degree flexion का ज़रूरत नहीं है. Little bit of flexion. Same time, one has to understand that see, surgeon का control is very important, and your control sure. is hand. Yeah. So whenever you are uh, pushing your saw blade, uh, always check for the resistance. Yeah. And then pull it. So you have a control. You have a control. and the moment you have loss of control you have to stop it there sure yeah so that it is very important so if you have you, to feel for the cortex yes if you uh, know the uh, how to drill sacrum 
hmm. sacrum because there is a presacral plexus. We don't go by cortex. You always go one cortex, then palpate for the uh, opposite cortex, then mark it, and then you go it that way. Okay. Till so where please. you go? Give me a smaller blade. This is one big, big size blade. Till till where you go in the lat how far you go till the lateral cortex? This is just for a medial cortex saw. Then okay. I will go posterior yeah. cortex. Yeah. I'll remove the posterior cortex, go up to the midpoint of the tibia okay. with the saw, and later on I'll continue with the osteotome. Osteotome. So not all uh, surgery can be done with saw. Uh, yeah. Certain steps you have to be very, very careful when do it with osteotome. Okay. Uh, remove this. We have some uh, sponges which uh, which have some markings, wires. Ah, even that. So you can push in that behind the tibia, flush the tibia, and then cut because that pushes the neurovascular bundle hmm. posteriorly. Yes, so those come with surgery. Yeah, I, I didn't get you. What, what is that? Push. So what you can do is uh, we have sponges which have marking. We have some wires which can be seen on C arm. Achha, achha, so you can push it behind the tibia and achha. to the fibula head, and then it pushes everything back. Okay. So what now is I'll take up smaller blade because that yeah. blade was a quite too big blade for this lady. She has a very small tibia. And now I am able to palpate. Can you see this? Yeah. Yeah. So I know the depth of my osteotomy. So you are palpating the posterior cortex? Yes, yes. Okay. See this? Yeah. Question sir, what about drilling multiple holes and going with the osteotome from beginning itself? You can do that, no problem. See, there, there are n number of ways you can uh, do this surgery. The Whatever is the best in your hand, you should do it. Uh, chalo, uh, see arm? So personally, I am scared of the saw, so <laughs> I always use osteotome. You can do it, no problem. Chalo. So this is the stack osteotome? Huh? Can Should we see the CM picture? Should. Should. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. It is at the level of fibula head. Yeah. See, this patient is very thin. If I go a little higher, it might get a better correction. Yes, sir. Actually, it, yeah? uh, it is okay, little uh, low. Huh. So, what I can do is, I have not done anything on lateral side. Okay. So, I can change my. See, that's the beauty that you have done, just done the, uh, so I can play with, just, just, just show a C arm. Uh, hold, hold it up, hold it up, up, C arm, yes. So now I can play, right? C arm. Okay. Yeah, can you see this? Huh. Huh. C arm, shoot. Can you see this? Sin, sin. C arm, shoot. He is changing direction more proximally. Yes. Can you yeah. see it? Yes. So that is possible. Should. Sir, it okay. looks. Yeah. Can you see this now? Yeah, seen. Yeah? Okay. Give me another. This is okay. Yeah. Is same size ka nahi hai kya? 25 ka do nahi hai? So that is another mistake. Huh? You should have uh, same size too for stack. For any stack, stacking technique. Niraj. Ah, sir. For any stacking technique, you should have two osteotome. Otherwise, yeah. same size. Same size two osteotome ah. is must. Ah, chal, shoot. Yeah. Can you see this? Yeah, see. Ah, okay. Uh, give me another. Are <laughs> 
The cameraman has to uh, move a little bit uh, towards the limb and then again to the Siam. So this is third osteotome. Give me another one. This is wrong, yeah. So this is gradual destruction of the osteotomy. Yeah. Okay. So now leave it, leave it, leave it. Clinically, you can see the alignment, which is valgus. Uh, almost, yeah. Almost, yes, and we will try to rectify the remaining part of it, right? Okay. So this is the stack osteotom technique. Chill out. So this comes with the synthesis set. Arthur has something else. Oh, alag -alag unka wo distractor. Okay. So now we will use the gradual distractor. I use the cautery cord pre-op and post-op. What is that? Uh, cautery cord for the alignment. Huh, that we will uh, do now. Oh, that, yeah. that we are not reached that stage. Just trying to hammer them. Hammer there. Hold this. Hold this up. You can remove this. No problem. Hold this up. See, I'm short. So now this is the distractor short, which short, will open short. up the osteotomy site. Short. Okay, just one centimeter or 0.8 millimeter away from the lateral cortex. Short. Okay. Right? Yeah. I did a screwdriver. Yes. Open it. Yeah, so open kar. Open kar deja. Karo karo kar deja yaar. Karo na. So now we are distracting the side, so the osteotomy side. Yeah, fluoro, 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 rakho. Fluoro, haan, chalo, karo, shoot. So this is how you have to open and correct the alignment of the knee joint. Chalo, karo, 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 karo. Fluoro. Karo, karo, karo. Karo, or karo. Or karo. Sometime you can get, uh, if it is a bigger size deformity, you know, you'll get a crack sound. Bas, chodo. Huh. So now we will take alignment rod. Uh, alignment rod, please. Yeah. Hip joint, I don't know. We have to see. Hey, uh, radio listen table. Hai? Table radio listen table. Yes, huh? yes sir. Hip, hai, hai. hip, hai. hip, dikhega, hip can you show me the hip? Show me the hip first. Sir, uh, any uh, you comment on the pre-operative planning of hey, the wedge? Rodana. Pre-operative? Planning the wedge correction, how much wedge, wedge we have to? Wedge correction, I think, was done by Dr. Kissing. Pre-operating planning was done by who? Dr. Amit has done. He will, uh, Amit, he will Amit, tell. Amit hai na, udhar hi hai na? Haan, udhar hi hai, sir. Uh, Amit ko pakdo na, yaar. Bata, bata. So, sab chiz mere ko pooche ga, to kaisa chale ga ta? <laughs> sir, aapko bulaya ba mai se isi liye? <laughs> mere, chalo, hey, shoot maar hip joint. Oh, babu. Uh, can you see, hey, hip joint dikha na? Idhar, 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 idhar. Or upar? Upar ki dhar, oh, upar jyada chala gaya. Idhar aja na? Haan, bas, 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 bas. Okay. Yeah, we can see the hip. Ha, chalo, shoot karo. Okay. So probably this is center of the hip joint. Chalo, dekho. Sir, so thoda aur medial jayega sir. Ha, jayega, jayega. Na, kya na maine? Ek karna hoga, shoot marna. Ha, bas. Ha, sir. Thoda, thoda jada ho gaya kya? Bas, bas. Pakka hai sir, pakka hai, thik hai. Pakka hai na? Bolte ja. And this is second toe. Now knee joint dikhao, bhai sir. Knee joint, knee joint. Pakad na udar? Haan. Hmm. Center of the ankle and knee joint. Haan, chalo. So this is the alignment test, gross test. Uh, doctor... Uh, uh, factor uh, thoda kam kar de je. Haan. He has got own CT scan, so probably he can do it much better. Yeah. So shoot, shoot, fast. Okay. So this is in center. We will little correct little bit more. So you, you aim towards Fujisawa point or little towards the center? Uh, I aim towards a Fujisawa point. Fujisawa point. Okay. But sometimes correct over correcting in osteoporotic patient can lead to fractures. Okay. Chal, bas, bas, okay. So but uh, this is uh, not weight bearing. So what is your take on this? What is that? So this is not weight bearing correction. Roshan sir. Shoot. 
एक एक मिनट हाँ बिल्कुल वॉट इज दैट आई डेंट गेट यू सर द अलाइनमेंट रॉड विच वी आर सींग हेयर दिस इज नॉट वेट बेरिंग Yeah, this is not weight bearing, but this is a gross alignment which we are trying to correct in a varus position because I have corrected the varus uh, mal alignment. Okay. So now we'll use the plate, plate do, laminar spreader and plate, uh, plate, plate, plate do. So this laminar spreader can be used as your tool for ch changing the uh, slope. You know. Can Somebody we show the? ऑपरेटेड लिम पिक्चर दिखाओ ऑपरेटिंग लिम पिक्चर सो यूजिंग सिंगल लेमना स्पेडर यस ओके यूजुअली आई पुट अ बोन वेज हियर बट इन दिस केस वी डोंट हैव अ बोन वेज ओके सो प्रोबेबली वी हैव टू डू इट विदाउट बोन वेज गिव मी अ कॉटरिंग ये प्लेट दे दो भाई साहब जल्दी जल्दी चलो सर व्हाट इज योर इंडिकेशन ऑफ बोन ग्राफ्टिंग इन एच टी ओ See, unless your uh, uh, defect is more than 12, 14 mm, no, I don't do bone grafting. Sir, usme bhi ab to nahi kar rahe. So people have extended their uh, indication even more. So uh, bone grafting is very, very painful procedure. Yeah. You know, the only place where women can stuck their sari is eyelash crest. <laughs> And even if you take that, then it's a big pain. It's a very, very painful procedure. Anybody has gone bone grafting, undergone bone grafting surgery? एनी एनी डॉक्टर स्किन नाइफ स्किन नाइफ बचे हुए हैं सर सर बचे हुए हैं सर बचे हुए हैं सर सभी नाम बोल रहे हैं सो बोन ग्राफ्टिंग इज अ वेरी वेरी पेनफुल प्रोसेस दैट वी हैव सीन सर मोस्ट ऑफ द पेशेंट यू बोन ग्राफ्ट द दैट साइड इज पेनफुल सी कोई ऑप्शन नहीं तो बात अलग है नॉन यूनियन है वेरी बैड नॉन यूनियन और कंपाउंड फ्रैक्चर व्हिच नीड्स टू बी टेकन केयर ऑफ द ओनली वे इज टू यूज हिज ओन बोन बट हियर आई थिंक ऑस्टियोटॉमी कैन वर्क द स्टोबेली हैज सो शोन दैट Almost up to 12 mm opening. You don't need any uh, bone graft. Sir, bone graft substitutes your experience. Yeah, sometimes I, I usually use bone graft substitute, but here it's not available. Okay. Which here one you I, use? I use tricalcium phosphate wedges, uh, bio composite, or you can use the other ones also, uh, which are marketed by Athrex. Okay. Chalo, hey, drill dalo, fata fata. Chalo. Chalo. So, have you found any issues with the bone graft substitutes? Some serious discharge sometimes? No, 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 not yet. Okay. Hey, HL, shoot. Dikha. Dikha di ek baar. Dikha ye. Any. Ek minute, nikal isko. Nikal, 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 nikal. Ha. Abhi lo. Tu ya direction change mat kar yaar. Ha. Bas, 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 bas. Hey, shoot mar. Nee. Thoda sa. Ha. Nikal isko. Bas. Chal kar abhi kar. डायरेक्शन चेंज मत किया कर शोट ओके चल जाने दे नहीं नहीं जाने देना गया किधर हो बस शोट शोट रे राजू यस चल सर थोड़ा ऊपर ये नहीं जाना है ना निकाल ना उसको बाहर निकाल ना बाहर निकाल दे उसको अरे प्लेट थोड़ा ऊपर जाएगा ना भाई चल ओके ओके okay, चलो अभी करो अभी करो ड्रिल करो और पकड़े रखो वैसे ही उधर ड्रिल मत मारना सिर्फ पकड़े रखना बस थोड़ा और एक बाइट ले ले एक ड्रिल जाओ हाँ एक एक जाओ बस शूट हाँ बस काफी है चलो जाने दो अरे यार तू सरका तो है ये तू इधर आ जा चल बाहर निकल This is original synthesis plate. Ji yes, sir. What sir. is uh, non-original synthesis plate? What is that? Ek minute. Sir, Vinay is asking what is non-original synthesis plate. There are many copies, na? No? Sir, banana hai sir, vaise. Ah, shoot, shoot. Make in India, bahut hai na, bhai. सर मेक इन इंडिया सर चलो साहब का ही है ये हाँ तो वही तो है कॉपी कॉपी रहते रे तेरे को चलेगा कटरीना का कॉपी ओरिजिनल चाहिए ना सर डॉक्टर नीरज हाउ मैक्सिमम करेक्शन यू अचीव यू यू प्रोडक्ट इन एसटीओ 
because there is a concern about sure. over vulgarization uh, yeah. is there any concern because about that sir over over one minute over kya hang nikalne ka over vulgarization over vulgar sir dusra dal nikal ye rakh do dusra dal sir ha क्या Uh, it tend to increase the patello femoral pressure there is a syndrome which is described as excessive lateral patella syndrome elps sure uh, sir there is a way to prevent that no uh, if you are the biplanar osteotomy if you are taking sir. it down Under? then the proximal yeah, fragment yeah, yeah, yeah. has the patella sure question sir ha bolo that biplanar osteotomy the descending biplanar osteotomy that will have the proximal length fragment length attached length. to the patella tendon length kitna nikal mat length kitna dekh lo एक मिनट एक मिनट जरूर जी सर कंफ्यूजन दे रहे कितने हां तो 60 का स्क्रू ले ले चल 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 निकल हां निशो निकल निकल नहीं नहीं निकल निकल बाहर निकल बाहर निकल यार अरे बाहर मतलब ड्रिल से निकाल राजू दोनों हां पूरा निकल तो ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जन है ना यार थोड़ा सा एक टाइम दे जरा मेरे को 2 मिनट आई एम जस्ट हां सर उसके बाद क्वेश्चन लिटिल हैंड अप विद दिस स्क्रू सिस्टम बिकॉज़ ये इधर थोड़ा सा प्रॉब्लम है ये क्या है अरे अरे इस पे जाएगा नहीं ना ये देखा अभी टच हो रहा है ना ये निकाल दो उसको स्क्रू ड्राइवर ले चल समझा ना तू डाल जस्ट गिव मी टू मिनट्स मैं प्लेट फिक्स कर लूँ एक बार फिर उसके बाद बातें करते बैठे इसको निकाल दे चल ना जल्दी जल्दी कर रहे क्या करते हैं ये निकाल देना स्पेसर निकाल हम्म चल 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 जल्दी गया नहीं अभी वो ठीक है वो बाद में निकल जाएगा अरे हाँ चल टाइट कर दे उसको टाइट टाइट किया ना बस छोड़ छोड़ दे उसको कैमरा पर्सन कैन यू शो द ऑपरेटिंग लेवल अभी इसको निकाल दे चल व्हाट इज़ दैट या इसको निकाल दे फिर से इसको टाइट कर देना जस्ट एक ही मिनट हमारा जरा इशू हो गया था स्क्रू का हाँ यू आर आस्किंग समथिंग सम क्वेश्चन अभी इसको टाइट कर दे पहला पहला इसको टाइट कर रोशन सर कैन वी आस्क क्वेश्चन सो आई वॉज टेलिंग की जो आप कह रहे थे कि इफ यू ओवर करेक्ट इन द पेटल बायो मैकेनिक चेंजेस सो दट बाई प्लेन ऑस्टियोटमी इन विच वी टेक द डिसेंडिंग बाई प्लेन ऑस्टियोटमी इन दैट द पेटल टेंडन इज अटैच टू द प्रोक्सिमल फ्रैगमेंट सो इफ वी डू दैट वे देन वी कैन डू इट करेक्शन करेक्शन ऑल्सो एंड देर बी नो चेंज इन द पेटल बायो मैकेनिक So that is that is why the bioplanar osteotomy is more better for patello femoral biomechanics. So the article by La, uh, this uh, Alex Tobley huh. says you can open with tomofix plates mm -hmm. up to 22 millimeters. 22. 22. Yes. After 14, you have to do a descending osteotomy. Descending. That's what. Without so bone graft. Without bone graft. Up to 22, no bone graft. Different surgeons have different perspective. You know, everybody will have different uh, perspective. But sir. Uh, How many Stop of us me. have the no. courage in twenty? Twenty-two <laughs> is you will like to change the complete uh, knee bio mechanics, you know. It's a shoot, shoot, shoot. For me, sir, it is twelve till now. Twelve, yeah. I have not put. Chal. I have opened till eighteen, twenty. Not both more than twenty. Without bone graft, sir? No, no, not without bone. Always graft. I always do it. It's a shoot, mar. Shoot, hey. Chalo, maro. 
Sir, it does with graft always, whenever it is I, more than I two. always do it with graft. I don't do it without graft. Sir, okay. your take on tibial condylar valgus osteotomy? Tibial? TCVO. 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 Yeah. The TCVO is a very new kit. The only thing is, uh, you have to be a good master in doing that intra-articular part of it. Uh, simple, eh? Eh, jo extend kiya na, dikh raha hai aapko? Isi ko aage liya. Haan, isko aisa kar dega to TCV ho jayega. But you know, unless you put the intra-articular fixations, the TCO, VO doesn't have a good, uh, you know. Yeah, but but, but the correction is far better than your only HTO. You can combine HTO with TCV. So, what you is your indication in which case you are going to do HTO alone and which case you are going to do HTO with TCVO? So, what parameter you look See, in X-ray and if, present? If my alignment, correction of alignment around is 20, 22, like uh, just Vinay said about uh, Stobilis article, then in that case is up to 25 mm, I can consider uh, TCVO. You know, I can get better correction with good joint line congruence angle, but beyond 25, it is very difficult. Then you have to combine with femoral osteotomy as well as tibial osteotomy. Uh, because sorry, TCVO, the original paper, it was described as per the pattern of tibial plateau. Some mm. it's a uh, dome shape, some See, it is a yes. flat. So Every, everybody has described TCVO in different ways. If you read uh, so many descriptions of TCVO, they have got different, different article and different, different ways. Chal. Okay. Eh, abhi, a golden screw. Now the most important screw is the golden screw. Dynamic screw. And eh, dynamic, eh, na? So, phir aisa kyu dala? Ek minute. Haan, aisa dala. Haan, chalo, dala. dala. Dr. Roshan. Haan, bolo. Yes, uh, this opening is reverse trapezoidal, which is required for uh, this thing. Can we see this? The posterior opening is more than the anterior opening, which is we we required this for having correct slope. Can no, we show that? Can we see the lateral view because we have not seen? Uh, just a minute. I am just. This opening this is also. reverse trapezoidal. Uh, golden which is screw. Required. Usually, this screw is 40, 42, 44. Here, the plate is very off, so probably we will require a bigger size screw. So, the only thing is. Uh, if bone is really good, for 36, 38 ka dala. 38. 38, 38 ka golden screw de And uh, so this, now this plate will pull the tibia mm, close to it, you know, and this okay. will uh, lock the hinge. Yeah. This is very important step of your uh, plating. So, uh, sir, your proximal three screws, uh, all are bicortical or unicortical? Unicortical. You know. All are unicortical. unicortical. I never okay. use biocortical. Hmm. Can we see the Siam picture also? Yes, yes. I will. I will. I'll just show you. Hey, Siam, low, low. Chalo. Hey, one minute. One minute. Hold. Karo. Ha. Chalo. Hold. Karo. One minute. One minute. Tight. Mat. Karna. So, Siam should. Yeah. So now, go on tightening it. Uh, fluoro chalo rakho, bhai sab. Fluoro chalo rakho. Ha. Go on tightening it. Can you see it? The plate is going very close. Very chalo, close. Chalo, 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 chalo. Tight, tight, tight. Tight karo or, or tight karo. Or tight karo. So this will lock the hinge. You know, somebody was saying that what happens to the lateral cortex. If it breaks, it helps in locking that. Yes. So this locking is very, very important. And this is the most important principle of your tomo fix. And this, if you are able to copy, that means you are copy. Bas, bas, kafi. OK. So now you see how the construct is. It's very stable, rock solid. Sir, uh, the topmost screw, huh? wo thik lag raha? Topmost screw? Thik hai na? Okay. Change, change kar de gaya? Tu bolta tha change Nahin kar de gaya? Nahin sir, just, you are a better judge. Uh -huh. No, no, I will just check it. See, uh, one has to realize that whenever somebody has pointed out something, always address the issue. If you don't address, you are a fool. Right? Chalo. So in fact, uh, probably uh, Niraj, this yeah. is the reason why Stobili never uh, recommended bone grafting. Okay. Because it's a hinge lock. Huh. And it's a very, very stable fixation very as stable. compared to 45. 45. 
फोर्टी फोर्टी हीलिंग हैपेंस फ्रॉम द हिंज टुवर्ड्स द मीडियल साइड नॉट मीडियल टू लैटरल सो ही सेस टू टू मेंटेन द इंटैक्टनेस ऑफ द हिंज इज इम्पोर्टेंट If you break and, the hinge, and in fact, then it is a delayed slow. union or non-union. Otherwise, in fact, it's never going to non-union. In fact, the success of HTO and re re uh, re regeneration or re generation of HTO has happened because of Tomofix. Tomofix is a very very popular implant. Hmm. Yes. Uh, as a sports medicine surgeon, we don't use it, but it's a very very popular implant for HTO. Roshan sir, bolo. Uh, sir, uh, are you going mm. to show us any more steps, or can we? Yeah, you uh, can go ahead. No uh, problem. I'll just pull. Sir, the, uh, we uh, want to see once without uh, valgus force. Valgus force. Then leave. Yeah. Leave. 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 I will show the limb picture, na? You can go ahead with the lectures. I will just finish this and then I'll come down. Okay. Oh, okay. Sir, अब तो lunch शुरू हो रहा है sir. तो अच्छा lunch चालू हो गया? Sir, हम lunch के साथ panel discussion कर रहे हैं. Okay, okay. I'll just join you. And we have panel discussion with plate. So two minutes, we will join you. ठीक है. The okay. lunch is so on. You can take your plates. So I'll I'll just remove it now. Can you yeah. see this? Uh, yes. स्टेबल सर ओके नहीं कहा सर एक एक और शूट चाहिए हाँ शूट चाहिए शूट दिखा हुआ ओके या अभी सियाम भी पिक्चर दिखा दें अभी हाँ ए शूट कर जरा मेरे को स्कूल का इंटर आर्टिकल देखना है क्लिनिकल इट लुकिंग फाइन या या एक बस सियाम सियाम पिक्चर भी देख लें सर इट इट डजन्ट लुक लाइक इनसाइड डी जॉइंट स्क्रू र फ्लोरो रखो सही सही इनसाइड जॉइंट नहीं है ठीक है फ्लोरो इट्स नॉट इनसाइड डी जॉइंट राइट या आई कैन गो होम ना अरे सर नहीं तो वाराणसी में कैद कर लेगा मेरे को तो सर मोक्ष प्राप्ति है यहाँ मोक्ष दिया नहीं तूने मोक्ष मेरे को रूम पे भेज देना मोक्ष इवनिंग में सर देंगे सर इवनिंग में मोक्ष होगा सर रूम का मोक्ष चाहिए मुझे ये दे गॉस पीस देना यार तो क्या चलो स्क्रू डाल फटाफट ये चेंज करना पड़ेगा लंबा है वी आर मूविंग टू द पैनल डिस्कशन सर रोशन सर हाँ बोलो हम पैनल डिस्कशन डिस्कस कर रहे हैं और अगर आपको कोई उसमें व्यू देना होगा तो यू कैन और जब भी कोई इम्पोर्टेंट स्टेप होगा तो जस्ट लेट अस नो सर यस 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 ओके सर थैंक यू वंडरफुल डेमोस्ट्रेशन so I request everyone, please take your plates and come back to seats. We'll have some panel discussion. We can discuss something over lunch. दूसरा कॉटेज का होल्ड आए? सर अभी अभी आए? उसको चेंज कर दो। काफी बड़ा है वो। बस चल। ये कितना था? Thirty four. Thirty four. So thirty six or thirty eight का दे ना. Thirty six का दे. ठेक ठेक चलिए रूट का जरूरत ही नहीं है ऐसा करना नहीं चाहिए राउंड थिंग है ये इजी इसमें बेटर इधर आ सीएम दिखा भाई ये बारा बारे ना ऊपर का चेंज करने की जरूरत नहीं ये चेंज कर देना बस ये कितना था फोर्टी था ना ले
चलो ये डाल दो इस पे ले लो ना स्लाइड वन ये आ गया ठीक है ना अरे नहीं डॉक्टर रोशन रोशन सर वी आर आवाज नहीं जा रही बंद रोशन सर रोशन सर पिक्चर इन पिक्चर दिखाने के लिए बोलो आर्थोस्कोपिक पिक्चर भी दिखवाने के लिए बोलो ये भी रिट्रीवर नहीं जाएगा रोशन सर हाँ बोलो हाँ यू आर ऑन अगेन बोलो तो सर क्या स्टेप चल रहा देखो आई एम ट्राइंग टू निगोशिएट दी रूट ओके आई एम अनेबल टू निगोशिएट द रूट टनल बिकॉज दिस सिंथिस प्लेट इज नॉट दैट रूट फ्रेंडली 
Okay, so the screw is coming on the way. Yes, yes, and there are three very close screws. Yeah. You know, as you see the synthesis plate, there are very, very close screws. So, unlikely I'll be able to do the root, the root repair in this situation. Yeah? My gown is out of Okay. So, I will just remove this plate, uh, these uh, threads. Okay. Hmm? You can proceed with the another surgery if you want. Oh, oh, oh okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Bye. चल मेरे को कटर देना अच्छा ये वाला कटर है दूसरा वाला नहीं है आइडियली करना ही नहीं चाहिए था गलती किया ये डिस्प्ले
start our next session. So I will request Dr. Rajiv Gupta sir to give his talk on revision ACL reconstruction. Uh, good afternoon to all of you and uh, this is uh, I missed my presentation uh, uh, and uh, just today I have a case based discussion on revision ACL. Uh, uh, this is 32 year old male BSF guy, uh, two years back he had injury. He and femoral renal is the reason. Second uh, cause is trauma. Uh, within six months, if a patient six to eight months has trauma, it's the, uh, the tear rupture of the graft. Third is the biological reason, non-corporation of the or poor quality and collision. Other uh, associated reasons are again reason for the ACL failure as I discussed in a morning lecture, ramp and uh, root tear may be uh, the reason for more strain on the reconstructed graft. And alignment is of course has a major role. Uh, this is what we discussed, traumatic events all uh, proven in the literature, technical error is 80% in cases is responsible and out of this femoral tunnel is the main culprit for failure of the graft. Uh, femoral tunnel can be anterior, posterior, center, vertical. All we already know vertical tunnel gives you a rotational instability and it is a more posterior, again excessive tension in the extension. If it is an anterior, of course it gives rise to tension in the flexion and stiffness in extension. For ideal tunnel, of course, if we do nowadays, we don't use the clock position. It is 2 mm from the posterior cortex. And uh, I advise, I suggest uh, 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 with the practice, uh, if you are use offsets, uh, uh, as you grow in a arthroscopy, start using free hand by putting it all in the center of the femoral side. Because every ACL is not same. You can't use the offset in each and every one. So, Initially, you do with your uh, uh, all, mark it with the mark with the 
bead pin, remove the awl and then see look where this the uh, position on the femoral footprint. And it must be anterior to resident ridge. For tibial tunnel, tibial tunnel is responsible around in 45% of cases uh, for failure of the ACL reconstruction and it is the if it is anterior, it impinges on the inter condyle notch and if it is a posterior, it will impinge on the PCL. If it is more lateral, again this all impingement leads to failure of your graft. This is how we need extension in full extension if it is posterior to Helsinger line. It's perfect. It should be more towards medial on the your tibial footprint, uh, especially anteromedial bundle. And always, always look with your anteromedial portal while doing arthroscopy. You, you put your scope, remove from the working portal and put a scope again on the anteromedial portal and see whether the bead pin is in the center or a little bit more medial towards the uh, footprint. Associated injury, of course, uh, there is a lot of uh, literature available that uh, and uh, we see in practice that we always, we sometimes miss PLC injuries with ACL reconstruction. And uh, this, this again give rise to uh, instability, feel of instability and later on failure of the graft. Drive through sign, it's very important. Uh, Sometimes because of uh, your uh, busy in uh, busy in clinics, you can't examine properly. Use either stress X-rays or do the proper arthroscopy, proper diagnostic. You find diagnosed uh, drive-through sign that shows that you have PLC injury along with associated ACL tear. Graft choices. Uh, I use uh, most of the time in revision peroneus or quadriceps nowadays. I uh, stop using opposite contralateral hamstrings. I am comfortable with the quads. Uh, I remove upper patella with bone block. And uh, literature shows that uh, uh, choice of gra graft can be an individual uh, concern. Results are almost same. Uh, we don't have allografts. And again, revision, uh, anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction, quadriceps, ipsilateral, contralateral, hamstring grafts, uh, they uh, give all good results. The requirement is the graft diameter, adequate collision to get good incorporation. Uh, my choices, as I already told, peroneus, quartz with bone block, and rarely BTB. Uh, uh, this is uh, what uh, single stage or two stage, it's all depend upon the what we are dealing. We are not discussing about the infection. If it is a septic losing, graft trauma, if you have bigger tunnels, you do two stage, put a like crest graft and come after six to eight weeks once the graft incorporated. Most, uh, most of the time I do always uh, single stage. Uh, uh, just. Uh, in the single stage, I just uh, change the flexion angle. I don't remove the implants on the end, on the femur side. Change the if I find uh, outside in technique is okay for me. It is uh, 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 I use that or if uh, inside out using a free hand technique. If I can change the uh, trajectory of my femoral tunnel, I use that. And uh, for indication, single stage, uh, the my requirement for patient is good range of motion tunnel diameter less than 14 mm, completely incorrect or completely correct uh, uh, tunnels doesn't matter. We can play with our flexion angle to change the trajectory on the femur side and uh, there is another uh, more emphasis on tibial slope. Uh, two stages, of course, tunnel dilatation more than 14 mm, let's say large coronal deformity, you want to do single stage STO with ACL or two stage, it's uh, upon individual concern. Uh, nowadays, I do uh, a, uh, revision ACL along with lateral tenodesis or ALL uh, uh, and uh, most of the time I uh, with high demand patients revision ACLs, I do lateral tenodesis. Uh, this is picture with ALL reconstruction and this is what uh, I, we did in this patient. ALL tunnel is there along with revised graft. Uh, it's a post of MRI, though ligamentization is not of good quality, uh, still it's a one year old MR picture and uh, if this 
this is what the squatting which this is simple clinical test we can judge our patient uh, in continuation with revision again a uh, female housewife 40 years bmi around 25 uh, had acl two years back uh, and uh, uh, operated within one month of injury and uh, again she start complaining of pain and instability after six months uh, this was uh, her index uh, x-ray with varus with acl and if you can appreciate the tunnel of the femur side is vertical uh, that might be the reason for failure of his uh, her graft uh, this is mr picture the femur tunnel is uh, seems uh, uh, on the posterior side it's okay but it is vertical in this uh, section uh, and this is what I did I changed the trajectory on the femur side making more horizontal with STO uh, this is single stitch and uh, and uh, see uh, the difference in all these x-rays uh, this was the first uh, x-ray and this is the sorry Uh, this was first x-ray uh, post-op and if we see the three years x-rays there is some uh, the gap we can see appreciate that shows that the, the cartilage regenerate if you correct the alignment this is two years old x-ray of this patient uh, ACL revision surgery is of course challenging and uh, uh, the rehabilitation or the expected outcome is not as uh, up to primary ACL reconstruction we have to find out the pre precise reason for failure whether tunnel malposition is the major culprit or it was an inadequate diameter of graft uh, I recommend I use lateral tenodesis or lateral uh, anterolateral reconstruction with my uh, revised ACL nowadays I am looking for slope also if I think that slope is too much then I do corrective uh, 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 correction of slope simultaneously and uh, we have to individualize the requirement of the patient so uh, this is uh, very important to decide the management there's some po point how I decide my patient can go back to sports thank you Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. Now I will request Dr. Astos Agrawal, sir, to present on his talk on multi-ligament knee injury treatment algorithm. Good afternoon. Thank you, Apex. Thank you, Saroop. Dr. S.K. Singh, sir. Mm. Now, multi ligamentous injuries has always been a controversial topic in the arthroscopy and the injuries. I will try to, in the past seven to eight minutes, to solve some controversies in this matter. Now, what is a multi ligamentous knee injury? A rupture of two or more of the major ligaments referring to cruciate ligaments and collaterals. 
is she find this multi ligament knee injury majority of multi ligament injuries are part of knee dislocations now what are the controversies first uh, to establish a diagnosis if patient is conscious clinical examination to establish which ligaments are torn if it's painful diagnosis by inspection and palpation and by the test which move the knee in small arc of motion like lechman test recurrentum test varus and valgus stress test and mri along with these tests can accurately diagnose major ligament injuries ankle brachial play index is mandatory if abi is below 0.9 or index is non conclusive or doubtful color doppler or ct angiography is mandatory in all cases now the second controversy is whether it should go for operative in all the cases or non operative in all the cases or when to decide the significant improved patient outcome in operative group in terms of range of motion and decrease in amount of flexion contact is seen no significant difference existed in terms of instability non operative treatment remains a viable option in silkert situations like geriatric patients inactive patients with comorbidity that are contraindication to surgeries and case of polytrauma patients now the third controversy is what should be the timing of surgery no consensus existed in literature regarding the optimal time of surgery early surgery advantages are early identification of anatomical landmarks and planes so the direct repair of injured structures is easy but it has disadvantage also the run of compartment syndrome and post shop arthrofibrosis there in many cases now on the if you delay the surgery advantages swelling decrease there is increased healing of capsules and collateral ligaments so decrease chance of compartment syndrome and decrease chance of arthrofibrosis but is a disadvantage also the excessive scarring may occur so repair can't be done so the ideal time count your literature is around 3 to 4 weeks now the fourth controversy is whether you should go for repair or reconstruction the mid substance crucial uh, ligament repair acl pcl at present are not able to repair regardless of time pass since injury reconstruction is recommended tibial or femoral side bone avulsions or the crucial ligaments may be unable to repair with screw or sutures as we decide the primary repair of non cruciate ligament injury like mcl lcl post medial and posterior corner is a viable option if the surgery is performed within 3 to 4 weeks of the date of injury reconstruction should be considered if greater than 4 weeks have passed now the fifth controversy is what should be the sequence of graft fixation the no solid evidence in the literature that supports the best protocol for sequential graft fixing traditionally we fix the pcl first as it is central axis reduction rotation of knee and it's it is a main stabilizer but this paper shows with there been literature which shows that the tensioning of two cruciate and fixing the acl first reproduces better kinematic of knee if the pcl is first fixed without tensing of the acl graft risk of fixing the knee not in neutral but in anterior portion is there generate a tension in pcl graft causing elongation and failure over time now the sixth controversy is what is order about the rehabilitation rehabilitation protocol should be individualized taken into account the repaired or the reconstructed tissue and the fixation use repetitive surgery protect the structures by delaying the beginning of mobility and if we can go reconstruction when re implants are used early motion is allowed pcl injuries and collateral ligament injuries require brief period of immobilization and protective bracing weight bearing is delayed to allow more time for healing in acl reconstruction early motion is educated for better outcome now take home messages ankle brachial index is mandatory in multi ligament injuries surgical treatment offer better functional results and return to outcome work tendency we should have tendency to intervene early tension the two cruciate fix the acl first rehabilitation protocol should be individualized thank you
Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. Now I will request Dr. Rajiv Raman, sir, to give his talk on PLC injury, how I deal. We will take question at the end of the session, if any. We can take any question on, I think, multi-ligament injury. In the meantime, the presentation is being opened here. Ashuvas. Uh, So we have started. Yeah. So thanks uh, AOP and VOS for invitation and thanks to Apex Hospital, Mr. Swaroop. So I will be talking on PLC ring constructions. Before that, we can have a small sip of anatomy. So posterolateral corner, if you see, there are almost 28 structures in the posterolateral corner. But all those 28 structures are not important. It's only the three pillar which is important, that is your fibular collateral ligament, the popliteus, and the popliteal fibular ligament. The fibular collateral ligament, one of the important varus stabilizer, and it is called as one of the primary static varus stabilizer of the knee. And normally, if you see its attachment, it's there, just posterior superior to the lateral epicondyle, and it's a distal attachment over is there over the head of the fibula. The popliteus tendon, it is one of the static and dynamic stabilizer of the knee, and it's one of the ro important rotational stabilizer of the knee also. And if you see the insertion of the popliteus and the most of the work has been done by uh, Laprade about the point of location of the popliteus uh, where you should put it. It's around 1.8 millimeter anterior to your lateral epicondyle. And you can see this is the most important part where we plan how to put our LCA, where to put our LCA and where to put our popliteus. So you must know this anatomical location. And the popliteal femoral ligament, it is also a one of the important rotational stabilizer and that is it stabilizes the knee in the external rotation. So whenever there is a excessive external rotation force, it gets out and it gives a stabilization of the knee in the external rotation. And these are the three primary stabilizers of the posterolateral uh, compartment. And normally we want to recreate these three primary stabilizers. So how do you assess whenever the patient comes to you in the clinic? Normally, either you have a patient with an isolated lateral collateral tear, or sometimes he has a complex posterolateral corner injury. And normally there are two tests either a varus test and a dial test by which you differentiate whether you will you are, ha you are having a patient with an isolated LCL injury or a posterolateral corner injury. So just I will uh, finish my lecture with two case scenario. This, this is a 35 uh, year old BSF uh, person had a history of giving way for last six months. Uh, six months and he has a trans tbl acl reconstruction one year back on examination the latch one was positive and dial test was positive positive it was the dial test which was missed twice and for that his acl got failed so this is very important most of the failure in the acl and pcl we when we see our uh, clinical uh, examination history sheet or sometime it's the postolateral corner injury which we have missed once or twice and that is the cause of the failure so in spite of this tunnel position uh, a very good talk by dr rajiv i think the missing the postolateral corner is also one of the common cause of acl and pcl failure so if you see the clinical uh, I think the hope the video, the patient had Latchman positive and he had, you can see, 
the dial test was positive. There was almost 80 degree external rotation of the TBI and 90 degree of flexion. You can see uh, it was a external rotation, 70 to 80 degree external rotation of the t uh, of the uh, TBI, and that was suggested uh, of a classical posterolateral corner injury. So how will you plan whether you will go with a fibula based procedure or a tibia based procedure? Normally whenever you are getting a patient with a dial positive go for a comprehensive posterolateral corner reconstruction. Never go for an isolated fibula based procedure like a arsen, uh, arsen procedure, arterio procedure or a larsen procedure. So a laparade or modified laparade is the ideal technique. So we plan, you can see here the MRI it was a Trans-TBL ACL reconstruction, that is a blessing in disguise. You can plan your ACL reconstruction. So we did our, our anatomical ACL reconstruction. I will not show you because it's not. And then we planned for a postulateral corner reconstruction with a modified laparotomy technique. See, in laparotomy technique, normally we, uh, there's a two tunnel. You put two tunnel over the uh, femoral condyle, one for the popliteus and one for the FCL. But sometime in revision ACL, if your patient has been, uh, the, the patient has a reconstruction of the ACL once or twice, you have already two tunnels in the femoral condyle. So putting other, other two tunnels is very challenging. So here you can use this modified laparotomy technique where you make a single tunnel in between the insertion of the popliteus and your LCL. This is a small video demonstration. So 90 degree flexion of the knee, j shaped incision starting from the distal femur in between the girded tubercle and the proximal fibula and try to make a thick posterior best flap this is the most important part and go for a sharp dissection under the subcutaneous fatty tissue till the posterior border of the uh, bicep femoris you can see so we are taking a posterior best flap and the most important part is neurolysis of the common peroneal nerve. This is step one for PLC reconstruction. Either you go for a Larsen or Laparate technique. So you can see here, you have done a neurolysis of the common peroneal nerve. And once you have done your neurolysis of the common peroneal nerve, the second important step is making your first window at the level of lateral epicondyle. So you cut the iliotibial band at the level of lateral epicondyle to make your first window. You can see here, this is my first window at the level of lateral epicondyle. So one, now you can see this bony prominence, that is your lateral epicondyle. Try to dissect it proximally and distally so that you can pass your graft in between the distal part of the window. So once you have made, uh, uh, the third is the most small important part is preparation of your, if I can stop this video, oh, of your tibial, uh, femur, uh, uh, fibular tunnel. It should be from the anterolateral to the posterior medial part. And normally I use my finger as a protector. So you can use your PCL jig also, but put your finger on the posterior medial border of the fibula and direct from the anterolateral toward the posterior medial part. Pass your beath pin, then pass your suture lapo, till, uh, the diameter, then pass your suture lapo lasso. You can see I am using a yellow suture lapo for my fibular tunnel. Once you have made your fibular tunnel, now it's time to make your TBL tunnel. Again, use your index finger in front of your common peroneal nerve as a protector. Again, you can use your PCL jig also. And now pass your green suture lapo, uh, lasso from the TBL tunnel. So you have a femoral tunnel, you have a TBL tunnel. This is a very good technique of identification of the LCL and popliteus, the pull-out technique. So with the ethy bond, you just pull out, you can see the popliteus insertion, remnant of the popliteus and the LCL insertion. It is there in most of the knee. And in between them, you can make your single tunnel. That is your modified laparotomy technique. So normally, you direct your with pin toward the superior pole of the patella so that it will not interfere with the intercondylar notch. Then remit as per the desired diameter of your graft. You can see here, so your direction should be towards the superior pole of the patella. Don't try to uh, put it horizontally, otherwise you may interfere with the intercondylar notch. Now, here we are using a quadriceps split graft because both their hamstring were used in primary ACL reconstruction. So now you can see this is a quadriceps split graft. So you have a single tunnel on the femoral side, you put your 20 millimeter graft inside and then fix it with aperture fixation. Now do you have two limb that will, that will reconstruct your popliteus and the FCL and you can, uh, now you pass both of this limb through the uh, distal part of the first window. Here you can see we are fixing it with the bio screw. You can use a bio screw or a metallic screw or any type of uh, suspensory fixation also to fix the graft in the femoral tunnel. So once you have fixed it, now see for the stability, whether it has a good stability inside the femoral tunnel or not. Now pass it through your first window. So one of the graft will go from anterior to 
aspect of the fibula towards the posterior part then through the tibia another part graft will go from the posterior part of the tibia through anteriorly so that you have a popliteus and a fcl and in between the band it uh, the band will act like a, a stabilizer of the fibular collateral ligament so once both the graft are pulled out in fr uh, from the tibial tunnel you should fix it in 60 to 70 degree of the knee flexion and this is very important that is the position in which the posterolateral corner uh, posterolateral ligaments are out and always assess for the stability after you can see the dial test is negative and the varus test is also negative after completion of your procedure so this was a scenario where the patient has a rotational instability so most of the time my friend whenever you are having a patient with a rotational instability the patient is not having a isolated virus instability try to go for a classical tibia based procedure tibia and fibula based procedure not a isolated fibula based procedure because you have to control the rotation second case this 25 year saucer player has a pain and history of giving way of the left knee there is a, he has a history of twisting injury 6 weeks back and on examination the posterior door and varus stress test was positive and the dial test was negative this is important in this patient there is no rotational instability it's only the coronal instability the patient has a varus positive means it's a isolated lcl tear these are the cases where you can you can come out with a isolated fibula based sling procedure either a lars uh, larsen technique or a arsorio technique you don't need to go for a laparotomy extensive laparotomy reconstruction of the posterolateral corner so here you can see the mri you can see there was a classical lcl tear and if you see the patient has a posterior door positive normally you should not do posterior door in 30 degree of flexion you should do it clinically also in 90 degree of flexion see and you can see the posterior translation of the tibia so it was it a, a patient has a pcl injury so we planned for a pcl reconstruction with a and you can see the varus stresses was positive the classical there was lateral opening in the varus stress was positive so again the position is a 90 degree flexion of the knee in 90 degree flexion of the mini uh, you make a j shaped incision from distal femur to in between the gardis tibial and the uh, fibular head again make a thick posterior based flap and uh, go for a neurolysis of the common perineal lobe these steps are common the only difference with the laparotomy and uh, this uh, larsen or serio technique is that you don't have to create the uh, tibial tunnel here so you pass your graft from the distal distal fibula and a uh, proximal part of the fibula and fix it either with a single or double tunnel in the femur so i will not repeat this procedure rest of the procedure are same so we in this patient we planned for a fibular sink procedure this is a larsen procedure and you can see after fixation of uh, after stabilization of the lateral corner on the the varus opening has gone you can you don't have any instability over the coronal plane so how will you plan so plc injury posterolateral corner corner injury don't be uh, scared of uh, about it but don't miss it also so there are three scenarios dial positive varus test positive yes you don't have any option go for a classical tibia based procedure laparotomy or modified laparotomy technique dials positive varus negative sometime you may have only rotational instability again you have to plan for a tibia based procedure that is either laparotomy or modified laparotomy and the third scenario which is very common in our clinical practice dial negative patient has no rotational instability but he has a varus stress positive that is a isolated coronal plane instability is there you can go you can come out with a fibula sling procedure so that is the take home message assess the rotational instability you are dealing with a patient with either rotational instability or you are dealing a patient with a rotational isolated coronal plane instability or you are dealing a patient with a rotational instability with a coronal plane instability and that will help you in planning of your patient thank you Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. We can have a question on this. And uh, we are going to have our second live surgery on recurrent shoulder dislocation case. If question, we can take this Ashu question during this time. So in case of multi-ligament scenario, so between the corner and the PCL, which you prefer Hello. first? Hello. Can See, sir? No, multi in white. White. Collateral first or PCL first? 
in multiple injury. Now the trend is to do all the ligament in one go. So all the ligaments in one go. But but I am not doing in one go. I am doing straight procedure. But now literature yeah, yeah, says yeah, that yeah, you can go in yeah, one go in yeah, all the. Vinay is asking whether in one go only you will go for a PCL first yeah. or collateral yeah. first. There are two school yeah. of thoughts, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, I, what yeah. I believe, yeah. you should centralize your knee first. Yeah. So yeah. I think you should go for a PCL first, then collateral. So you, you are creating your collaterals over the centralized uh, TBI and femur. The second thought is that collateral first and uh, then PCL. Again, uh, I think hmm. it's about your, your belief, but most of the surgeon, I think, uh, sports surgeon, they want to centralize the knee first, then go for the collateral reconstruction. What you do, uh, you fix tension the ACL first or PC, uh, ACL or PCL if uh, uh, in multiple injuries? PCL, then your collateral. Most of these a MCL, LCL, PCL, ACL. I leave ACL because what happened? Most of the knee, these knees are stiff knee. After six weeks or eight months of follow-up, you will see you don't need ACL reconstruction in those knees. So, any question? So now we are going our second live surgery. So he is an anterior male, presented to us with a recurrent shoulder dislocation of left shoulder. But he is not having any difficulty in moving the shoulder or pain for last nine months. The first episode happened while playing volleyball. Then after he had a seven episode and uh, only single episode which happened during night time. Last dislocation was two months ago. On examination, the range of motion is full. Apprehension test is positive. Beaten score 4 by 9. This is his x-ray. Sorry. So MRI was uh, anterior labral tear extending from 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock position with a shallow heel sac lesion. It's an on track lesion with a glenoid track of 19 millimeter, heel sac index of 16 millimeter. This is the in face view of the glenoid and having the full range of motion. So we will go with this case. So I request Dr. Rajiv Raman sir, Dr. Rosan Wade sir, Dr. Vinay sir to kindly moderate this live surgery. Uh, am I audible to you guys? Yeah, we can hear. Okay. Dr. Rajiv? Yeah. Dr. Vinay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So we have Dr. Rajiv with us and uh, Dr. Roshan also. Okay, great. Great faculty with us. Uh, and uh, I did some homework. I just put uh, for sake of time, I just uh, did my diagnostic scopy. Uh, put my two cannulas here. One is b close to subscap. Can you see? Uh, Pro, please. Yeah, yeah. We can appreciate. Uh, this guy is little bit laxed. Uh, and uh, this is subscap. Okay, fine. And yeah. uh, if I see uh, this uh, inferior, uh, see the laxity, the pouch. Inferior pouch is opening. This is biceps. Is it okay, biceps? Yeah, we can appreciate. And uh, regarding the Cuff is okay, and uh, he has hill sex. On the if we see the MR scan and uh, uh, CT, uh, the hill sex is off the track. It is away from the insertion of cuff. This is how I uh, this is insertion and see the how medial it is. So I think. So can somebody show on the MRI? Uh, I think this patient uh, needs bankart with posterior also. And if I do uh, some uh, measurement uh, of uh, cartilage on the glenoid side, uh, the MR, everything, this. Mm. Dr. Rajiv? Yeah. So what's your uh, preferred choice of calculating the bone loss, whether it is CT based or MRI based it in is, your practice? It is uh, CT based. If I have doubt, otherwise my now my guys, uh, MR scan guys are doing good. They calculate in a uh, 
Uh, see, uh, this is diagnostic way of doing uh, uh, pear shape. No, it's a, this is a good continuity of anterior wall, and uh, somewhere bare spot is somewhere here. So I think no glenoid bone loss is there in this patient, though it has a big hill sex. And uh, MR scan, I was also doubt that uh, we will uh, get the labrum. I think there is no labrum, only the uh, capsule is there and we start, uh, start uh, elevating and see what will happen. Uh, elevator, please. And I, my scope is in antero superior portal, and uh, I am working from antero inferior portal. Uh, hammer, please. Uh, for Bankart surgery, uh, it is very important to give enough time in elevation of this labrum. This is the uh, important crux of this surgery for success of surgery, and. So you would plan to release uh, extensively? Yeah. Maybe more than the normal from where the tear is. So we'll take the normal tissue out as well, little bit of? Uh, normal tissue, what do you mean by normal uh, tissue? Normal labrum, extending yeah, the tear. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I will try to get, I uh, will try to go beyond six, seven. But the issue is the labrum is not there. It is all atrophied. Hammer, please. How many episodes of dislocation this boy Seven has? Seven to eight. And MR also doesn't show the labrum. It's just... Hammer. Hammer. Do we have more curved all? Curved all. Curved all. Curved all. This is the other. This is the rest. No, rest. All. Yes. So what's your usual sequence of repair? You put the hill sacks anchor first or go with the... Bank card first and go, then go to the hill sacks. We will do the first, put the anchor on the remplissage, then come back and repair this all uh, labral tissue anterior and then go back again for the remplissage. I think my cannula is out. Yeah. Hold this cannula. Hmm. Hammer, please. Hmm. What you do? You do first uh, remplissage and then bank card or first bank card and then remplissage? No, no. Always remplissage anchor first. first. Okay. Hmm. So remplissage anchor first, yeah. then go to the bank card and final knot tying at the end. Perfect. What is your choice of anchors for uh, both the procedures? Choice of anchor anything, not metal. All sutures, bio. Single loaded, double loaded? Uh, double loaded I used to pr put first and then after single. And for remplissage also? No, no, no. It said sing remplissage if it is a big I put two anchors single loaded and fix it. If it is a small one then single anchor is enough for me. And release is up to the where you can see the sub escape. Hammer please. Hammer. Hammer. Hammer, please. So, do you use pump for this procedure, bank card? We are pump? using. We are using not in routine practice, uh, but uh, today we are using pump to make more better view. This is sake of visual, uh, visualization and clarity. And the position is lateral. Lateral. Yeah, I do my all in stability is uh, all cuffs and lateral only. Can you see the my uh, release? Is it yeah, yeah, it's quite deep. Yeah, go. 
uh, still the uh, labrum we are not getting up to the so level. you have a bleeder enter inferiorly you take some precaution for that or maybe do something different where suddenly at, at the enter inferior corner you have a bleeder uh, no no issue with that no no it will go settle down by itself and my anesthetist team is doing good job Bl blood pressure is 90 only That's wonderful Hammer. 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 Doctor Rajesh. I am crossing six six o'clock now. I think we should need, uh, we, we need to focus the camera a little bit because it's quite blurred just here. Just wait, just wait. Water. <coughs> now it's okay, fine. Yeah, better? better? Rest. Can you wrap up? Can you wrap up? So any tips to avoid the crowding of anterior cannulas? Any tips? Uh, if it's a small joint, uh, big joint, no issue, small, just uh, uh, try to be as close to as subscap. This is how you can hammer. If you keep yourself close to subscap, I think then you can manage with, otherwise you need a uh, good assistant, otherwise they come out with each and every once if you pass your instrument. If it is too tight then one can use a intro superior portal without the cannula as well. So uh, then little crowding is less. I think uh, six o'clock probe, please. Six o'clock is this. Yeah, correct. So we'll try to come. Hmm. Resp. Uh, elevator. He caught Puna Chisada. Hm. 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 We need uh, for release of 6 or 7 mm labrum, we need more curved uh, elevator. Hammer, please. Yes. And try to lift uh, erase uh, your release away from the glenoid. Grasper. So I think it is going to be only capsular repair. No labrum is there. Maybe we will put this cannula again. Just wait. Now I am on the posterior portal. See, they, let's see. We will able to achieve. Okay, fine. Mm. When it's okay, yeah, yeah, can, can you see my lift? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we can appreciate. Yeah, uh, we'll try to release more. I think the release is adequate. Right. Yeah, Rajiv, Rajiv Ramban here. Yeah. Yeah, you have good floating lab drum, so it's good. But uh, still, it is uh, mm. uh, not satisfactory. Will uh, RF, RF, RF. Manish foot pedal. RF foot pedal. So you plan to put the angle on the face of glenoid or the, the angle of? Face of the glenoid. Hmm. Both in because elevator. I just want a little bit more. Some rasp to get the rough bone hammer. Hammer. We can use shaver also with close suction here. Hammer. 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 Do you get I so you always take yeah. a little bit of cartilage from yeah, the glenoid. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I always do. Uh, this uh, very year, uh, this month, only Arthroscopy Journal has a paper regarding uh, putting the anchor on the edge of the glenoid, mm. citing some advantage. So I forgot, but they have advocated that. Uh, okay, sure. Putting anchor on the edge of the glenoid has some advantage. And we have been classically taught about face of the glenoid anchors. If there is no labrum, and that too at the long uh, radius of uh, glenoid. So only this procedure is effective or any other procedure you suggest? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, if uh, nowadays, if I see, I am in doubt, uh, Grasper, if I am in doubt that uh, uh, 
labrum is not there and uh, MR scan is also showing same thing. Then I add, uh, take the consent of open lethargy for these type of patients because uh, this is going to be the repair of capsule only. Are you agreed? Yes, sir. Uh, nowadays, uh, I uh, go with consent. The labrum is there only. Rest of no labrum is there. Mm -hmm. This is the only part we can get this. And patient is also very young. Young. In that case, uh, we do. Uh, it's all depend upon if the requirement is high, I go with the uh, lethargy only. And in this case, where there is a doubt, we are going, to, we are fixing on the back side also. See, the this is uh, the... Health sex, can you see? Yes, sir. It's a big one. And yeah. see how it's a off track, on track, what I do yeah. uh, follow. And MR wise, uh, this health sex was very uh, shallow. But here we can see it is a deep. Yeah. Hold yeah. Karnapadega, cannula go, Kisiko Merilia. See, uh, the insertion of cuff is here. And how medial it is. Uh, curate. So we are going to put one anchor. And uh, spinal lateral yoga, 18 gaze ka, or ethylon yoga, 2 0. So, you put anchors at the apex of the valley or the posteriorly for the anterior lip? Uh, I am putting in the center. If I put in the close to articular cartilage, it restrict more. In this case, would you like to restrict little bit of motion when there is no labrum or capsule anteriorly? Would you prefer restricting a little bit of external rotation by putting anterior the, the anchor on the uh, medial lip? Uh, I think uh, uh, doing a remplissage is not the substitute of a good lateral repair. So in this case, if you would have worked out preoperatively, so what would have been the procedure of choice? Uh, Lethargy. Lethargy only. Yeah. No, no remplissage. No, 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 no remplissage. Yeah. Uh, Shiver, please. Shiver is not working. Achha, okay. I think we have good bleeding bone. We can improve a little bit more. Can hmm. we Again, curate. So, how you do? How do you prefer in uh, remplissage two anchors always, or sometimes one? What is your preference? So, I use two double headed anchors. Mm -hmm. Today we are going to put two anchors single yeah, loaded. for borderline cases, for yeah. uh, mild kind of scenario, just one double loaded anchor. But it's always double loaded anchor, not single loaded. Anchor, please. Single loaded. Konsa khola double loaded for liya? Chalo, double loaded. But agar if you are single loaded, then give me single loaded. No, yeah. Chalo, double loaded. Hmm. Uh, oh, mil gaya? Uh, 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 18 gauge needle. Can you increase little bit of pump pressure because uh, Achha, vision, visible, is, uh, yeah, um, vision is little obscure. Increase the pressure, please. So, see. Mm. Hammer, please. Take minute. Upon this, go. Take. Ye double loaded. Hai. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Hmm. 
ये शायद मिल जाएगा हमारा वन मोर शॉट वन मोर डन मार दो और मार दो एक दो और डन टेक इट आउट निकल एथिलॉन टू जीरो स्पाइन लेडल गो हाँ 18, 18 इज दिस इज स्क्रीन और टैपन इन कर स्क्रीन डन वॉट आई डू नाउ डेज प्रीवियसली आई यूज टू यू आई यूज माई बर्ड बीक बट नाउ डेज आई यूज स्पाइनल नेडल With एथिलॉन है क्या दो ना दो बट भी नीचे है मुझे के वायर कुछ मिलेगा नेटल 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 जैसे लंबा ट्वेंटी केस तो पतला उसमें एथिलॉन जाता नहीं है So any reason for uh, shifting to spinal lead technique rather than bird beak uh, technique? Because uh, what I felt, uh, bird uh, taking a bite with bird beak is big enough, and if you have not uh, good quality, then uh, it's. Uh, Mota milna chahiye. See, if I use this needle, the hole is so small, and uh, if I use bird beak, then the hole is too big. Got it? Why I'm using? Why I'm telling you about using this? No, ये चला जाएगा. डालो देखो. There is a question, Dr. Raji. Yeah. Is there an external landmark? From where we can initiate and good yeah, of chunk can, of tissue. Yes, yes, yes. This is the posterolateral edge of the acromion. Okay, uh -huh. uh, this is. I am close to posterolateral uh, edge. Uh, yeah, we can appreciate that. Yeah, uh, where uh, uh, we uh, make a portal for our posterior labral repair. Aage kya? Oh, very good. Both perfect. Or dalu? Or dalu? Ha, ho jayega. सूचर रिट्रीवर ग्रेस पर दो ग्रेस पर दो आने दो उसका और चलो लीव इट विल यूज बर्ड भी जाएगा देखो नहीं जा रहा आ रहा है आ रहा है आ रहा है आ रहा है यस 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 पकड़ो सो थोड़ा सा निडल को मैनिपुलेट करेंगे थोड़ा सा बाहर निकालो निडल को हम डालो हाँ हाँ डालो लॉक पास में लॉक में पुश आई विल रेल रोड माई एंकर सूचर विद दिस पी डी एस इफ इट आई ट्राई आई विल ट्राई टू नेगोशिएट या गो 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 वन मोर टाइम Any specific tips for for staying in the tendinous part of intraspinatus rather than going into the muscular? Bus always area. always use the spinal needle and see where you are coming. Yeah. Okay.
okay fine keep it here hmm. you can withdraw the needle needle ko piche nikalo thoda sa aur ab dalo ha ah, yes yes good don't take away from me chhod ye lo dekho ab theek hai hold karo ke rakho yahan pe ha ah, aane do idhar nahi ab nahi usko pakad ke rakho na one up it will cancel this technique aju uh, go 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 now the hmm. simple trick is trick is to keep a loop on that side yeah so no. this needle is small sir no, no, needle no not not see the loop is one side loop Only yes. one thread goes through the needle other thread comes out next time this we will do the same uh, like that so if you create a loop then hmm. you have to just pull through the loop चलो लाओ वो दूसरा यहाँ पे होल्ड करके रखते हैं पुश कर दे पुश करो पुश बस जस्ट होल्ड एवरीथिंग एट वन प्लेस बस बस यहाँ पे रखो बर्ड बिग गिव मी बर्ड बिग इसको तो लेके ही रहेंगे but big please hmm hmm nikal lo hmm knife dena See the whole. Uh, this is the whole tenderness part. We are trying to negotiate with this. Hmm? No, no, no. कुछ नहीं करना. Just it will come out once. Straight though. No straight. Huh? नहीं है स्ट्रेट लो चलो इसी से करेंगे कोशिश पानी वाटर प्लीज वाटर प्लीज water please yes. i am taking one thread from this portal वाटर प्लीज प्रेशर बढ़ा दो थोड़ा सा पानी नहीं आ रहा दिस इज अ न्यू पंचर और सेम पंचर कैरिंग बोथ द थ्रेड्स नो 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 आई विल शो यू टू डिफरेंट पंचर्स फ्रॉम टू डिफरेंट वन इज फार अवे सी तो इट इज गोइंग टू फुल कवर होल ऑफ द डिफेक्ट It 
this sir chord 1 so i am finding little bit difficulty in negotiating with chord 1 how much is the blood pressure Okay, fine. Four different bites. Yeah. The vision is little blurry. Yes, we are trying to give you clear vision. Just bear with us. They are trying to manage. Pump uh, is working or not? पानी नहीं आ रहा यार कहीं दब रहा है क्या देखो? Pump में तो पानी बोतल खाली हो जानी चाहिए चारों. This is my last uh, suture. Okay, fine. This is my all threads. Okay, fine. Yes. Can yes. you see? Yeah, wonderful. This is how it is going to fill this my defect. Now we will come to anterior side and try to find, try to get good repair. मुझे वो देंगे anchor. Double loaded. A single is also ज़्यादा दम. Single loaded. This is important step. How you mobilize, you shift your labrum south to north. I think this is the only the. Uh, let me uh, uh, RF, please. See, first I'm going to. First anchor my RF. Okay, fine. Yes. Okay, five. So this is your five o'clock, four o'clock. Uh, five thirty. Six. 5 this is six, and this is my four o'clock. Okay, because okay. I am down to, because my subscap is here, so subscap is usually at the three o'clock. Okay, agreed. Yes. So this is, and if we try to get, go more deep, if possible. No drill, and always, always, I advise uh, to remove some part of cartilage. Otherwise, you can miss your anchor, and uh, anchor uh, can get uh, go into a soft tissue. The so inferior anchor is uh, single loaded. Single loaded. I am going. I am putting only single anchor ended. बोन था ना दिस इज ऑल सुचर एंकर तो दिस इज रिसेंट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पुटिंग एन एंकर एट सिक्स ओ क्लॉक आल्सो यस सो I yes, think from there you take a bite at maybe uh, in this maybe five o'clock, otherwise seven o'clock for the right shoulder, yeah. for the right shoulder. We can in this patient, uh, I want to put one anchor on the posterior side also. Correct. To tighten it and let's see uh, the suture retriever. Uh, my I, uh, anchor placement is perfect. Are you happy with this? Yes. In the yes. bone. Fantastic. Yeah. And. Uh, for left, it is the right curve. Hold the cannula, please. Let's see how much we can translate. Hmm. 
फायर फायर क्यों नहीं हो रहा है हो गया टेक इट आउट आ गया चलो बोलेट यार नाउ विद दिस लैसो आई एम पासिंग माई वन थ्रेड थ्रू द लेब्रम बोलेट यार आर यू सेटिस्फाइड विद दिस बाइट It's a good uh, southern horseship. It's it's a, it's a little bit away from the uh, anchor, but it it is good because there is no labrum as such. I think it this will work. Hold it here. Not pressure. Sure. Hold the canola, please. always check uh, before putting a sliding knot that no uh, knot is already in the threads and come go no not push it mere paas hai सिंच था नॉट होल्ड इट एयर या परफेक्ट ना आई एम टाइटनिंग इट आई थिंक यू आर यू गाइज आर सेटिस्फाइड विद दिस Doctor Vinay, what is your preference? You always use double loaded or single yes, loaded? Yes, uh, five o'clock. This seven o'clock is double loaded. Always double loaded. Yes. Because this, this, this uh, uh, bite is most important. Yes, yes. That's why. If you uh, find one uh, bite is go not good, you can use another suture with the same anchor. Correct. I think this is the reason. Correct. so two bands of the threads uh, uh, literally recreate the uh, ighl and tbl yeah you you so multi one either side of the ighl and you can mm. just tighten and get a good tight ighl multiple point of fixation is always better loose to nahi ma na ओपन ही तो करना होगा ना नहीं नहीं इसके ऐसे नहीं वो वो दूसरा अरे ये वाला नहीं दूसरे वाला दो मुझे तो मैं दे हां ये ठीक there's a suture cutting device you go up to the end and cut it uh, this is our first anchor okay fine now we are going to put second one thoda scanula withdraw 
लिटिल बिट बस इन हाथ को उठाना है थोड़ा सा लिखते हैं यार यार नाइस वन लॉगो पेशेंट इज गोइंग डाउन काउंटर लगाना है काउंटर पेशेंट जा रहा है नीचे any episode of cyst formation which happened with these all such anchors we have ever encountered in our cases i don't have any experience of post of mri uh with uh raji what about tying of subscapulars with the capsule in such cases because we have a very poor labral tissue here uh i i have no experience i have no experience regarding suturing of sub scap with this few literature is there but we think sub scap is very important and it is a non anatomical repair and it is something like uh, previously we do putty plate and this it is a Rajiv, yeah. Uh, there is a subscapularis stenodesis is a very well known procedure. Like what we do. I have no idea. Uh, yes. Like what we do the posterior remplissage. Okay. Uh, remplissage, doing uh, infraspinatus stenodesis. Okay. Similar way you can do uh, infra uh, the super subscapularis stenodesis at the level of the joint. If In you go just above the joint, then it will be a very you know the tightening and shortening. But at the level of the joint, you can do a stenodesis of. upper fibers of subscapular this is a very well described procedure especially in the uh, patient who are epileptic the multiple dislocation in fact in europe the now there is a different trend mm -hmm. uh, they started using it for even the uh, shuttlers and people who are involved in the high uh, uh, overhead activity games okay. so it's a very incoming procedure mm -hmm. uh, supraspinal uh, sorry subscapular stenosis anteriorly when there is a deficient labrum or mm -hmm. capsular labral deficiency okay no idea sir jo ko fasega ruko is called isha intra mm. uh, intra articular subscapularis uh, augmentation okay one uh, again uh, suture retriever and coming back to the 6 o'clock anchor uh, mm. dr vina has raised the issue uh six six o'clock anchor is very very important when uh, uh, you have a deficient labrum anterior because you then in that situation you can pull the labrum from behind and get maximum labrum to cover your glenoid so sometimes the six o'clock anchor is a savior and uh, that is the reason why you have the curved zigs and curved anchor so that you can pull the labrum more much more anteriorly from behind Uh, Rajiv, do you use uh, double loaded anchor uh, any time inferiorly or always use single loaded? No, uh, double loaded and inferior. I uh, use. Doctor Ramon. Yeah, so uh, uh, good valid question, uh, Doctor Roshan. I think sometimes when you are using it uh, in inferior part, it gets a double. Uh, I think protection of the suture there. You have two anchors there, two sutures there. The only thing it's only the point contact because whole of your labrum will sit over the point of the anchor only. but definitely for inferior most anchor sometime i prefer the double load anchor so raji what i am saying that you are working through the anto superior and yes i am working portal. through yeah. the anto superior, superior portal and my suture yeah that's when yes. you are having a bird eye view of yeah of the absolutely yes. true this is how we can uh, uh, avoid mal position of our anchors Hold it here. Not push it. Here yeah, you are trying trying to take a mattress suture. Yes, I am yeah. putting mattress suture. Mattress suture, yeah. All right. Suture retriever, you know, you first try again. Show me. 
this is how yeah always keep your knot in vision uh, because this is hold it here good bump i think the interior bump is very good yeah Vinay was asking about the all suture ankle. I think recently there was paper also now because last two or three years we have shifted from the peak ankle to all suture ankle. Yes, peak and is. Most of the uh, some of the literature suggests that there is a cyst formation in the at the site of uh, ankle placement. So whether how much what is the clinical relevance and how does it affect the Uh, revision scenario, revision decision making scenario. I don't know, but I think some of the paper has come the two or three year follow up. If you do an MRI, small cyst are formed around this suture, which was not there with the peak anchor. We have also shifted from peak to the all suture, but I don't know. I uh, think peak they doesn't dissolve, and if you do in the revision surgery, it is like a metal anchor. They give the such void, mm. and uh, suture anchors are good enough. The uh, osteolysis bone loss is less. uh i think uh, for uh, looking at the younger patients and the if they need revision suture anchors are good definitely we have, most of us have shifted from peak anchor to all suture anchor but uh, those papers are coming down that some amount of light is assisting mission in one or two years of follow up so how uh, many anchor how do you plan rajiv now one more because we are still uh, down to subscap we are not at the level of subscap are you uh, yeah, see the bump see. Yeah There is good bump and centralization of the glenoid also Yeah now it is coming one more anchor please And now after that we are going to tie the amplisas okay If time allow we will go in the sub uh, subacromial space otherwise we will tie it blindly Hold it hold the shoulder oh, drill ja raha hai slip ho raha hai do you use cannula in all three portals or uh, posteriorly you skip yes rajiv yeah uh, rajiv do you use cannula in all three portals or you no posteriorly skip? usually because I not my scope posteriorly so now i uh, i saw your technique you are using cannula all three portals uh, that uh, is good wait, for wait, your wait wait acha yeah. kaun sa khicha ye wala na okay fine hold it here ye wala kitchen i Hold. think sake of the audience you can see uh, show them what is yes. unloading so yes, just yes. just by pulling show them that which uh, which one to pull uh, which uh, one uh, okay yeah. fine yeah, because uh, just show them what is unloading don't yeah. unload yeah. <laughs> see uh, this is uh, what i am pulling is through the anchor yeah and other thread is i am pulling is now through yeah. the labrum yeah. this should be the our post so that our knot doesn't come over the glenoid okay fine there should be and no movement at the anchor side otherwise and always always keep a look at the anchor otherwise you you unload your anchor movement of the sutures through the anchor is very important
now I am cinching my knot away from the glenoid. See, the nice yeah, nice elevated has been bump. created. Yes. So, what knot you prefer? The sliding non-locking or sliding locking knot? Sliding locking knot. Bumpy reposition on the face of the glenoid. Yeah. yeah. Bump reposition toward the face and the knot to towards the capsule. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So capsule will adhere with the uh, sub, uh, sub uh, deck of the glenoid. Yes, yes. Over the raw area of the glenoid. Yeah. But the labrum yeah, bump is not going to adhere. Yeah, this bump by is uh, you are recreating this bump and that yes. bump will form a labrum over the anterior mm. interior mm. part of the glenoid. But anchoring at the anchor point. Yeah, anchor point. But you have a wider area. That area yeah. is contact area. Over there, there will be a fibrous healing in due course of time, yeah. three months, six months. This is what I did uh, in the anterior, okay? Yes. Now we will come to this part. Now, now it's see, now I can't see the, <laughs> it get shifted posteriorly. Yeah. Previous the, uh, was visible, now difficult to see. Yeah, okay, fine. And now the comes, we'll try to see through the subacromial space, okay? Time kya hua abhi? Okay, fine. We have enough time. <laughs> Trucker. Trucker, trucker, trucker. Pressure बढ़ाना पड़ेगा थोड़ा सा thumb का और knife तो किधर गया seventy कर दो इसको इधर जो arrow बने ना up down वाला हाँ ये up करो आओ ना बस डॉक्टर राजी what you do you just close blindly put the uh, sutures in remplissas or yeah sometimes I think uh, if you have a time constraint you can close blindly also yes or you can go through the posterior uh, I think posterior part of the scope of the posterior sure, portal sure, sure. and go superiorly otherwise you can see uh, view it through the subacromial portal also subacromial yeah. space also The only issue is how yeah. much of bursitis is there in the subacromial place. Yes, this is, is all. Important. Yes, yes. Otherwise, you have to clear all those tissues and. Otherwise, you can take your. Yeah, yeah or, or you can, if you see, you can tie it blindly also. I yes, think will, I think uh, we it's can a, because yeah. we are getting late. Yeah, so we yeah. can tie it blindly. I think that will be good enough. Because okay. Ultimately, and the tenodesis of the infraspinatus, and it acts like a filler. Yes. Now your heel sac is going to be. A now I will show you under the vision Extra how that article. is coming. Yeah, uh, hold it here. Yeah. Hold it here. Yes, I think this is good enough view. Yes, yeah, we can see here. Uh, any experience uh, about uh, putting it to anchor and uh, tie one threads and that compress it? No, no. I, th I think it depends upon the size of the hill sex. Small hill sex, single double drilled anchor is good enough. Large hill sex, as Vinay told, we can use a two, two anchor, one medial, one lateral. Yeah. But tenodosis should be at the tendon side, that is important, yes, not over the muscular important. tendon. Yes. Agreed. See, now? Yeah, fantastic. We can, see, can, the, see? We can see the yes. yeah, whole of the infraspinatus is getting filled. And my, filled my knot crater. pusher is at the yeah. tendon. Yes, yes. That shows that uh, glen I am not uh, entrapping the deltoid okay. fibers. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm done. You can continue with this. Yes, yes. And thank you, Raji. Thank Wonderful you. demonstration. And thank you. De demonstration. And, and thank nice you, my team, anesthetist guys, Amit, and rest of his staff.
thanks for coordinations so i thank my all three moderators they moderated the session really well and thank you sir for showing us excellent remplissage and bank card repair as we have few case discussions so we will go one by one and as time per permits and people's interest we can carry forward or we'll move to the lectures dr amit ja i will request you to present your cases chapagya ah yes i will request uh, sc goel sir no task casing sir dr rajiv raman sir hmm. uh, kindly join as a panelist hold it here ha huh? yeah perfect लैपटॉप की बैटरी डाउन हो गई है आपके सर आई एम गोइंग टू हैव सम सॉल्व्ड एंड सम अनसॉल्व्ड केसेस so a 30 year old lady came to us with a stiffness of the knee and mild on and off pain especially after prolonged walk so she had a 18 month back uh, injury to the knee and got fracture for which proximal tibia locking plate was done and acl avulsion fixation was done post op uh, she was in brace for 6 week and then after she started the knee mo motion exercises and when she came to us she was having a 10 to 60 degree of range of motion and ffd of 10 degree but there was no localized of temperature and there were reduced patellar mobility so this was the x ray at the time of injury so our question to the panel is uh, what the next uh, investigation you get you get mri you get ct rajiv sir so how you approach in this case when you see so proximal tibia fracture Thank i think guys. ct scan is fi my first investigation of choice go for a ct scan assess the fracture pattern okay so the primary surgeon took the mri and uh, this is the mri picture and this was the final fixation with a locking plate and the sl avulsion fixation with pull out technique so are you happy with this fixation mm. and this time she came to us with a knee stiffness of yeah. No, see, you see the medial filling of the medial condyle. We are seeing two the pictures there. That and shows the corner plate has not been okay. reduced well Perfect. or fixed well. Thank you. And uh, same you can see in the lateral Thank view you, also. The yes. articular surface is not smooth. So that uh, is going to cause problem definitely. Uh, apart from ACL, that is a different issue. Whether ACL should have been fixed at the same time, or as Rajiv said, you if you do CT only and you fix the bone and then you can. reassess the patient that is a different matter okay so this is her walking video and this is the knee of uh, range of motion what she is having so how will you proceed in this case no but as i understand you said that initially she had move good movement and after that it deteriorated no 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 so or from, so the, from the beginning she is having this much movement so 18 month now yeah. uh, no instability but range of motion is poor very common scenario amit i think and most of the time post traumatic knee and or post multiple ligament injury normally we have two type of stiffness loss of flexion and loss of extension the loss of flexion here you can see it's the uh, flexion is almost from 0 to 80 degree 70 degree only that is because of your contracture of the quadriceps and adhesion in the suprapatellar bones yes. there is loss of extension also you can yes, see where there is no complete extension is not possible yeah. that is because of intercondylar notch stuffing either the acl fragment or some cyclops is there in the intercondylar notch which is causing the loss of extension 
Okay, so uh, this was the CT scan. Just any any X ray? That X ray was the final. That X ray was the final. X-ray. Now, uh, now, okay. Now. okay. Sir, to me, it appears to be a tibial plate. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So now post So that was done by the primary surgeon when she came to us. Uh, she was having all these things. So how so to proceed? So problem is of tibial plateau for uh, extension leg also and uh, for the flexion also. So should we do osteotomy or should we uh, do what, what? What should be the go in this because case? We, as we see, it has not been reduced. You see on the second cut and third cut there. Okay. Uh, it's a grossly deformed proximal tibia there. So it has to be reduced properly by doing an intra-articular osteotomy. I think intra-articular osteo osteotomy in the same setting we can plan for arthrolysis also. So I, th I think that yeah. is the only way, only way to come out. But again, it's too late for intra-articular osteotomy, I think 18 months. So with so guarded prognosis. Very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Yes, it will be difficult. So <laughs> our plan was the first to get the movement because she was more worried with the movement. So this was the examination under anesthesia, what she was having. We go ahead with the arthroscopic uh, arthrolysis and there was a lot of thick fibrous addition between the petla, lateral gutter, medial gutter and the ACL avulsion fragment and the petla tendon. That was also had hairs. Yeah, okay. That was the one reason she was not getting full extension. Loss of extension, I told you, yeah. So all clearing was done and this was the post arthrolysis what she was having the moment. Yeah, are and you this happy is there? This is eight this months is still follow not up. full movement. Yeah. If you see the extension, the moment. extension is still limited and flexion also to some extent. S but she is able to do no, no, that cross leg sitting. Yeah. That may be. But what you showed just now there was a 10 degree or 15 degree uh, extension was limited yes, sir. and even flexion was also about a 15 degree limited. Yes, so how to get the extension in these cases? Now. Ajib, sir. <laughs> so I think uh, now it's only the rehab which is important because it's too late for intraarticular osteotomy only and most of the time it's the weakness of the VMO, vestibular medialis obliquus which is which helps in the terminal part of extension. So keep them on VMO physiotherapy that may help you. I think because you have done arthrolysis, you have cleared the intercondylar notch. So I think it's the physiotherapy only which will help when you. When you saw that articular surface, the tibia, how did it look like on arthroscopy? Uh, arthroscopy, it was a lot of fibrous tissue okay. inside the joint. So it was not appreciable how much a step is there uh -huh. because we are full of addition between the femur condyle, with tibia condyle. But the cartilage was okay, not that bad. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, addressing just a range of motion is not going to solve her problem. So, uh, so I feel uh, proper address could be uh, first you do the uh, first of all uh, CT scan is the right approach. Then I should have done a 3D reconstruction to analyze what is a malalignment of proximal tibial fragment. Okay. S thirdly, uh, after the CT scan, I would have consulted this patient that she will read, as sir has rightly said, it's a completely malignated proximal medial tibia. So unless you break the proximal medial tibia, it is not, uh, although you might get a, a good range by doing arthrolysis, but that is not going to solve her problem of mechanical malalignment. If you see the femoral condyle articulation, it is, uh, uh, it is articulating at the half of the proximal tibia. Yeah. So Post proximal half, tibia is completely, you know, out of the joint, almost. 10% or 20% of TBR. So this is a mechanically malaligned knee. Range of motion should not be an issue. Range of motion will always achieve by manipulation or uh, arthrolysis or arthro. Her problem is something else. Can you preserve the knee? So How much is the pain now? Now she pain. is pain free. She is pain free at the moment. So the now she is having the moment. Early degeneration. Yes, That's yes. Very, very yeah. definite. I think 30 years you can you can plan for intraarticular osteotomy yeah. at quite younger age, so you can plan. But I think before that you should have analysis of all those angles. Yeah. Okay. So to, should I go through the next case? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a 37-year male patient presented with pain and instability of the left knee 
following road traffic accident middle joint line was tender latchman test positive positive pivot shift range of motion was fair sorry i am not having the good x-ray this this is the x-ray and uh, the mri was he was having a acl tear from femoral side the meniscus root tear was there and the meniscus fragment is in the menisco tibial recess along with he was uh, he was having a cartilage defect over the femoral condyle was to be part of the femoral condyle so this was the arthroscopic view complete acl tear with uh, around 1.5 by 1.5 sorry centimeter full thickness cartilage defect along with the meniscus root was lying in the uh, meniscus recess for that reason he was having so how to go in this case so i think here you have a meniscus root injury cartilage defect at an acl so your sequence is like that and what about the fragment did you got that cartilage fragment for subcondyle no, no, bone it was it was a uh, 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 not uh, very uh, flimsy fragment so, so it it was only cartilage fragment yeah, it yeah. was not there so i think it's almost a, a big cartilage defect so you can have to go for root repair acl reconstruction and you can plan for your cartilage defect if you have facility you can go for a oats or you can go with come out with micro fracture also okay so how deep was that you palpated uh, yeah, you probed it how yeah, deep so it was so this is the arthroscopic view the meniscal root was deeply adhered the mm. complete acl tear from the femoral side and this is the defect area with full thickness cartilage defect yeah. around 1.5 by bundle bone you can see yeah mm. so root repair was done yes uh, sir alignment view i am not having so yes, sir, the ap view yeah, this uh, is what the x -ray. if you see the uh, medial joint space yes sir on the next next x ray as well next next x ray next image yeah. you, have, you have you have one more image you want on this also x ray or tha koi nahi nahi sir x ray ek hi tha wo cartilage defect here cartilage defect was there so cartilage defect and i think um, uh, there is a big element of malalignment basically see unless cartilage is one part of it ligament is another part and meniscus so scott dyer described knee as a organ and there are multiple systems of organ ligament cartilage meniscus so, so one of the you know, the biggest factor of knee preservation is alignment so alignment wise uh, trust me he was okay with alignment only problem was he was having the acute road traffic accident that leads to root injury acl and simultaneously the cartilage defect it is not the alignment was the problem in this case you have any gate video post op i am having like oh. gate video i will show you sir. so acl reconstruction root repair and uh, mosaic plasty was done yes and this is at four month range of motion he is having and this marching yeah it is <laughs> marching <laughs> <laughs> so i think that what is important i think sequence root uh, then uh, mosaic or oats followed by acl that is important yeah uh, so, so how did you do uh, so i first take the bite for the root mm -hmm. make a tunnel for the root mm -hmm. but i didn't take out this thing yeah. then i did the acl i first fix the root then i fix the acl and then after yeah. mini open both extending the anteromedial right, and anteromedial yeah. then i went inside and i do the mosaic plasty so at present he is fine free and working good uh, this is the third case so 50 year lady Uh, mm -hmm. came to us with a slip and fall from a stair 2 month ago she was having pain in knee for last one year but after fall she got instability the range of knee movement was full medial joint line tender varus of 10 degree latchman anterior draw test both were positive so this is the x ray the left side is the uh, affected side so how to go in this case this is the mri what she is having so almost complete uh, 
a tear of the complex tear of the medial meniscus with varus deformity with ACL tear at the age of 50 years old lady. But she was painful before. She was having pain for one year, but for last two months after the fall, she was having the instability, and instability was more sort of rotatory, not the buckling of the knee. Rajeshwara. She was having pain for last one year, so she was getting treated like osteoarthritis, and yeah. But for after the fall, she started having instability, and for that reason, she was more worried at this time. Instability along with pain is there, but instability leading to. Yes, sir. Yeah, edema is there, medial tip. Yes. So this stress fracture is, uh, what do you think? This is due to uh, long standing OA changes leading to loading of the joint or due to this injury? De okay. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, her meniscal problem is also degenerative probably. Yes. Uh, Alignment was there, sir. Yep, she was having the virus knee. So it, it was around sir, around 10 degree of virus deformity was there. So we did a uh, uh, simultaneously STO with ACL reconstruction. Three month fall off. So at present she is pain free, okay. but limp is there. Still she is walking with the limp. Well, well done. Uh, the only issue is that most of these patient are with, uh, once you, uh, you can just come out with ST1 some amount of slope correction. Slope correction. Because elderly female, fatty female, yes, they are not good candidate for ACL. What happened once you reconstruct the ACL, there is more, the joint line is more tight now. So they come out with more of the pain all right so if possible you can just correct with the slow go for slope corruption rehab them and tell them if the symptoms of instability pers persist so because you can just increase or decrease the slope with new uh, you can uh, the caliper and all those things nowadays and you can uh, sto with slope, cor slope corruption with better option in 50 year female and after three months or four months, you can plan for ACL reconstruction. Yes, for a 30-year uh, old guy, I think this would have been an ideal procedure. For 50 years, yes, you can plan in that way also. Roshan, what is your say? Yeah, I think slope correction with STO. 50 years, only STO happening because I think, sir, 50 years, such a build, I think, pain is the more concern. So we will go ahead with the lecture. There are other cases also, but we are a bit nice late case. of time. So thank you, sir. So we are going to start our shoulder session talk. So I will request Dr. Sivam Sinha. Uh, to give his talk on how not to miss pathology during shoulder examination.
so we are having one more live surgery that is the revision acl along with that we have one more case that is a tentative case of multi ligament injury that has acl pcl and mcl injury so if people are keen to see we can get both the surgeries live in two different theaters so if people are willing we can request dr roshan what is sir theek so we'll arrange for both thank you shivam sinha sir thank you uh I welcome all the uh, faculties and delegates here on this elite platform, an initiative by Apex uh, for Apex Academic Activity, and this is a vast topic which has been given to me to summarize in 10 minutes, a long question to be answered in a very short way. So it was very difficult for me to uh, define that by how we are missing it clinically, how we are missing it uh, by imaging, and how we are missing it arthroscopically as well. so i tried to focus more on the uh, mri which is the prima facie investigation that with uh, most of us go for after a clinical suspicion so shoulder examination armamentarium starts with a proper history taking and this is most important along with a shoulder examination after this the clinician reaches to a probable diagnosis whether this is pertaining to so much uh, structures as uh, has been detailed that shoulder is also an organ and it is comprised of soft tissues bony tissues cartilage everything there and that has to be examined systematically and a clinical suspicion has to be derived after that we confirm our findings with some special clinical test whether it is pertaining to the cuff whether it is uh, uh, pertaining to the uh, uh, labrum then we go for radiography because there are apart from uh, subtle uh, soft tissue injuries there can be bony injuries and many things can be mis uh, can be made out on x rays as well like hills ax lesion or subtle fractures ct scan mri and mr arthrography and the standard reference is the arthroscopy shoulder pain it pertains to many disorders of rotator cuff tendons capsule labrum cartilage muscles as a result of wear and tear from acute or chronic insults patient strata that approaches us doesn't come immediately after any uh, shoulder problem it comes after a very long time after getting all sort of non operative treatment and then once they are not relieved we have to make something uh, which is compounding the other problem so the example like periarthritis may be compounded by a rotator cuff tear mri the most useful imaging study to assess the shoulder and my talk will be pertaining to this also had there been some radiologists they can also help me in this but it is reader and technique dependent so correlation between mri and arthroscopic findings that varies with the lesions this is one of the studies from iranian publication and here they have found that despite doing mri and arthroscopy in all the cases they were not correlating exactly the sensitivity specificity were varying among different type of lesions they can be from the range of 25% the least sensitivity with the rotator cuff interval uh, rotator interval lesions to very specific going towards the uh, rotator cuff itself so we'll be taking one by one these problem common problems mm -hmm. and how not to miss and be more precise in giving a particular treatment mri is also plagued with certain limitations and the limitations pertains to like a uh, resolution we can have a 3t mri 1.5t mri any mri but the resolution improves if you take a better slice thi slice thickness the size of the area area of interest which has to be seen and the field of vision what we see in x rays and cts as pixels voxels become important in case of mri tissue contrast differences so if there is a joint effusion or if, if some substance is in injected as a contrast they separate the structures and improve the tissue contrast and their different signal characteristics there are mechanical differences because usually mri is done static while arthroscopic is dynamic and probing can be done to make out to reveal the missed pathologies so here i take the first thing the articular cartilage lesions if we see even in mr arthrography the sensitivity for humeral sided articular cartilage lesion can range from 53 to 100% and glenoid side sensitivity is slightly more but still it is in range somewhere above 75% and 66% specific 
the reason being there are thin cartilage the spherical shape causes overlapping of image see there are two convex one convex surface over a concave surface and many small structures they can be overlapped also tissue contrast sometimes is mimicked by the joint fluid so if we see in this mri what is something which is something is wrong there a decreased cartilage thickness is seen and once you go and put in your scope you find a huge uh, lesion chondral flap on the humeral head so for getting a better visualization for articular cartilage lesions there should be an improved spatial resolution on 2d sequences and use of isotropic 3d sequences obtaining different planes or arm position this becomes important the concept of dynamic mri the arm position to better cover different areas of curved humeral head or concave uh, glenoid surface tissue contrast can be improved by obtaining sequences as intermediate weighted proton density sequence which uh, has to be included in protocol provided the radiologist knows that you are looking particular for the articular cartilage lesions combination of intraarticular fluid with intermediate weighted fluid sensitive sequences should improve even greater tissue contrast than only a gadolinium scan the other commonly missed lesions are partial tears of long head of biceps biceps tendon abnormality can be primary cause of shoulder pain and maybe an indication of surgery commonly performed procedure along with rotator cuff uh, surgery a biceps tenodesis a biceps tenotomy is uh, important and the lesion uh, if it remains unaddressed can remain painful even if, uh, despite doing a successful surgery finally partial tear should be treated before it progresses to a complete tear and uh, clinically we can find for uh, speed tear sear gas and tears looking to, for bicep tender, uh, tenderness in the intertubercular sulcus and go for mri if we see the mri about 1/4 of the mri were surgical cases some type of biceps tendon lesions are there and there can be a complete rupture there can be subluxation dislocation tendinosis or partial tears the problem is that the tendon is not straight it curves over and comes in an oblique course in the intertubercular sulcus so visualization becomes difficult and if you probe in while doing your arthroscopy and you uh, pull the tendon inside the joint you will see so much amount of fraying and this can be the probable cause of pain in the shoulder to improve the visualization we can again do a spatial resolution better with thinner 2d images using 3d sequences the best view where bicep tendon is seen is sagittal oblique view and oblique planes perpendicular and parallel to the path of long head of biceps and that is why the protocol now changes for mri that internal rotation of humerus and extension of elbow so that the tendon becomes collinear in the intertubercular sulcus and can be visualized properly partial cuff tears no doubt mri is one of the investigation of choice along with ultrasound for complete rotator cuff tears but partial cuff tears especially those over the articular side and under surface or they are delaminating flap tears on the under surface which may not be evident on an static mri there is also a mechanical disadvantage to diagnose the delamination and under under surface foot tear and again these tendon are this tendon of the rotator cuff are of oblique orientation so abduction and external rotation positioning has been shown to increase the conspicuity of this partial thickness articular sided tears by lifting the tendon of the humeral head specifically one can look for intramuscular or a myo tendinous ganglion which can be associated with the flap tear external rotation of humerus for cor coronal oblique imaging brings the tendon course in plane so it is now that the certain maneuvers have to be followed to get the investigation of choice properly so that the diagnosis is not missed before we put in the anesthesia and patient under the knife adhesive capsulitis again a presenting clinical condition which needs to be differentiated with associated rotator cuff tear calcific tendinitis or glenohumeral osteoarthritis in a refractory case there are signal changes most commonly diagnosed by non fat suppressed t1 images in rotator interval thickening of joint capsule enhancement of joint capsule itself but in long standing cases because of adhesions and scarring the sensitivity reduces fat suppression 
also make, make it difficult to define the margins of axillary races. So what we need to do is that sagittal T1 weighted sequence without fat suppression to look for rotator interval T1, T2 weighted and non-fat uh, suppressed sequence are to be obtained. Slab tails, another commonly missed lesions, especially slab three and slab four, they are small in size. Type three is a bucket handle undisplaced tear which require a debridement. Type four is a extension into glenoid rim and tear of the biceps anchor which require a reattachment. As they are small and poorly, uh, poor resolution, special resolution there, and along with a poor coaxial anatomic arrangement, along with the glenoid surface, they are difficult to visualize. Unless until uh, you probe in uh, by arthroscopy, the diagnosis remains doubtful. So to overcome this problem, we can image in the abduction external rotation position, and as it induces the peel back, contrast arthrography is helpful, and orientation of coronal oblique images along the long axis of glenoid improves the resolution. So we have to either align the machine or align the limb. Bicep sling injury, it is composed of something in rotator interval where there is coraca humeral ligament, superior glenohumeral ligament, superior fibers of subscapularis. This serves to prevent the medial subluxation of bicep tendon. Because these are repairable, missed rotator interval lesions such as these can cause a failed arthroscopic glenohumeral instability repair and hence it has to be carefully watched for. Poor sensitivity of detection on unenhanced MRI, the use of MR arthrography, identifies the biceps fully, finds communicating defects, evaluates stretching and expansion of rotator interval capsule, identification of subtle injuries, superior fiber of subscapularis, and considering both views in internal and external uh, rotation, depicts medial subluxation of biceps tendon. Above all, when we finally put in our scope, we have to be systematically seeing the 15 points in arthroscopic examination by SCOIC, South Cal California Orthopedic Institute, and eight points in subacromial examination when verifying our clinical as well as MRI findings. So in conclusion, by working closely with our clinical colleagues, as well as radiological colleagues, we can tailor examination in several ways, selecting more specific lesion-specific joint positioning, abduction external rotation, a tissue contrast, focused protocoling with improvement in MR technology, good clinical diagnosis and suspicion, and improve our detection of these lesions and provide more accurate information to guide the patient treatment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sina. Now I request Dr. Roshan Wade, sir, to speak on shoulder instability, decision-making, soft tissue versus bony procedures. So it's an important talk, and thank you, sir, for delivering the lecture. Okay, so thanks uh, Apex Academy. That was a wonderful time in Varanasi, uh, holiest city in India, and probably currently the most powerful city in India. So uh, decision making in recurrent shoulder instability is one talk which is very, very important as far as the bank card management and instability in younger population is concerned. Because one has to have a complete understanding of uh, the uh, disease and Per se, unless you have a very, very stable shoulder, any activity, might it be a throwing, balling, cricket, pitching, anything, will not happen unless you have a very, very stable shoulder. So what exactly is recreating the an, an anatomy? It's a creating of normal glenoidogram. That means the moment of the humeral head onto the glenoid, which happens in every abduction, external rotation, and every inter rotation and adduction. There is a different center of rotation of the humeral head, which needs to be articulated and central over along with the good musculature around the shoulder joint. So unless you recreate this anatomy, you cannot get a stable shoulder joint. Uh, this is the uh, video of uh, the articular image. How does the bank art lesion happen? This is from Giovanni Giacomo from Italy. That is, uh, and you can see here, whenever you have, stop working. So whenever you have a lesion, which is uh, the normal shoulder, there is a complete articulation of the humeral head. And when force exceeds anteriorly, there is a tear. And this tear will lead to 
the uh, tear of the anterior glenoid. Th so uh, there are the stabilizing factors inside the shoulder joint, the most important being the intraarticular pressure. And the second biggest and the most critical is concavity compression ratio. And this ratio is because of increased glenoid height, that is because of labrum, the position of scapula and the muscles around the shoulder joint. So unless you have a normal plyomorphic muscles around the shoulder joint, you cannot get a, st a st stability in any mid-range or end-range position. At the end range, there is the inferior and uh, the middle glenohumeral ligament, anterior and posterior band, which are very, very important. So in short, the glenoid and labrum, which will decide the concavity compression ratio of the shoulder joint, needs to be taken care of. So this is a strand mode triangle because all of them are interlinked, the trauma, the laxity, and muscle patterning. The muscle patterning is effect of trauma and laxity, and this needs to be taken care in every situation. As far as acute dislocation is concerned, the rule of the games are very, very simple. It's the most common one. And 86% uh, uh, of time shoulder dislocations, the uh, glenohumeral shoulder dislocations, which can be reduced. But what it leads to is either a Bankart lesion, that is the anterior avulsion of capsular labral structure, or it is an Alpsa lesion, that is anterior labral periosteal sleeve avulsion, or it is a Hagel lesion, that is a humeral avulsion of glenoid labrum, and it could be a bony Bankart when it is associated with avulsion of the bone. And sometimes it is mere capsular tear, it may not be a bony lesion. So this is another video uh, of uh, the heel sacs lesion, why it is important and how this hill sacs lesion understanding had changed the understanding of the shoulder joint. Because all these lesions, they eventually lead to uh, the damage. This is st static fan effect, which is created because of unreduced or unable to reduce dislocation, which needs to be reduced, not because of force, as we do it in our clinical practice, has to be done under general anesthesia, so that you can get a minimal damage after the shoulder joint dislocation. And this has been affected as a starting point when you have first dislocation. And with every recurrent dislocation, you have a head fan effect, which can lead to a recurrent instability. And then you can have a static effect because of the hill sacs lesion, which will indent onto the glenoid as well as glenoid indenting on the postlateral uh, aspect of the humeral head. So this leads to a damage to the humeral head in either way along with the glenoid damage. And this is the basis of your on track and off track and why your recurrent dislocation shoulder instability fail eventually even in spite of good surgery being done. So one has to understand in detail. We have been taught to reduce, but this is not the way you reduce the modern day shoulder dislocation. One has to take them under anesthesia, relax the patient and reduce it without force so that you don't damage the humeral head and glenoid more. This is a, co a caucus maneuver which you can try it under anesthesia or under sedation so as to get a good reduction. Stimson is again a traumatic gradual maneuver which can be done with 10 pounds body weight uh, or weight on the arm which will reduce uh, gradually the humeral head. Hovilius was the first one to study the non-operative management of the primary anterior shoulder dislocation and found out that if younger the patient, more is the chances of dislocation. And same Hovilius, when he published his data early 2000, he publishes another series in 2014 where he is shown that who didn't went under surgery, even 67% of them didn't have the instability at the shoulder joint. So one has to understand the difference between laxity and instability. Laxity is a normal looseness of the structure, whereas instability is a pathological abnormal movement which is created and which creates a symptom. Laxity usually doesn't create a symptom. So one has to understand this uh, uh, difference in, in great detail. So normal intraarticular anatomy, for you to have a good stable shoulder, one has to have a good superior labrum attached to the bicep tendon so as to get a complete follow through in your shoulder throwing moment with intact rotator cuff, with intact subscapularis, with intact middle as well as superior as well as inferior anterior and posterior glenohumeral bands. So unless you have all these bands intact and the glenohumeral joint intact, you cannot get a stable shoulder joint. So this is in short the articular anatomy of the shoulder. How do you test your shoulder? Simple test, apprehension test. We have been taught in our medical college that simple apprehension test will give you a diagnosis of anterior shoulder instability. Then there are certain tests like load shift test or drawer test for anterior shoulder. You can feel the humeral head coming out of the glenoid with your load shift test. There are, uh, th this is the drawer test. You can see here the humeral head is coming out of the glenoid cavity much liberally and better way. 
IG Toy first proposed the management, conservative line of management in the form of external rotation, like this position. Why? Because in that position, the labrum fell onto the glenoid and the chances of healing is far, far better. But technically, it is not possible, not, it's a very much cumbersome position to hold this position in for a longer time. So healing pattern of the humeral, uh, glenohumeral joint has reduced the uh, chances of decreasing the instability around the shoulder joint. Then there is another category which needs to be taken care of. That's called voluntary dislocator. And one has to analyze this patients in your clinical practice. So not to miss and not to operate them, otherwise you are going to get 100% failures. In short, the instability could be traumatic, that is the tra traumatic unidirectional bank cards, and surgery is the only option, that is tubs. Or it could be ulps and haggle as a part of tubs, where you can see the avulsion of humeral as well as the, uh, the anterior liberal per periosteal sleeve avulsion. What has changed in the last 10 years is understanding of the shoulder and the bone loss. And this five, six gentlemen, including Joe DeBeer to uh, Burkhardt to Romeo to Hebermeyer, Sugaya and I.G. Toy, all these researchers have added to the knowledge of bone loss and quantitative bone loss around the glenohumeral joint. And this has led to a more understanding of why the glenohumeral joint dislocates and why the glenohumeral joints has higher failure rates as far as the instability is concerned. And this has changed the decision making in last 10 years as far as the shoulder instability is concerned. This is very famous by Dr. I.G. Toy, where he has shown that initially the 25% was the uh, width, that is the loss of the bone of the glenoid, uh, glenoid labrum or glenoid anterior part of glenoid can lead to recurrent or critical size which need to be taken care by the other forms, either in the form of glenoid bone grafting or the uh, lethargy type of procedure. And then they came the, uh, the, uh, the paper by John Tokies, that is West Point View, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the West Point Center in America, where they proposed that 13.4 is the critical size of bone loss, which needs to be taken care by uh, the other means of the surgery, not the arthroscopic surgery. Why this has happened? Because there is a bipolar bone loss. The loss is on the anterior side of the glenoid as well as the posterior aspect of the humeral head. And this bipolar lesion can create an off-track and on-track phenomena, which has been described by Giovanni Giacomo in year 2014. And this is another way you can have uh, your decision making. This is in short, if you see this glenohumeral joint, the, articulation, uh, uh, the anterior glenoid articulation, the humeral head, only 83% of the glenoid tract articulates with the, glen, uh, uh, the humeral head. So once you have the glenoid defect anteriorly and you can minus that 83% tract, that means the amount of bone left for the humeral head to articulate is much, much lesser. And this glenoid tract will be off-track lesion. Like you can see in this patient, this patient is an off-track lesion of the glenohumeral joint. And one ha there is another proxenetic factor which can be considered, but nowadays it's not even practiced, but again it's coming back. A revised criteria, that's called ISIS index. That is instability severity index score, which has been marketed by the uh, Pascal Bolo. And they have found out that type of the uh, injury, the age of the patient, and the sports is the most important deciding factor. So Dana, in way back in 2014, had described the algorithm for the management of shoulder instability. Less than 15% width, you can is go for isolated soft tissue management. 13, uh, 15 to 25% is one we have to consider. If it is high demand, go for a bone, fry, bone augmentation in the form of lethargy. If it is more than 25, always go for a lethargy type of procedure. So instability types are usually basically torn loose, born loose, and got loose. You have to select which category your patient fits in. Torn loose, as I told you, traumatic unidirectional band tard. The bone loose is an AMRI category, that is the automatic, multidirectional, bilateral, and frequently required only rehabilitation. And this assessment is very, very important because unless you assess these lesions during the surgery in the form of unstable shoulder in all direction, you can see here that uh, he's, he is unstable in all direction, the anterior, posterior, lateral, all direction is the instability. And such patients need to be taken care of separately than your regular bank heart lesion. By definition, the multidirectional uh, multi instability is symptomatic glenohumeral instability in more than one direction. And the management is simple capsular tucking. What is more important is acquired instability, which is the thrower's instability because of repeated microtrauma or overhead activity. And this is commonly associated with bicep lesions. And preoperative selection is very, very important when you consider the instability management.
right it should it has to be a traumatic instability with minimal bone lesion and discrete bank card lesion is a diagnosis when you want to do a arthroscopic mobilization so i do all my arthroscopic surgeries in lateral position already shown by dr rajiv gupta the uh, the portal placement is anterior anterior superior and posterior we have seen this in live surgery i'll just show you the live surgical procedure my way the anterior bank card repair is IGHL tensioning that is inferior glenohumeral ligament tensioning you can take at least three or minimum four or maximum four anchors and i usually put six o'clock anchor then five o'clock four o'clock and three o'clock anchor to tighten the inferior glenohumeral ligament so this is how you can do a diagnostic uh, arthroscopy and you can see for a hill sacs lesion here this hill sacs lesion needs to be taken not to be taken care of because a very very small and discrete lesion and then you can plan extension of the lesion as i was talking during live surgery sorry so you can extend the lesion like rajiv was demonstrating extending the lesion sometime i use the uh, arthroscopic scissor to extend the lesion why is not going man okay i am unable to play that video so sometimes you have to uh, do a shifting of the glenoid labrum with the help of the anchor how do you shift take a anchor at 5 o'clock position and take a bite little away from it so that you can shift the glenohumeral joint or glenohumeral capsule at the level of the anchor and this can be easily achieved then we are talking about this uh, subscapularis uh, advancement or augmentation in the repair this is nowadays uh, coming up trick which can be used for a multidirectional or a, a long time uh, having recurrent dislocation patients where you can get a better stability if you have a significant hill sacs like in today's case one can plan a rampli such type of procedure like this you can take a, a debride the lesion with the help of a bar create a denude area and then just pass your anchor either you can do a two anchor or one anchor i always go in sub acromial space and tie those uh, things so that it can create a a good a good uh, tenodesis effect for 27 year old male who is more and more active like involved in kabaddi or some other contact sports one has to have a different approach you can't go it with a arthroscopic bank card type of surgery in those cases it is better to give them a latarge type of procedure where you can get a more and more stability because of three effect that is a capsular effect the bone effect and the subscapularis tenodesis effect which can give you a better outcome so here you can see the not running this was a small video of latarge probably i am unable to run it okay that was the last slide <laughs> i am sorry i am sorry <laughs> all the videos are running except for this so that's all uh, one has to take care of this uh, instability in different way and you can get a better outcome yeah i think i am able to run it so this is the latarge procedure is a open surgery you can use the uh, angled saw which is available in india nowadays and then you can uh, remove the part of the glenoid uh, a coracoid under surface of coracoid needs to be denuded with the help of a saw or you can use a bar and then you can use the two screws simple screws is a very very cheap procedure you don't require any uh, extravagant anchors like uh, uh, the uh, today's anchors you can do it with sim two simple screws and you can get a better and more functional result for your uh, uh, more uh, uh, contact athletes or people who are involved in more and more sports activities in younger patients then there are other procedure which are described in literature but i have not tried that is eden hibernate that is the ilacris bone grafting on the glenoid and dr giacomo has published his literature on this addressing bone loss where he has said that if it is more than 25% bone loss and off track lesion one has to consider latarge type of procedure so in short the decision making depends on the type of the procedure type of instability bone loss and the kind of contact sports your patient is into the rehabilitation is very simple we have to consider the pendulum exercises abductor co strengthening usually it takes 6 to 8 months for you to have send patient uh, to send back to uh, 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 when a return to play 
In summary, arthroscopic techniques are here to stay. The patient expectation and economic pressure drives the application of this technique, especially the industry, the people standing behind us. And percentage performed arthroscopically bank card repairs will increase over a time as we teach more and more these surgeries and evolve the technique and the implants. Thank you. Yeah, we can, sir. Or one-to-one -one basis, if you can, can sit together. So now, I request Dr. Vinay Pandey to speak on current concept of rotator cuff repair. And I thank Dr. Roshan Wadi, sir, for the lecture. And Dr. Roshan, sir, has to move to theater to perform the multi-ligament knee injury case. So I'll request him to do that. And over to Dr. Vinay Pandey. Thank you, Swaroop. So this is the last topic for the day. So, so uh, cuff tissue was initially thought to be a subacromial spacer only. And surgical goals were to cover the hole with autografts or allografts. That was the initial concept. Gradually, uh, the concepts evolved and the two most important functions attributed were force couple and suspension bridge concept. And that became finally the goal of surgery. Okay, so transverse plane uh, force couple is created by subscapularis anteriorly and infraspinatus and teres minor posteriorly. So that's the subscap and then infra and teres minor. That's the couple which is transverse plane couple. And, uh, and, and coronal plane couple was created by deltoid superiorly and inferior cuff posteriorly. It is important to have line of action of rotator cuff force below the center of rotation of humeral head like here. It should be below the center of the rotation of humeral head. Then only it can balance the force generated by del deltoid in coronal plane force couple. Another concept is of suspension bridge formed by condensation of coracohumeral ligament called the rotator cable. So that's the cable. So what happens, this is the tissue which is a friable tissue there. So this cable maintains the pressure and what it does is stress is transferred along the rotator cable as distributed load thereby stress shielding, this avascular zone is shielded by this rotator cable. So even if there is a tear there, this cable can generate the function. That is why we have patient with supraspinatus tear who can function well because this cable is intact and that is how they can lift their shoulder up. Now cuff repair per se is a long learning curve. Very many factors affect the cuff repair surgery. It's a surgery in phase of evolution, so concepts are changing every year. I'll try to compile few in, in a loud time. It starts from patient positioning to control of bleeding to how to approach the tear to biomechanics to subscap repair and the tear pattern identification. There are many, many factors. And off late, there has been a lot of discussion about repairability of the cuff tear. Though there are surgeons skilled enough to repair all kinds of cuff, but for initiators, repairability of cuff is something which has to be looked into. There are, these are two examples of cuff tear, one male, another female both age of 70 years have similar kind of cuff tear pattern on the first look but look at the reducibility of the tear second one is not as reducible as the first one although the history is six years back since our patient population usually presents little late one must be wary about these kind of retracted and contracted tears which are really difficult to repair completely so it's good if we have some criteria to predict the repairability of the cuff there are few repairability predictors which can guide preoperatively regarding repairability of the cuff tissue, like age more than 70 years, chronicity of the tear, acromiohumeral distance, inferior glenoal humeral distance, this is the distance, retraction grade 3 pate and gouty alias fatty grade 3 and 4. So these are the criteria. Then we have positive tangent sign. Tangent sign is measured by drawing a line from top of the coracoid there to the top of the scapular spine there. So if this supraspinatus crosses this line, it is good. If it is below this line, that's a positive tangent sign. So if supraspinatus falls below this line, it's an indicator for irreparability. So these are the guiding factors for knowing which are the, the tears which are going to trouble you. Then Hamada class two means acromiohumeral distance less than five. So we have, these are the classes of Hamada. So second is 
as the humeral head goes up. So if, if the acromiohumeral distance is less than 5, it is class 2 and it's in irreparability. So after assessing the irreparability, patient position is one factor which needs attention. Of course, it depends on how one has been trained. But one must know pros and cons of both positions, lateral decubitus and beach chair. I personally prefer beach chair position because anterior accessibility is important. So initially to start with subscap tier where 5%, 7% in various series, now the incidence has gone up to 35%. So out of every three uh, cuff tiers, one can have subscap tier. So working in beach chair position anteriorly is, is easy as compared to lateral, though there are surgeons who do it on lateral position very nicely. So the uh, reason is that I get a good exposure of the shoulder, especially anterior aspect, and I use this traction device and thereby I can increase or decrease the traction so I can play with traction so my favorite position for cuff surgery is beach chair position uh, this is the most uh, probably the most important aspect of shoulder arthroscopy which troubles every arthroscopic surgeon especially the roaming scenario we all have to roam around and do surgeries for shoulder surgery this is very important so these are the three basic factors which I depend on blood pressure control pump pressure and turbulence so out of these three I think blood pressure control and turbulence stop leaking portal because uh, there is a, a, a Burkhardt has shown that the stream of fluid creates a force perpendicular to the stream so that's the fluid which is coming and that causes the blood to come out so it keeps on oozing the capillaries keep on easing it states that uh, a force perpendicular to the stream that varies with the inversely with the force of the fluid velocity of the fluid that causes bleeding to happen during shoulder surgery one must find ways to stop the egress of fluid so you have to stop this so the portal leaking should be stopped so as to reduce the turbulence and thereby stop the bleeding. Again, this is very important in doing cuff surgeries. Reaching the tear needs good visualization angle and good working angle. Visualization angle has two parts. One part is viewing portal and then the other is angle of arthroscope. So you can have 30 degree arthroscope or 70 degree arthroscope. So you can play a little bit with angle of visualization even if it is not perfect. But angle of approach, working portal is very important. It's the foundational skill of any arthroscopic shoulder surgeon to get a good working portal. So one, what one, one can do is you can use these needles and then over that use switching six so that you know where exactly you have to work and where exactly you can reach. This table gives you good idea about different portals for performing different step of shoulder arthroscopic cuff surgery. This is not a fixed tool, but definitely guides when starting with the procedure. So anterior posterior portal is visualization portal. Anterolateral portal is working for acromioplasty. And then anterolateral portal is for subscap repair. Debridement of the tear, preparation of footprint, viewing uh, cuff tear is lateral portal. So these are the landmarks for these portals. And this is a basic guideline. One can vary here and there a little bit. Coming to biomechanical considerations of cuff repair, there are very many biomechanical factors which needs considerations like single row versus double row, optimizing the suture tendon interface, uh, anchor insertion. So dead man angle is usually for metal anchors or peak anchor or bio anchor is less than 45 degrees. For suture anchor, it is more than 45 degrees. Choice of suture anchor, choice of material, type of suture and arthroscopic knots. Of late, there had been a lot of debate about single row versus double row repair. Method both has certain advantage and disadvantage. So this is a double row repair. One can see the knot are being put at the myotendinous junction. So if at all the failure has to happen, it is a catastrophic failure because then the tear is from the myotendinous junction. That is not the scenario with single row repair. This is Crimson Duve, which has been described by Burkhardt, wherein he uh, does uh, microfracturing in single row repair. Even if it is a massive tear, it does very well. So there are the pros and cons of single row repair as well as double row repair. Uh, advantage is that uh, it's a simple technique, single row repair, with Comparable functional results and compared to double row repair. It's a biomechanical study which say double row is better as compared to single row, but functionally there is no difference between both the techniques. This is a recent article by Dr. Stephen Schneider highlighting the medialized triple loaded anchors for massive cuff tears, which I just now showed. They emphasize for need of crimson duvet, that is microfracturing the tuberosity. That is last year published in the Journal of Arthroscopy. And this is this year's article, it's a meta-analysis suggesting that there is no significant difference between com complex single row repair and transosseous double row method in any of the observed out outcomes. So this is a meta-analysis uh, showing there is no difference. Now coming to optimizing the suture tendon interface, these, these are the tear patterns which are degenerative mostly. So it's important to find methods to optimize suture 
tendon interface for preventing re tears, especially in old neglected tears. Triple loaded anchors help in uh, in this. Uh, doubling the suture fixation point reduces the load in each suture by 50%. So you can read as many sutures you add, uh, the tension on the suture goes down. And uh, various logged suture techniques have uh, have been shown up. Uh, the one is rip stop suture. This is being used by Young Gallery and promoted by him as well. Um, it's a, another method to optimize the suture uh, cuff interface. Vertical limb of suture entraps the horizontal limb. So this is one limb. You tie the knot like this, and on top of this, you pass in the so, so double loaded anchor. So you pass in a knot, horizontal. On top of that comes the vertical, this like. Uh, there had been continuous influx of various kind of anchors, starting from the metal anchors, which had a problem with imaging and revision. Then came the bio anchors. There was the problem of cyst formation. And then came biocomposite anchors. Right now, we all are shifted to all suture anchors. Uh, they are proven preserving. But you need more vertical uh, insertion angle as compared to deadman angle. And this, uh, this also needs uh, avoiding excessive footprint preparation. You want bone to be there for these anchors to hold. Now coming to arthroscopic knots, uh, those sliding knots are preferred mostly, but one should learn how to apply non-sliding knots to prevent cheese wiring of cuff tissue, uh, which is usually in this scenario, uh, is not a good quality of cut cuff tissue that you get. Another thing is, it's important to know and assess the pattern of tear that you have seen. You can see. So one is L-shaped tear, this is laminated tear, this is U-shaped tear, that's crescent, and that's massive tear. So based on these tear, one has to plan their surgery to get a good repair. The crescent shape has excellent medial-lateral mobility. U-shaped tear, uh, margin convergence is absolutely important. L-shaped tear, one leaf is, one margin is free. You have to bring that margin to one corner and fix it up. Massive contracted tear, you have to have anterior interval slide and posterior interval slide. Both combined can give you additional five centimeter of mobility, uh, but you depend on, uh, uh, anteriorly it's not so difficult, but posteriorly you have to be wary about suprascapular now at the angle of uh, uh, acromion. Uh, this is another aspect of curve surgery which is increasingly getting attention. Subscap tear, initially uh, we are reported as 5%, but now a lot of series have come up to 35% incidences, which mean every third cuff can have uh, subscap. Mostly common tissue can be seen in these uh, injury patterns. And so one should look for it. Sometimes comma tissue may not be absent. So top video, there is no comma tissue. Here you can see a comma. This is the comma tissue. So that's the cable, rotor cable attaching to the subscap. So you can find this, this comma kind of structure there. So once you find it out, it's a subscap tier. Once you reduce it, everything falls in place. So, so once you find this tissue, this one, everything falls in place. In this case, you don't find a comma tissue. It's a complete tier of subscap. So one must look for in every uh, uh, cuff surgery for this comma tissue. So uh, incidence can go up to 35% as told. Uh, identifying the comma tissue is very important. Uh, it tethers the anterior edge of supraspinatus and represents anterior rotor to cover attachment. Significance of subscap repair that it facilitates the repair of supraspinatus and reestablishes the anterior part of rotor to cover. Uh, it contributes to force couple. Subscapular footprint is wider superiorly. Uh, so it's uh, so we skip. Um, cuff tear which initially looked very large like in this scenario and retracted could be easily reduced once subscap was so once you have fixed the subscap this comma tissue builds everything here and it becomes very easy to to reduce so one must put arm in forward flexion and internal rotation and slightly pushing arm posteriorly to open up the subscap insertion to humerus 70 degree sp scope is a must sometimes but I don't use it I have never uh, had need to use it so for me 30 degree scope does well uh, one must uh, that's that's the thing so this is very important now this is one partial tear uh, scenario uh, painful shoulder can have partial tears this is an example of partial tear articular sided so trans tendon repair is being done there so you shave off the portion so that's the intact part and that's the part which has been exposed so you use that window into the tendon to put an anchor there and put all the knots there. So you just prepare the part. And once that is done, you put in an anchor there. And through the tendon only you can take bites. So here double loaded anchor has been used. So you have different kind of devices which you can use and then grab the thread 
pass it through the tendon. So there is no difference in making this tear complete and repairing it. Here it is only done transtendinous. Otherwise, you can take the insertion off and do it as a normal full thickness tear. So one can get this pattern. And now there are multiple threads which has been passed. And once you tie the knot, it falls there. So that's the knot which has been tied in the subacromial space. So you do everything intraarticular, then go to the subacromial space and tie knot on top of cuff. And once that is done, the cuff is reduced. So that's now you can see the head and this area which was bare earlier is now being covered by cuff. Now arm is being mobilized and you can see the, the attachment of cuff in that portion. So a uh, bursal surface tear can have, we can have intratendinous tear and articular surface tear. Conversion repair versus transtendinous repair, there is no difference. One can go with anything one wants to. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Vinay Pandey, sir. So now the cases are ready in the yeah. operation theater. I think Ajo Dr. Sir, Rajiv Raman has already harvested the graft. Dr. Rajiv Raman, sir, can you hear me? Yeah. Can, can you give up the yeah, sound here? Dr. Rajiv, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Hello. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, please. So, this patient has a ACL reconstruction few days back and he has come with the symptoms of instability. There is some amount of posterior sag also, but uh, it's not very significant. And if you can see, when I am inside the joint, you can see there was no... Sco scopia picture, please. Yeah, scopia picture, please. Uh -huh. So already and we have... Uh, sir, I'll take just a moment. Now I'll invite Dr. Shweta Abra and Dr. Shivan Sena to moderate the session. Welcome, Shweta Hi, Shivam. Probe, sister. Well, gas external rotation. Media minister is intact. Virus, figure of four. So, when was the previous ACL reconstruction done, Raji boss? I think it was one year back, one as year. told. Yeah, almost one year back. And the patient came again with the history of instability. Mm -hmm. So, so the meniscus are intact, but once I put my scope inside, it was only thin bundle there. All right. So, I uh, went for CT scan also. I think it was there in packs. I got the MRI preoperatively only. So in CT scan, I saw the diameter of uh, femoral tunnel is around 11.5 and tibial tunnel is around 11. And if you can focus there, I will show you. Any one of you, can you, can you, cameraman, can you focus over the MRI? One artery forceps, sister. Yeah. Yeah, Sivam, can yes, you sir. see the MRI here? Yes. So here, you can see the two things are there. The femoral tunnel is almost okay. It should have been a bit posterior, all right. But the tibial tunnel, if you see, it's very anterior. Two almost anterior. A, yeah, two anterior, anterior. there's a thin rim of the tibial tunnel only, all right. So whenever you go for a revision ACL, uh, planning for a revision ACL reconstruction, three things are important. First thing is do a thorough clinical examination, whether you have missed the posterolateral corner injury or a MCL injury or a PCL injury. Second thing is what... Uh, 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 we uh, heard in the morning talk uh, by Rajiv Gupta is the placement of the tunnel, either a femoral tunnel or a tibial tunnel. Malposition femoral and tibial tunnel are one of the commonest cause of failure of ACL reconstruction. Here you can see it's the malposition of the anterior malposition of the tibial tunnel. What happens when your tibial tunnel is more anterior, most of the time it got 
gets impinged in the intercondylar notch yes. and it's the friction at the intercondylar notch which causes the attenuation of the graft. Second thing is that you can see here the PCL is intact, PCL is intact, it's some amount of grade 1 laxity is there but I am not planning to reconstruct it because patient is not having any symptoms of the patellofemoral pain. So, your diameter of the tunnel is around around 11.5, so at least 9.5 to 10 graft would be an ideal mm -hmm. graft for me. So, in CT scan, but CT scan that diameter is always a larger diameter. So, don't right. think like a 14 millimeter CT scan diameter, you have to prepare a 14 millimeter graft because it's like a cortical margin from which we measure in the mid tunnel. Day. Suppose you have to measure the diameter here, it's the midpoint of the tunnel here. Here you have to measure it. And in the CT scan pack system, I think Swaroop has a very good pack system, mm -hmm. you can measure the tunnel diameter. Right. So, I at first I harvested the peroneus, but the graft diameter was 7. Then mm -hmm. I harvested the superficial cordyceps, uh, which is my so take. So, uh, you are harvesting the graft from the same limb? Same, same limb, yeah. So, I think other limb graft should be kept for other uh, ligamentous injury. So, here I have harvested the superficial cordyceps with the uh, 2 centimeter incision, you can see here, you can focus here and peroneus. Now my graft diameter is close to 10. All right. So close you have a very nice harvesting technique for... Uh, yeah, yeah, I could have, I could have shown you. you. Yeah. I could have shown you. It's now I've closed it. It would have been very nice if you would have demonstrated it. Yeah, so yeah. let's proceed with the surgery. Yeah, yeah. And now, once you go inside... So we, yes. So what's your cutoff for uh, doing a two-stage? Uh, yeah, normally if the tunnel diameter is more than 14, always a two. 12 is uh, t t 12 to 14 is like you can plan one stage or two stage, but uh, 10 to 11 I think you can go in one stage. All right, that is the cutoff. So for more than 14, never plan in one stage. Go for bone grafting and plan for your reconstruction later on. So here you can see the fibrous band is there. You can and the median and lateral meniscus is uh, uh, almost intact. There is some amount of arthritic changes in inside the knee joint. So. This is the original femur, you can see fem uh, the ACL footprint. You can see the ACL footprint here. Just I will show you, yes. So what I will do, so four millimeter, yeah please. Rajiv sir. Yeah. He was having clinically some bit of posterior sac. Yeah, yeah. So in uh, arthroscopically, how you will uh, look for the PCL and uh, yeah, see, was whether it is intact or having some here. Normally, PCL, you will not get that classical, what you may say, a empty fossa sign, all right. It's only the instability which is important, all right. So, you can see in the posterior door, this is the amount of, and this is a hard end point, all right. So, it's almost grade 1 laxity is there. I'm not telling there is no laxity, there is grade 1 laxity is there. So, grade 1 laxity is there, here. Yeah. You can see here, so grade 1 laxity is there. If you have associated, a, if you are PCL injury with intact ACL, you will see the classical sagging rope sign. Yes, sir. Yeah, all right. So, 4 millimeter drill bit, I think I used that technique. So, I used a separate technique for 11 number blade. So, now my accessory medial portal. It's 1 centimeter below to the my medial portal. My gap diameter is larger, so I will make it a bit larger. It's not around 9.5 to 10. Dr. Rajiv Shwetab here. Yeah, Shwetab. Yeah, flex. Yeah. Uh, are you going to look for some uh, ramp lesion or something which might yeah, be? Yeah, yeah. Already I have done diagnostic roundup. There is no ramp lesion. The meniscus is there. Some amount of degenerative tear is there in the meniscus. All right. So the uh, medial and lateral meniscus are almost normal. You can see again. I can show you. Probe, probe, please. So you can see some amount of degenerative tear is there. There is no ramp lesion, and the best thing is that try to palpate this meniscus and if ramp tear is there you will have some movement of the meniscus in the intercondylar notch all right here yeah. or you can go to the posterior medial compartment and you can view this ramp tear all right so you can go in the posterior medial compartment you can see the arthritic changes inside the knee you can see there is a there is a arthritic changes inside the knee so it's always better to counsel this patient that they will have some amount of joint pain or medial or lateral joint pain and you can see the original acl it was close to the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus i can show you this is the original footprint of ACL pro place. So I will not touch this one. See, this was the original footprint of ACL. You got it? Yeah. So it, it this is the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. It was anterior to that. All right. So quite anterior. So now I will make my foot uh, new tunnel medial to the medial medial the drop medial spine of the medial tibial spine. You can see this is the medial tibial spine and this is the drop point. So here I will make my new tunnel. All right. 
So, so you can uh, demonstrate how you are going for because the femoral tunnel was okay. Yeah, femoral so, tunnel was okay. So, so now you I can will show the femoral tunnel. Prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will show because you because tibial tunnel we will be getting in an anatomic position now. Yeah, yeah, now. With the properly placed femoral tunnel, how uh, we manage in the revision settings, that is that important. that is important. So you can see this is my. So you can see here. This is the your ACL footprint. Okay. All right. So now the footprint is large because you have a new ACL revision is ACL PCA footprint and original ACL footprint. And here was your tunnel. This was your tunnel. All right. So just there are two techniques. See endo button. Isko hyperflex karna hoga. Yes, just take. Just thoda sa anterior leo. The hyperflex patient ko thoda anterior leo. Yes. Then you can have. Uh, we would appreciate if you can see it through the anterior. Yeah, yeah. I, I will show you. I will show. Just I, uh, to hyperflex. I am doing it like yes. Just now. And now pro please. And you can see the original footprint, uh, the revision ACL footprint here. Chodh, 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 I will show you. You can see this is your lower part of the medial femoral, uh, 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 lateral femoral condyle. Can we have a larger picture? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, you can see the footprint here. You can right. see that that is the revision ACL. That was there. So I will. I will put it a bit lower because we have an option of adjustable loop also here. If my Good. tunnel is 30, 25, 30 also, I can come out with the adjustable loop. All right. So, so that is your, so the, you have two options. You can't go higher because again, you are putting it in a mal position. So try to be it the middle and the lower part only. All right. Law. Chalo. So am I clear? I think. Yeah. 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 So now four millimeter drill bit. So I use this technique. 4 millimeter drill bit technique, you can see this 4 millimeter drill bit. I put it over the center where I want to put my graft. All right, normally it is the center of the graft. And here you can see this is the lower part, that is the upper part. This is the original graft. So I am putting it in the lower part only, lower part and posteriorly. You can see this. This is the original footprint of the ACL. And this is the new revision ACL, uh, the, uh, the primary ACL reconstruction which was done. So I am in between. Yeah, so here. So, yes. so this is the 4 millimeter. Little bit and go, yes. Huh. Go, go, fire. The question from the floor is aren't you going to use a bead pen or a guide wire before that? Yeah, I'm telling you. Just leave it. So you can see, this is like you can put it over the center of the footprint, all right. So whole of the ligament is will be reconstructed around this center only. Right. So this is a very good technique. Even in six months or eight month old cases, now we are going to publish this paper in JSM. You get this, you just divide this part, you will get the footprint. And put this bit pin over the center of the footprint, yeah, 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 four millimeter rim, uh, die, yeah, uh, drill bit, and your bit pin will go to the center. Now over that rim with a four millimeter. Yeah, just artery. Let's see what is the diameter of the, uh, go, yeah. What is the flexion of knee which you are going to? 100 degree, 100 degree, 100, 110. 110 degree, yeah. So, Dikha, let me give me a saber blade, yeah. 30, yeah. You go, 30. Uh, so go, just go, just let me measure the tunnel, yeah. Show this go. So it's almost 28, you can see here, 28, 28. So I'm too low, so uh, now I don't have any option to use the adjustable loop only, all right. It's a 20. Hmm. 28, yeah. Hmm. Four millimeter, there's no four millimeter, voila. Just. So Sivam, what is your graft choice for such scenario, in such scenario? Just halka ek yahan se, yes, go, go, go. Quadriceps is one of the good graft. Quadriceps is first uh, choice. Uh -huh. So uh, what happened, sometimes people use as bone patellar tendon also for mm -hmm. this, all right. Because it acts like a filler. But uh, if you have, uh, as uh, you asked me, one stage or two SS, sometimes you have a 12 or 13 millimeter tunnel diameter is there. You can, you can plan a quadriceps also as a filler. 
uh, cordyceps uh, tendon graft as a filler. All right. Always, always. See, normally the cordyceps thickness is normally the cordyceps thickness is around varies from 8 to 14 millimeter in Indian population okay. in the sagittal section. All right. So whenever whenever you are doing just re this revision. Just hold it. Re revision cases, or you want, or you are planning to take cordyceps graft, it should be minimum of 8 millimeter thickness, not less than that. All right. Wait, wait. Yeah, go. Yeah, go. 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 It's only 40 tunnel. So you can see a low. Give me the shiver blade now. It's quite off. Now, now just I will clear that part to see what is the position of the tunnel here. Because shiver blade. Center oscillating, and yes. So Amit, yes, sir. How, how do you plan such 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 cases? So when you you think that yes, the uh, uh, it's a revision scenario. So most of the time you uh, if a cordyceps tendon. Uh, sir, my preference so most of the time is peroneus longus because uh, are you having again the cordyceps um, it becomes uh, see, this is me. a this is superficial cordyceps we are harvesting all right so it's 40 yeah good huh so we will go up to 30 only yeah? give that uh. so i put a bit higher up now the tunnel is around 40 so up to 30 28 we will go we will keep around 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 40 now nah? that's 40 mark here so we will we will keep around 2 millimeter, 12, 10 to 12 millimeter of lateral wall. This is a revision scenario. So we will keep more of the. Rajiv sir, huh? can you show us the posterior condyle? And if you, we can have a peep into the tunnel, whether the. Yeah, yeah, posterior. Yeah, uh, the just I will show you. Show you. Sida, sida karo. No. So what is the condition of your tunnel? Can we have the larger outside, inside picture? Inside, inside picture, inside picture. Just I will show you, before that, m making the reamer, I will just show you about that. And every time, yes, just now, yes. shiver, shiver. Just I will ah. show you, I will clear it bit, and I will show you. Okay, thank you. Chalo. Drape de do. So if, if you don't have the posterior wall, in this scenario, scenario how will you bail out, Sivam? What is this? Yeah. Huh? Putting suture disc on the lateral side. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is the only thing, or you can have to go a bit higher. Huh? You don't have any option, you have to go a bit higher. You can see that this, this is the original ACL tunnel. Yeah, you can see this is the original ACL tunnel. You can see here. Blue you, can see here this one also. you can see these fibers of the ACL which has been reconstructed. Speed saver cover. 3000 This is a big tunnel here. Let's see what is the condition. Now I'm putting it through the medial portal to see. Still I have not reamed. Just I have reamed the 4 millimeter tunnel, uh, 4 millimeter reamer. So again, This is the four millimeter wall. You can see the almost two millimeter of lateral wall is only the posterior wall is there with the four millimeter reaming. You can see here. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah. Visible. So this is, but 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 you can't because if you ream it with eight, eight or nine or ten, there will be a blowout of the posterior wall. Now you have to revise it. There are two options. Either you can go superior or you can go inferior. If you go inferior, your tunnel length will be too less. So second option is you can plan it to go a bit higher. All right. Four millimeter. Flexion. Flex. Extra anterior flexion. Thora sa patient ko niche le aao, flexion kar paayega. Leg, leg. Thora sa niche le lo, thora sa. Dono pair ko le. Sir, 
So any uh, advantage of using flexible reamer over this yeah, yeah, in you such condition? Yeah, sometimes you can use the flexible reamer also to go to the desired position. Now you can leave it straight. Yes. Is the flexible reamer available? I think it's not available. No. I think it is there with the striker system. Flex. This is your posterior wall. Rajiv sir, we are uh, having other case in the uh, next OT, so we are switching for a minute. We will all get right, all to you. Yeah, yeah, all by right. By that time, I will prepare my tunnel and I will show you after. Yeah. Yeah. AV people, just switch to the other OT. Tell me, you don't have a mind, you don't have a mind, you don't have a mind. Audio visual people, do you have a mind? Roshan sir. We are not ready with, we are just painting draping, you can continue. Okay. So Rajiv sir, you are again on live. I think there is some issue with the battery. Just they are changing the battery. All right, please. Sir. Water. So I think you don't have any option. Inferior part, it was too less. In the center part, the posterior wall was not there. So we had only option to go up. So okay. these are the three options normally here. So sometimes you have to go up also, which is a slightly mal position, but in the evasion scenario, you have to compromise with that. Because otherwise, you will, you don't, will, you will not have any hold of the graft also. All right. Yeah. So, so then now so you can see. In you that will. scenario, sir, will you do lateral extra-articular tenodesis when your graft is a bit more vertical? Uh, no, I observe? think I will show you the pivot at the end of the surgery, all right. Okay, and sir. if it is pre present there, it's all right. And how are the long-term results once you go uh, non-anatomical okay. to either… The trans technique was the treatment of choice for long duration, I think. Lot of the surgeon, even some of the European surgeons still they do trans you know. Transtibial, ACL yes. reconstruction. So it's not like that. It's a very poor technique. The only thing is that only uh, disadvantage is that your graft is a bit vertical. But if you see the Danish study, one of the Danish study, they have told this anatomical ACL reconstruction has more chance of re -tier. You have gone through that article, Danish article? Yeah. So just have you measure it? Yeah. So now we will measure this tunnel. First, in trans you are more vertical, I think, with anat and So now it's 40, all right, 30 up there. So you have a good lat posterior wall also here. So in this part, it, the posterior wall was not there. Yeah, I, I can read with because my graft up is 9.5, chalo, with window. So I can't take risk of drilling through the 2 millimeter posterior cortex. Yes, sir. Sir, so in this uh, scenario, what is the minimum length of the graft which one should have? Yeah, so uh, so uh, it should be at least nine centimeter. All right, for if you are putting it a bit higher, because your tunnel will be forty to forty-five. Again, it's forty here. Yeah, it's not forty-five. Yeah, so, no fix to cut. Denga, but I'm saying twenty. Lenge thirty. Tak chalo with hand. Hand se chalo. Go. Yes. Slow, slow, yeah, slow, slow, 20, 20, 30 tak jau, just 30 ke pehle, face, saber blade, so clear karne ke liye, saber blade hai, normal, 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 just, just wait, 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 jyada mat jau, lateral wall rakhna hai, normal saber blade to clean, achya deva, mein aise hi clean karta hoon, take hai, you can see now it's 30, just slow, slow, jau, bas, come back, ha, so 20 loop, all right, Make the graph. So you are going to use adjustable loop or? Fixed loop, I think 40. A 28 tunnel, I could have planned for adjustable loop. I think okay. for 40 tunnel, fixed loop is good enough. Okay, sir. So what is your preference? Adjustable loop or so fixed loop? I have loop? shifted in primary ACL, I have shifted to uh, uh, adjustable loop. Revision always I use the fixed loop. All right.
Why, why so because so because I don't want any you see adjustable loop two millimeter of loosening is there that has been reported with the Arthrex or Smith and Fe or uh, any of these and if you go for cyclic loading you can see also that two millimeter of loosening is there. Okay. Doctor Rajiv, uh, do you ever think of changing your fixation methodology in revision cases? Yeah, so you won't go for a personal fixation other than suspensory no, no. fixation. So here for f uh, tibial side, femoral side, I will go for suspensory fixation. All right, Please with a and for t TBL side, it's a aperture fixation. TBL side, we will go for a aperture fixation and with. So you can see here, here we have a good posterior cortex, this tunnel. You can see whole of the tunnel here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so because the inferior part, the tunnel was too low. In the central part, the posterior wall was not there. So I tried to go with a superior part, all right. So 360 degree of the tunnel view you can see. This posterior wall is intact, the superior and anterior wall is intact. So now I will make my TBL tunnel. So, so Rajiv again, sir, one question. Yeah, please. So, in a hypothetical situation, or maybe somebody who is trying, and if uh, like you, are, you have made a tunnel, and some part of the tunnel is communicating with the previous graft and it has violated, so how comfortable or can we go ahead with that? Yeah, see, so whenever I put my scope inside, you can see. If you have you used an aperture fixation there, uh, it's a suspensive fixation there, you have only a thread there, all right. Yes. And in the distal part also, it's a blessing and disguise, they have used a disc, all right. So I don't have to remove the screw also. So once I make my TBL tunnel, all right. Okay. So I will I will show you a, a scopy of the TBL tunnel also. And if it is merging in the, what is important, the, where the TBL tunnel comes over the TBL plateau, it is not important whether it merges in the distal part also, all right. Okay. So, Always, always, always try to put a post also because most of the time these tunnels are very loose. You can see now I am, so it's, I am keeping posterior to the TBL spine, go, yes, back, back, that's yeah. Curate. Six, so again, if you want to put it more posteriorly, I have asked him to rim with six, then I will see the tunnel, then I will rim it with nine. All right. So you can see this is my original graph. This is the ACL reconstruction ACL. You can see here. Yes, sir. So it's far away, almost far away. So in primary case, what is your TBL it's footprint a, yeah, landmark? Yeah, medial TBL spine drop point. All right, that is the most consistent landmark. Even if you see in revision scenario, it's very difficult to see the anterior one of the lateral or medial meniscus. But this landmark will be there. Haan tu par karke. Haan tu par? Yes, always. Between sisters. Haan tu par ko between and artery. Dr. Rajiv, Haan, yes. what are your indications for doing a notch plasty? Yeah, I will show you. So here you can see, there's a classical U-shaped notch with some amount of osteophytes. If after ACL reconstruction, I see yes, some amount of impingement is there in extension, you can go for notch plasty. But here it is a classical U type of notch. It's never a V type of notch here. All right. Yeah. So now I have put it there. Yes. So artery. So again, I want to be a bit posterior in this case because the tunnel was too anterior. See, 6 millimeter. Now I am pushing it posteriorly. And now I will ask him to remit with 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5
and you can see this is the old graft you can see oh, this is the old graft and this is a new tunnel you can see the old graft here the shining fibers of the old graft yes sir yeah and that is your new graft so in these cases even you have a very good purchase of this screw in the tbl tunnel never leave it like that always fix it and refix it with a aperture uh, with a uh, tbl post because most of the time it will get loose mask just loop rajiv sir we are switching to the second ot yeah yeah so just we will get back to you yeah so just i'm going to finish this case right now yes sir Dr. Roshan sir, ah, can you hello. hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, so this is around 50-year-old male who sustained a road traffic accident, who landed with MCL and ACL tear with partial PCL tear. Hello? Yes, yes sir, sir we, can, we, are here, we are listening to you. You, you can Please hear me? Ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I am just trying to remove the hematoma from his knee joint. Sometimes doing surgery in such patients is really frustrating because you may not get to see what you are doing initially. So don't get frustrated. Just remove the hematoma. Hey, suction, dekho jara bhai sab. Sir, in this multi-ligament scenario, when you, I mean, so what is the time period after that you uh, go for operation? Means as early as possible. My concept is, uh, I believe in a very uh, aggressive uh, mode of management for a multi-ligament. So even, even day to, one? Uh, even day one. But what people say that if you operate early, it leads to orthofibrosis. You should not do within six weeks or maybe four weeks. We should go for that is that is a different concept. Uh, four years back, we had a Dr. Rob Laprat who visited India, and we had a fantastic meeting in Goa. And uh, his approach is all go at first attempt. And he has proved it with his publications that that is the right approach. And worldwide, the concept of multi-ligament management has changed in last uh, five ten years. So initial training, which was there, that you. Wait till it becomes quiescent knee, then uh, that has changed. And first Any day or first few hours is better than uh, waiting. What is that? First day, first few hour, it is always better. In what is that? Hour. I didn't get you. Hey, so, suction knee kaam kar raha hai. Us mein bhi kaam nahi. No, maybe the multi-ligamentous scenario, but ah. I, I wonder, the bone is edematous because there is a trauma and then there is a edema in bone. That's so you okay, do not agree with this orthofibrosis? You know, concept. Arthrofibrosis is not related to bone, it's related to the uh, the ligaments. But your first chance is the best chance in multi-ligament injuries. Whatever repair you want to do for collateral or for cruciate or augmentation, the best is... Roshan was? Uh, yes. Uh, any concerns of uh, compartment kind of scenario? There, in, there in are concerns, so you have to keep a vigilant watch. See, as a surgeon, we always try to do risky surgeries, you know, supracondylar. There is always a concern if that there, there is, is a vascular injury in supracondylar. If there is a doubt, uh, put So, whenever you are in doubt, you think that compartment is going to become tense, no, no, you have to stop at that point. And many of times, the worldwide now, the approach towards multi-ligament is open as well, you know. Not necessary that you do arthroscopy. Hey, pump nahi chahiye bhai. Na bola tha na aapko. See, this is what happens. I told him not to use pump. He is just pushing air. You are tired, I think. Haan. Usko mein bola, categorically bola, nahi dalna hai pump. Sirf height de do usko bas. Using pressurized fluid will lead to early compartment. Correct. Yeah? So, this is what... Our problems are. 
unable to understand the uh, disease and then trying to rectify it. So, sir, what's the plan? Uh, plan okay. here is to do a diagnostic scopy. Can you see the medial tibiofemoral joint now? Yes, sir. So, this is the meniscus. Thoda hemarthrosis se aapko thoda taklif hoega, but there is no other option. Uh, and uh, this is the... Enlarge the inside picture, please. Larger inside picture. So you have to remove the hemarthrosis. Here you can see the uh, acute avulsion of ACL probably. So we will see if we can do a repair. Change the port. Akhilesh. Come here. Doctor Akhilesh. Yeah. Tunicate sahi hai na? Have you checked the tunicate? Is it working? Yeah, yeah, tunicate hai. Okay. Is it working? Just have a. Yes, yes, yes. Tunicate is working. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Tunicate is working. There is hem arthrosis secondary to trauma, yeah, okay. which usually is a very, very painful sometimes. Hey, give me 11 number. Sir, any role of putting epinephrine in the fluid in knee uh, scenario, this scenario? Ideally, I don't put it. Sir, any other way to clean the blood, hematoma? Usually, I don't put any uh, epinephrine because Sometime in the I don't days. want it to take any chances as far as his cardiovascular system is concerned. Sometime in early days, sir, I used to push the hydrogen peroxide. What is that? Hydrogen peroxide, 2 ml, 3 ml, hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. Yes, uh, it cleans I have very no easily and very uh, fast. Just 2 ml, hydrogen peroxide. Inside the door. Temporary pressure is a little bit bigger. Yes, sir. 250 kar do, chalo. 250 tha, kya? BP is more than that, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Sir, patient was on hypertensive medicine. And clopidril yeah. has been start for the last three days. Acha clopidril pe tha kya patient? Yeah. But last Aray, three days has been start. Yeah. To pehle kyun nahi aap bolte hai sab chiz? Abhi bolke kya fayda induction ke baad? Huh? Aisa nahi karne ka na? Koi liya tha history uska? To malum tha to bolne ka na at least. So what is 10, sir? And clopidil, you stop uh, five days? At least minimum seven days. Seven days, okay. Uh, is it related with the uh, PTINR? No. Yes, it could be related to PTINR. I don't know now. Rajiv sir, you are on live, so yeah, yeah. kindly show us. So, so, I, so it's a 10 millimeter graft you can see, it's a tight graft, almost 10 millimeter. Right. Right. So, huh? what is important in this region, you know, try to be more medially so that you have an oblique graft. It's ideally, it should we have been more oblique here, but I think uh, the, uh, as I show you, there were some issues with the tunnel position there, so we shifted 5 millimeter above, and you can see this is almost 9.5, uh, 10 millimeter graft here. And now, you were asking about the notch, uh, notch plasty, so I will show you, even in this position also, in this position also, you don't have impingement of the graft, you can see here, the anterior graft, you can see, these are the fibers of the old ACL graft, all right, 
and that was the cause of failure you can see it was Hello, it was just impinging with every extension over the intercondylar notch but the new graft you see it's inside it's not impinging so you don't need notch plasty in this case but if i need after that you are having some amount if after reconstruction you see that yes these osteophytes are hitting your graft you can go for a notch plasty here dr rajiv yeah there is a question uh, in post operative acl reconstructions we do hear some crepitus from the knee yes it's very common so scenario so yes. three things you should explain to your, all your patients so after acl aclr there will be some amount of numbness in the medial aspect of the knee there will be some amount of clicking sound and there there will be a bit of wasting of the quadriceps which is very normal so that they will not come out with this question in your follow up so pre op you just counsel them that these are the common normal finding most of the patients have so these are due to cyclop formation there so you have some click there because you have anterior and revision scenario the chances of cyclop formation is more so as i have fixed it with the aperture fixation here i am searching yes. for a screw so because i always try to do a supplementary fixation here also in the uh, tbl side and otherwise you don't use supplementary fixation on tbl primary, side primarily i don't do so there uh, once they will bring a screw i will put fix it over the proximal part of the tibia with a either if uh, 4.5 minute you can have give me a malleolar screw also if you don't have post malleolar screw also that you can give there is a question regarding what degree you tighten your graft yeah so what degree you fix your graft the, this patient has a almost neutral to hyper extension so i tighten it in the neutral position if the patient has a neutral knee tight it in 30 degree of flexion so this this is very good question neutral to hyper extension knee or hyper lax knee try to tighten it in, in hyper extension or extension of the knee if you have a normal neutral knee with no hyper extension tight it in 30 degree of flexion and this will do this will do, this will also do. thank and you so, what happen and sometimes you can put a screw also here in the femoral side also for uh, uh, correct so suspension with a screw so i will see if i can do it i will put a screw here and i will post here so that will be my supplementary fixation for revision scenario all right thank you you can see uh, dr, uh, dr. raji just one question yeah. why this wasting does not improve after your acl reconstruction or any acl reconstruction even in spite of a lot of physiotherapy this wasting continues for yes, a very yes, long yes. time yes 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 so most of the time what happens this patient comes to a plate and there is a gross wasting of the quadriceps and even after two or three months of rehabilitation if there is no uh, you can see that the, the build of the quadriceps uh, is very difficult it's not coming back you can go for electro stimulation that is recommended therapy for gross wasting of quadriceps anyways fantastic surgery dr rajiv thank you so much thank sir, you thank uh, you rajiv sir shwetab here one more question yeah. how will that the is. rehab differ in this case from always as slow, compared always to slow, primary right always slow so always in such scenario i prefer for slow rehabilitation and this patient has some amount of grade 1 laxity of the pcl also so i will rehab him in prone position sir one so, more question yeah. uh, when you decide for lateral extraarticular procedure intra op so, or it's a pre op decision it's a intra op if you see intra operatively you can see externally now i am doing the pivot you can see the pivot is negative there is no internal rotation you can see initially it was positive now th there is no you can see the pivot is negative so in such scenario i think don't need extra articular procedure it's not like that revision acl you need extra articular procedure so guide word for this so i will put a, a supplementary fixation here i can you can see i think you can shift to the your roshan ot yes sir no, thank you I'm sir here. Yeah. it's a lovely operation yeah. thanks a lot yeah flex karo ek isko yahan bhi dekhna sir we are switching to the uh, next ot put switch roshan was chal to ne yes i am so i will uh, so tell you what i have done till now yes we have just done a diagnostic round of the knee joint the acl is completely torn i'll just show you in, in a minute because there is a problem with the i don't know somehow the bleeding has been uncontrolled bleeding here so so this is medial tibio femoral joint can you see this yes yes yeah so medial tibio femoral joint hold this hold this like this like, like this and uh, you can see here the uh, root can we have the larger inside yeah yes Thank yes you.
can you see this root? Yes, sir. Root is intact here, you know. There is no root damage. Yes, sir. We can appreciate that. Okay. Yes. So this is the medial meniscus root, the posterior horn, the body. There is nothing is damaged here. But what is important here? Hey, पानी खत्म हो दूसरा खोलो ना. और दूसरा जो खत्म हुआ चेंज करके रखो ना. Can you see it here? So this is the root, and this is the uh, ramp lesion. If is if there a if there is any. Hello. Yes, sir. We we can see that. Yeah. So there is no ramp lesion. Yes. There is no root lesion. This is the meniscus root, the posterior horn medial meniscus yes, root, and this is the uh, articular cartilage. Yes, you can see here there is a femoral condyle damage, the articular cartilage damage, yes. which is there secondary to, to yes, his injury, and uh, femoral avulsion of medial femoral uh, medial uh, uh, medial collateral ligament. Can you see this here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, so. This is the hallmark of my diagnostic scopy here. The PCL looks intact, although there is a partial tear has been reported on MRI. I can't see any uh, tear here. Just I'll probe you, uh, probe, uh, probe the PCL for you. Sir. Probe, probe, probe. Can you see this PCL? Yes, sir. We can see an. It's a, it's a very tight yeah, PCL. Tight looking PCL. Yeah. There is no PCL injury per, per se. This is the PCL here. Yeah. Yeah. So this complete fibers are. Uh, there is some fibers which are, yes. you know, lax. Chhodo dila chhodo. But that is because I we have hold it in anterior uh, direction. Some fibers are damaged here. Can you see this? Yes, sir. This fibers, yes, sir. but majority the uh, bundle is very much intact. Yes, sir. So that is why patient doesn't have a gross PCL laxity, but he has gross anterior laxity and gross medial joint opening. Okay. So lateral. We'll just examine the lateral joint now. So our plan will be just to do an ACL with MCL. Out of that, MCL is going to be the extra articular repair plus augmentation with the help of free semi-T graph sir. and simple ACL reconstruction with the help of again free semi-T graph. So we are going to take a semi-T graph from other side for this side ACL. Sir, in acute femoral in, uh, avulsion scenario of MCL, uh -huh. you ever try repair with the uh, fiber tape bracing kind of? Internal bracing. No, I didn't get you. What is that? So, uh, in an, in uh, insertional injuries of uh, MCL from femoral side. Uh -huh. So you repair the femoral insertion. Yes. And we reinforce with tape only. You don't. Uh, uh, that is possibility. We have not opened it. Correct. So uh, we have just kept it option open. The Lubovitz has described uh -huh. this method. Uh -huh. So I have kept all the options open. First, let me see the uh, the. Uh, graph first okay so this yes, is sir. the uh, injury on the medial side can you see this Vivek? Yes, sir. Vinay? yes sir we can see yeah so there is a avulsion of this area sir correct okay yeah so we'll try to repair it with the help of suture anchors and augment it the medial femoral condyle has got damage because of the injury and this is the uh, level of pcl you can see here there is no instability, posterior instability. There is only Agreed. anterior instability. Can you see this? Agreed, sir. Yes. Yeah? Yes, sir. So there is no PCL instability. There is only anterior instability and the medial collateral instability. Okay? okay. So I will proceed with the graft harvest. In case you want to go ahead with the lecture, you can go ahead. No or more lecture left, sir. No more lecture. So you want to see all the surgery? Okay, nice. no problem. Uh, skin knife. And you are doing a very brave job, sir. Brave? Yeah. It's yeah it, was, it, it was bleeding so much and very beautifully you have shown uh, every corner mm. of the knee. See, you know... So there is a you, question you, regarding landmark for uh, you, putting a season. Have you, have you read the Lau Belly, Lau Belly book? Yes, sir. There is, a, there is a sentence in first page of Lau Belly. <laughs> it says the ideal criteria of a surgeon yeah. is Don't know. eagle's eye. Lion's heart and lady's finger. Why eagle's eye? Because he has to be vigilant. Why lady's finger? He has to be soft. And why lion's heart? Because he has to face the bleeding. <laughs> A surgeon who can't face the bleeding can't call, ca call himself as a surgeon. So for uh, anybody who is interested in graft harvest, I'll just uh, 15 number. 
I'll just show you, you have to palpate, roll your finger onto the hamstring. This is very important. You can palpate. So the landmark, finger. somebody, uh, there is a question regarding this, landmark. This is, this is tibial there. tuberosity at the level of tibial tuberosity. You have to just palpate. You can roll your, roll your finger. The most palpable structure is the gracilis. And the uh, important structure, the flat structure is semiti. Any okay. precaution uh, that you take in harvesting the uh, hamstring graft when there is lax MCL? Uh, this is opposite leg. Okay. So, if you are har harvesting from the ipsilateral limb? Uh, the ipsilateral I have preserved because I want to do augmentation, you know. In case I have to use the graft for augmentation, I have preserved those semi, uh, semi T and gracilis. Okay. Sir, you have taken a uh, longitudinal skin incision, so... Uh, I usually take long longitudinal only. So, any difference in your this thing, uh, injury, hydrogenic injury to the saphenous nerve? Uh, because that see, you, usually because of retraction, you get the iatrogenic injury. And no, no incision can save your uh, iatrogenic injury to cutaneous now. The eventually they all recover within some time. Uh, so I don't think so. That is a very big problem as far as ACL reconstruction is concerned. Right angle bada pakad na Badawala right angle pakad. Deep. So sometimes you have a confusion which one is semi which one is hamstring. So what you should do is you should just pull it. If it is creating a dimple here. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we are getting you, sir. Uh, so if it is creating a dimple there, that means it is the uh, semi -t. You know, because semi uh, say keeps the facial, uh, gives the attachment to the uh, sartorius fascia. So when you pull it, it will move. Chalo, 15 number, give me 15 number. And this is like a mobile window, you know, two centimeter, you have to keep m moving it so that you can get a better extent for your release. And sometimes you can take a good amount of tissue from the periostem as well. Can you see this? I'm going little high anteriorly so that I can take out little bit of periosteal tissue. So that is my semity, more flat and structure. Then there are certain vanculi. Can you see it here? Venculi? Yeah, we can appreciate. Appreciate. Okay, so unless you knock those venculi, your graft, you won't be able to take out your graft in it. Remember, there can be iatrogenic uh, auto amputation of the graft. So any surgeon who wants to learn has to be well acquainted with other graft techniques like BTB, quadriceps, or peroneus longus in case of iatrogenic auto amputation. And don't be... Uh, don't feel bad, even a master surgeon can have the iatrogenic amputation of the graft. It has happened in everybody's hand, right? Somebody can close that. We will start preparing it. Hey, uh, close that. Close Kardosko. So you can harvest only one graft? Uh, I am going to make a quadruple graft here. Okay. So what my philosophy is, just a 15 millimeter graft in the tunnel on femoral side. ACL with MCL. So, okay. Dr. Rajiv has come here. Rajiv Dada is probably our ugly sarkar. So, my humble request to all UP guys. Vinay. Yes, sir. To hum, aap hamare star pracharak ho. Rajiv ke liye. Star pracharak. Star pracharak. Okay. Uh, UP aapke hawale kar dete aur jo UP sambhalta hai aage jaake home minister banta hai line mein rakhna <laughs> Rajiv uh, barabar na so <laughs> so next home minister of IOA will be Dr Vinay Pandey sir Nagpur Maharashtra mein hai lekin 
अरे वो बोल देंगे यार नागपुर का कितना चिंता मत लेना सो दिस इज द सिंपल प्रिपरेशन वॉट यू डू इज टेक अ ग्राफ चेक फॉर द लेंथ यूजली अवर ग्राफ लेंथ इज समेर अराउंड थर्टी एक मिनट बाबा चश्मा दिखता नहीं मेरे को देख कितना है ये देख ना जरा ये कितना ही है ये तीस है क्या हाँ अराउंड थर्टी ओके हेलो यस सर ये अभी क्या नहीं है सो थर्टी अरे बटन ये खोल अल्ट्रा बटन अल्ट्रा बेड खोल सो व्हाट आई डू इज आई एम गोइंग टू लूप ऑन वन साइड लिटिल बिट क्विक ग्राफ प्रिपरेशन पकड़ थोड़े एलिस After uh, putting my ACL graft, I will start the MCL repair and re uh, augmentation. Are you close enough? Close enough. This is it. Graft level. Surgery. Shake chilli. Huh? Uh, Grow bada hai na? Okay. Idhar, 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 idhar. So it is a simple graft preparation. Hey, another ultra, ultra bread. और अल्ट्रा बटन कॉल है सो विनय व्हाट आई डू इज आई जस्ट कीप 15 मिलीमीटर ग्राफ्ट इन द फिमोरल टनल अनदर 20 मिलीमीटर इनसाइड द जॉइंट एंड अनदर 20 टू 25 मिलीमीटर इनसाइड द टीबीआर टनल सो टीबीआर यू डू इंटरफेरेंस फिक्सेशन यस टीबीआर आई ऑलवेज डू इंटरफेरेंस फिमोर आई ऑलवेज डू सस्पेंसरी बिकॉज़ आई डोंट वांट बंजी इफेक्ट ऑन बोथ साइड so my concept is little different than so uh, even if your graft is not outside the tunnel on the tbl side usually it does you know okay. because uh, uh, 7.5 mm graft 15 mm or 18 mm will go in the femoral side femoral tunnel uh, 20 to 25 will go in joint and the rest all is for tbr so around 30 is for tbr and your uh, angle of drilling tbi is 55 or 50 usually i will make a smaller tunnel So, 50. हाँ, 50. ए अनदर अल्ट्रा 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 ब्रेड अल्ट्रा ब्रेड अल्ट्रा ब्रेड अल्ट्रा बटन फटाफट खोल ए खोल ए पकड़ दे सो आई थिंक ए सी एल इज अ वेरी फैसिनेटिंग सर्जरी विनय एवरीबडी हैज अ डिफरेंट वे ऑफ डूइंग इट माय वे इज डिफरेंट एन अदर्स एंड ऑल आर राइट नो बडी इज रॉन्ग राइट हेलो यस सर so if somebody in bhu is doing different way somebody in kgmu is doing different way somebody in apex is doing different way uh, acl is one surgery which can be do it do it in a multiple ways right yes sir okay chalo button kidhar ultra button sir acl with mcl injury what is your criteria that you decide pre op that you are going to repair this mcl or after fixation sometimes you feel medial for this case for this case uh, i was unaware what was the injury i just saw the patient when patient was induced so for this case my decision making was very simple because it's a live surgery patient was there and that patient needed a surgery so we decided otherwise my uh, evaluation of uh, uh, vicryl my evaluation of acl reconstruction along with mcl is always secondary to the instability evaluation In fact, this patient before we went live, I took a CM, and I'm a, under the image intensifier, I have recorded a vicryl. Then, brother, under the image intensifier, I have recorded the instability. Our anesthetist will watch for it. Okay. Yes. So we have done a evaluation of instability. This knee is unstable in flexion as well as extension. Probably he has got damage to both, the damage to. Uh, pol as well pol as well as the uh, superficial mcl ligament so he will need reconstruct repair not reconstruction repair of this ligaments so i'm just going to take two stitches on the proximal end of the uh, graft so that my graft remains circular because i'm pushing it in a circular tunnel plus this stays as a marker cut 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 okay okay sir so just two stitches that's it and as i told you i don't want to go more than this uh, ligament inside my femoral tunnel 
it is not needed. In fact, uh, now people have realized that healing happens at the mouth of the tunnel, not the inside tunnel. In fact, inside tunnel, there is always fluid which remains inside and which doesn't allow the healing. The healing doesn't come from inside tunnel. It is just at the mouth of the tunnel. The sharpest fiber, a cut, 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 cut. The collagenization, the ligamentization, all happens at inside. Uh, give me the uh, femoral zig and put a vancomycin. I always soak this graft in vancomycin powder. Vancomycin sizer. So there's a question that you uh, prepare your graft cut. always by yourself? Are, uh, <laughs> our graft is many times prepared by our fellows. Nice. So you know, the ACL becomes very small surgery in my institute. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, kitna hai? Mere ko dikhta nahi bhai. Ek kitna hai? Seven. Seven, seven se nahi aara na? Ek kitna hai? Seven point five. Seven point five. Eight. Ek kitna hai? Eight point five. The graph size is eight point five, right? Okay, chal. Vanco mycin powder me duba de usko. Give me femoral guide. So I always use the femoral zig for my. Uh, Ideal femoral tunnel. So you dip your graft in vancomycin. I uh, vancomycin powder. Huh? I powder. don't use. I, would, I don't use solution because solution. What happens is it increases the size. Okay. So I don't use uh, solution. I always dip it in a vancomycin powder uh, with the gauze paste. So what's your take on ACL repair if it is just evolves from uh, the usually just like this case? usually usually I do uh, repair. No doubt about it, but in a much younger people, okay. not the elder people. And this patient being a multi-ligament injury, he needed an intervention sometime or the other. If you leave ACL as it is and do only MCL, knee will be anteriorly unstable. Okay. So if I can address the, both the issues at one go, nothing like it. Yeah? Yes. Yes, sir. So that is my philosophy as far as multi-ligament along with ACL is concerned. If it is PCL, MCL, ACL, ACL is my last priority. Yeah. Because PCL is my first priority, second priority is MCL, last priority is ACL. A suction band hoga bhai, a suction. Eight point five ka ye de, or rimbar de, femoral emmer. Femoral aiming device. Femoral aiming device. Yeah. So I always use femoral aiming device. I take the posterior referencing. Can you see this? Yes. Yeah. So my uh, this condyle uh, support will go behind the femoral condyle so that my tunnel comes here. Plus I'm going to bend the knee. Hold this, hold this, hold this, hold this, hold this. Aisa nahi, aisa nahi. Bend, elevate and bend. So always elevate and then bend the knee. Support it with the, your thigh, so that it becomes very easy. Yeah. What is Chalo, the size of offset you are taking? It's uh, it is, I think, 7 mm offset. Hey, hold this, hold this. Pair niche gir jayega. Pair ko support karna hai. Nee nee, mere ha pair 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 pe support karna. Chal drill drill fast. Can't you take the PCL? Uh, sorry, sorry, the nee, nee, stump. Nikal 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 bahar nikal. Mm -hmm. What is that? Ye, dusra drill nahi hai. Yehi hai tumhare bas. Ye cannulated nahi hai, bhai sab. तो इस इस अच्छा ऐसा डाला तुमने ओह हो हो सॉरी हाँ I didn't I हाँ सॉरी सर मैं I I thought he is using non cannulated drill तो well I mean rather than बस 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 आगे आगे waste passing the time in putting that jig yes can't you use the stump only the femoral stump which is there so this goes in femoral stump only look at this this is a stump only ना Okay, chalo. I, I'll just show you once the thing is clear. Drill. Are man man hai kya? Oh. Chalo, jaane jaane. Dono cortex. Gaya kya? So when do you use a variable loop device? It is always or? Always, always, always. I always use a variable loop. Nikal de usko. A depth gauge. Nikal, nikal. See, usually these tunnels are very small. You know, the femoral uh, tunnels of ACL. Anatomical position, when you bend 120 degree, these tunnels are very, very small. They are unlike the transtibial technique where tunnels used to be 50, 45. Remember, anybody is doing? Yeah. So, all transtibial, uh, sure. the tunnels used to be very, very small tunnels, uh, big tunnels, whereas these tunnels are very, very small. Here, you can see here, somewhere around 30. How much is it? 
ये थर्टी है ना हाँ ट्वेंटी फाइव नहीं ये ट्वेंटी एट है शायद ट्वेंटी एट राइट गिव मी गार्डन व्हाट अकॉर्डिंग टू यू इज़ द बेस्ट एडजस्टेबल डिवाइस बेस्ट ऑफ कोर्स सर यूजिंग विच मैन सर यूजिंग सो यू वांट टू रिटर्न टिकट यू रिमेम्बर दिस यस यस बट बेस इज़ येट टू कम एंड दैट विल बी डिजाइन बाय समबडी फ्रॉम बीएचयू मेरा विश्वास है मेक इन इंडिया विल किल ब्रिटिशर्स स्मिथ एंड नेफ्यू इज़ अ ब्रिटिश कंपनी but yes i love smith and nephew in fact my yeah. my son's name is smith because may maybe because you are use the jig that is why the tunnel come short normally the tunnel what sometime we do is around 40 so, so you know crackers point you, you catch you, up with the jig you, you know hey thoda sa uh, daba dena pressure mat dena daba dena sirf ek hath se daba dena pressure mat dena bhai mere ha okay chalo drill ड्रिल 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 ये दबा ना प्रेशर दे जरा हाँ बस चल बिना प्रेशर कैसे दबाते वो वो टेक्निक अलग है विनय बस 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 उसके लिए तेरे को थाईलैंड जाना पड़ेगा ट्रेनिंग के लिए वो ट्रेनिंग इंडिया में नहीं होता है ओके हाँ चल आउट के सो दैट ट्रेनिंग इज डिफरेंट आउट 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 so i don't want my tunnel to be larger size give me ethi ethylon ethi bond ethi bond de do bhai nikal do ethi ethylon de do bhai thoda table ka height bada de needle kaat ke dena bhai kaata hua any question You always use leg uh, leg holder for no, no, this. No, no, I don't use leg holder. My leg is hanging. So you know why I do this? Because in case I have to do PCL, in case I have to do something, uh, it gives me all 360 degree axis. You understand, Vinay? Yeah, yeah. So I have been trained in this fashion, so I do it in this way. If you are trained in different way, you can do it different way. That's not an issue. No, I also use leg holder only. Uh, I don't use leg holder. My knee is completely hanging here. There is no leg holder. There is just a uh, uh, support on lateral side here, so I can take my knee anywhere. Hey, तुम ये टोनी के छोड़ा ना? अरे छोड़ दो ना यार. टोनी के टीवी वाला रिलीज़. वो वाला रिलीज़ कर दो. वो वाला रिलीज़ कर दो भाई. So sometimes operating in such patients is always difficult because your vision is very compromised, but. You're doing great, sir. What is your anatomical landmark for femoral tunnel when you are not able to see the stump? Uh, see, there are two type of offsetting. One was anterior offsetting. Second is posterior offsetting. So when I am unable to see the posterior condyle, the posterior margin of posterior condyle, then I use the anterior referencing. That is the resident's reach. Hello. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. and if i'm able to see the posterior condyle then i use offset this so you know both both ways it's like a uh, uh, offset used in tkr you know because in Chal. chronic acl we were neither able to see the resident trees mm. and in that scenario how to go uh, it tip tip hai na ki elbow hai sir elbow elbow hai ruk 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 can you elaborate your tbl yeah yeah point. tbl this is the lateral meniscus anterior horn can you see this yes sir yeah? inside picture larger uh, inside picture larger this is the uh, lateral i'll remove this part because probably this is a calcified anterior horn of meniscus lateral meniscus uh, this is the anterior horn of lateral meniscus this is anterior horn of medial meniscus can you see this yes sir yes sir yes. yeah this is anterior horn of lateral meniscus this is anterior horn of medial meniscus in between two remember acl is not a round structure here acl is a curvilinear structure it goes like this okay yes. so we have to mimic a uh, anatomy of a curvilinear structure in a round manner so that is why we have to take some other precautions so my entry will come out at the incision marna padega udhar vertical thoda idhar marna ye baju marna mere ko mcl bhi karne ka ha mar lamba marna mcl bhi karne ka apne ko vertical vertical aur aur bada upar le upar le upar upar lo aur aur jana na बस चल पुश 
Okay. So we are using elbow guide out drill and we'll come in that remaining stump of ACL. Uh, somebody was asking me what is the role of uh, primary repair of ACL? Yes, sir. I'll just show you the uh, type of ligament uh, part remaining after acute trauma and probably that is the reason why ACL never heals. So, I, I don't know uh, what is the real, real philosophy of ACL repair, but nowadays there is a big craze of ACL repair. Uh, I totally agree. Sometimes they are industry driven. But uh, scientific value of ACL repair is again uh, doubt. So, you just give me the probe. Right. Uh, uh, what, what, probe, what? probe, 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 probe. Huh, 8.5. Can I ask you a question? Yes, yes, please. please. So because out of all the things of yeah. the So you, you, you look at the quality of this ligament here. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes even if you are right in decision, the tissue is not right. Surgeon is right. Surgeon is the taken a right decision of doing the surgery. But tissue may not be that right. They say that the position yes. for yes. the yes. ideal position for the ACL is stump on tibia uh -huh. out of four points. That is lateral to the medial eminence, yes. posterior to the anterior yes. half of lateral meniscus, yes. posterior half of the stump that is left, or 7 millimeter anterior to PCL. Okay. Out of all these four points, which is the one accurate that you, would, you take all the time in your clinical practice or you are confident yes. that? That is very point. important, sir. My, I believe in meniscus, which is there as my reference guide rather than. Uh, Aram se, Aram se. Out. I believe that meniscus is a better reference because both the anterior horn of lateral meniscus and anterior horn of medial meniscus are there to guide me. What happens when I am trying to find out the notch or eminence? It is very difficult to find those bony anatomy. Chalo, do. A retriever do. Graph de do, bhai. Graph ko mark karo. 28 pe mark karo. It's very pe. important to appreciate this anterior tibial tunnel doesn't impinge. Because of low femoral tunnel. Yes. Now this, it looks very anterior, but then it doesn't impinge. So what happens is, I'll show you. Extend. A instrument, a kuch. Give me. Yeah, Roshan, Rajiv here. Rajiv, so, me, Yeah, medial tibial spine drop point, I think uh, you are a bit posterior. Uh, so uh, do you prefer the anterior horn, the lateral meniscus more commonly than the bony landmark? Uh, I prefer entry horn of lateral Latin meniscus as a more, more, more as All a right, landmark. Yeah. Hey, a graph, dena, bhai. Oi, to kya karte? Kaam mar kya? 28 pe kya na? So we are going to use adjustable loop. Hold this, hold this, hold this, hold this, hold this. Adjustable loop. This is adjustable loop device by Smith and nephew. And this device will be used. Okay, so now Smith and Nephew guy will come there and he will try to pull it out. Lere bhai, mere. Ek minute, ek minute. Dono, dono equal kar. So you don't use fixed loop devices? I don't use. I mean, oh, dono nahi kichne ka. Ek 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 kichne ka. Haan, haan, kich. Kich. Bas, 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 bas. So you, you uh, in these devices, flip, do you flip, flip, observe flip. from medial portal to see the flipping yeah, or it's like marking only? Sometimes, sometimes I observe. I'll just tell you when. Karo, karo, flip karo, huh? Okay, I'll just show you from here. I'm constantly checking the calf, huh? calf for my compartment. Uh, like yeah, this. That's yeah? Yes, so yes. this is the mark. Can you see this? Yes. And probably this button is gone in. And I'm able to pull it down. Can you see this? Yes. Yeah? yeah. So now there is a shortening. Uh, he, somebody has to shorten the loop. Chalo, shorten the loop. So any word or advice regarding this uh, button going beyond the fascia? Beyond? Beyond the fascia. So somebody pulling very yeah. aggressively, it can go beyond uh, the fascia and that's a problem. Yes, yes. So any so, word of caution? So, so uh, just a minute. Huh? I, I'll tell you what. Uh, you should not pull it beyond the marking. You yeah. can see here the yeah, yeah. adjustable marking yes. reached and my graft is just at the tunnel, the mouth of my tunnel. Okay. Huh. So you are asking about the uh, somebody crossing the 
tensor facial ATA and going yeah, out yeah. of the IT band, right? Mm. So, yes, there are two ways to bail the, first how to prevent it and second how to bail out. Bail out is very simple, take an incision and adjust your button again back, that is bail out. How to prevent it, don't pull aggressively, always keep, see at the key steps one has to be very, very careful. If you are not very careful at the key steps, your assistants will do uh, great damage to your reputation. Yep, hold this, hold this. So this is the ACL and somebody was asking whether there is an impingement, full extension, yes. right? Yes, sir. No impingement, right? Fantastic. So we'll go ahead with the MCL now because I don't want to fix ACL without my intact MCL. Okay, so arthroscopic part is over. Now we'll go ahead with the open part. And I'll just check whether this calcific loose body, can you see this? Yes. yes sir. Probably this is from the lateral meniscus and that is a sign, early sign of degeneration. Sometimes these anvil osteophytes are early sign of degeneration and especially the people in 40s and 50s, they always come with this. So whenever possible, you can excise them and remove them. Now we'll proceed with the MCL, right? Any yes, question sir. till now? So when you're putting screw in the tibia, sometimes yes. uh, pushing too aggressively can cause tibia to become lax after putting the screw. So suppose you put in the screw and you find that the tibia, the, the graft is lax, then what do you do? I'm not fixing my graft no, not now. Not now, otherwise. Uh, when, when? Suppose in a case, uh, you uh. are fixing a tibia and somebody is pushing the screw in very, very tight kind of... Uh, no, no. See, it's an arbitrary situation. It's not coming. It's very hard to imagine. Skin knife, skin knife fast. The other words, what he wants to know, I, I don't know, I want to know. When you try to put your screw, do you pull the TBI interiorly and uh, so that your graft doesn't become lax later on? Uh, I don't do it anteriorly. Because you are repairing, you are reconstructing. So you like can you go to the, the opposite TBI? side so we can see the one? Either say, oh, cameraman. तू यार क्या शादी में आया क्या इधर से आजा ना तो मैरिज का रिकॉर्डिंग करते ऐसा दिखा दे एक जगह बैठ जाते जैसे दुल्हा दुल्हन सब आएगा खड़े होंगे उधर से आजा ना भाई उधर से घूम के आजा ना अरे स्टेरिलिटी का कुछ लिहाज रख यार जस्ट अभी नहीं ना वी आर एडजस्टिंग कैमरा यस सर सो इन द बिटवीन I am trying, trying to find uh, normal anatomy of ACL here. So, ACL, MCL. Uh, MCL, MCL, sorry. I am trying to find the normal anatomy of MCL which has got damage. So, wherever it is damage, like damage to the superficial MCL, damage to the POL, we'll try to repair it. In case it is irreparable, we'll augment it. The plan is very simple, either repair or augment. Anything else? Thank you. Sir? Sir, your incision landmark? Medial side, right? MCL, no? What is it? Medial collateral ligament, medial epicondyle, medial incision. So, how to prevent, uh, in prevent injury to the saphenous vein and uh, intrapatellar branch saphenous nerve? Any tips? How to prevent is very difficult. See, you have to do a sharp dissection as far as possible and try to be very reasonable. Otherwise, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, be... Can you explain what a structure you are... Uh, what is that? This is the superficial fascia. Okay. Or medial... Yes, still So you can see here something bulging out. Okay. Yeah, this we can is. appreciate that. Uh, so you have to dissect in layers and repair in layers. Stilly forcep. Stilly forcep. Stilly scissor, huh? Stilly forcep. Forcep ke saath de na bhai. Can you see this here? Yes, sir. Yeah? 
So a contused part is beneath the fascia. So unless you dissect the fascia, you won't be able to see a contused part. Can you see this here? Yes. So this is the contused part. Eight minute, eight minute. अरे अच्छा वाला राइट एंगल देना भाई साहब। Can you see here again? Yes, we can appreciate that. Contused part? Yeah, yeah. So this needs to be repaired. Probably on MCL side, especially the femoral area, repair works far better than reconstruction. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, unless it is in this acute scenario, definitely uh, acute, works well. Acute scenario, you can get better. In fact, uh, the uh, Spanish author, Doctor uh, Lays, Manuel Lays, he has published his data on uh, MCL augmentation along with repair, and he has shown wonderful result of repair. You Even uh, Mukesh Latta has uh, published regarding chronic yes, yes. injuries and yes, yes. he has repaired as well. Mukesh has recently published. So India is shining, you know. Right angle. So, you know, this repair, MCL repair, since MCL is a bigger footprint, one can do single row repair like what uh, usually we do in rotator cuff or you can do double row repair. Vinay? Yes, sir. So, MCL double row repair is also uh, described. Yeah, that has published as well. Yeah. But that is more for the TBL side rather than femoral side. TBL side, femoral side. If footprint is good, you can do double row repair. If your footprint is very poor, then you have to augment. See, it's, it, it all depends where is your uh, tear. See, this is exactly at joint line. Can you see this? Yes, sir. This is exactly at the joint line. This is joint line. This is my ACL tunnel. This is joint line. So my da uh, damaged tissue is exactly at the joint line. This is mid-substance rupture of the MRI picture is not very great, but this is mid-substance rupture of MCL. This is not okay. femoral, only femoral. Sir, can you show us the uh, femoral footprint? What is that? F femoral footprint of MCL here. Yeah, yeah. Just I'm just extending the. I am just trying to dissect it out so that I can do a better repair. Can you we see can it see. now? Yeah, we can yes, see. I'm yeah. Sure. yeah so, yes, uh, give me Alice, give me Alice. So, this is the rupture. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Correct, sir. Yeah? So, why I have kept the semi-T hamstring intact is because then I can augment my repair. Can you see this now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah? Yeah. Give me a scoop. And can you feel the medial epicondyle where exactly yeah. so you can feel and, it now? And, and if you see, the tear is not only this fashion, it has gone like this also. So, uh, give me another Alice. So, this is superficial MCL and that is POL. Can you see this? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Can you feel the so, medial epicondyle? Yeah, I can feel. I can feel the medial epicondyle. Just a minute. Can you see this? Yes, sir. So, sir. so this is POL yeah, yeah. and this is MCL. Correct. I'll just show you the stability here. Hey, hold this. Correct. Don't don't pull it. Huh? Just hold this. Hold this. Hold this. Bo sure. Both both. Uh, ek tu pakad, ek tu pakad. Ek. That's why it was opening in extension see, as well as flexion. See, ha. This is opening in extension. Can you see this? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. So this, unless you repair, this is not going to come back. Fantastic so, demonstration. I think, uh, Vinay, yes, sir. Uh, Rob Laparadka meeting tha na, the meeting was fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we are no all, doubt about it, sir. All have learned so much about so MCA, much, PLC. You know, correct. that was a fantastic uh, yeah, way yeah. of presenting it. The, he has demonstrated the uh, surgical dissection on cadavers. Yeah, that yeah, was a was fabulous wonderful, meeting. Sir. Wonderful meeting. Wonderful. Give me a scoop. Hey, anchor khol re, bhai. So, here is my medial epicondyle. Yes, sir. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, this, this is my medial epicondyle. So, Lapra says 8 millimeter superior and 8 millimeter, uh, 4 millimeter yeah, posterior. So, this is my medial epicondyle and you can see the MCL is going beyond. 
Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it is going beyond. So whatever is description is right. Hey, give me anchor. Give me two titanium anchor. Multifix bad me. Two titanium anchor fast. So what? This scoop de na. Itna bada. So you have to see the articular area because my anchors are going to be very close here. Yeah, yeah. Very close to the articular area. Yes, yeah, sir. And uh, uh, Vinay, yeah, repairing uh, MCL doesn't require any great skills. This is a yeah. very common soft tissue repair. Correct. It is aisa nahi hai kuch bada rocket science hai. So yeah, yeah. probably everybody in audience can do it. Yes, yes. So tomorrow you should not get any MCL in your clinic. <laughs> All will be operated by other people. Vinay. You will advance the POL, correct? Yeah, I will advance my POL like this and I will advance the MCL like this. Can you see this? Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, chalo. And I'm going to do double row repair. I have to spend little time for debriding the uh, loose soft tissue because they are not going to be of any help. Forget, hold kare, wow. Anchor de. Eh, kitna hai? Five mm. Kitna chota lagta hai? Eh, uh, right angle. Give me right angle. Give me right angle. Eh, chota wala dena right angle. Chota, chota dena yaar. Ek jan sat karo jara bhav. Haan, pakad aisa pakad. Ye pakad. Can you see this? Yes, sir. This this white structure, you can see articular cartilage. Okay? Yeah, yeah. White is articular cartilage. I am going to be very, very close to the articular cartilage. Yeah, we understand. This is a titanium anchor. Correct. So I have to be very, very careful. This is the double loaded titanium anchor. Huh? Double loaded. Double loaded Smith & Nephew titanium anchor. Twin fix. Double maza reta hai. That is called twin fix. You know what is double maza? No, no. Hmm? No, no. Ask Smith and nephew. Are they there or they just ran away? Chalo. Sir, so this, this anchor is at the deep, uh, deep MCL part of the... Yes. Finger. So okay. I'm going to take... These are four threads. All the threads are going to go through my M superficial MCL, right? Now I'm going to take another anchor. Or ek do bhai. Probably this is not. He is not going to require any uh, augmentation. Huh? Yeah, correct. This this repair. This will heal very nicely. Uh, this will heal very nicely. It's a very very vascular structure, and uh, if you do good job, they will heal very nicely. So position of second anchor? This is very close to the medial epicondyle. Basically you are creating Towards deep MCL with two anchors. Yes. So I am repairing deep MCL along with the POL with two anchors. It's not only a. Usually I take three anchors also. But here I think we will use... You can take two, three more anchors, no problem. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Okay. So this is my anchors. Give me mayo needle. You have mayo needle? Mayo, mayo needle hai kya? Mayo needle de do hai. A scoop de de jara. Okay, give me mayo needle. So here, you have to take each thread pass through your main mayo needle. Vinay? Yes, sir. So, Bhagya ki hai? No, no, everybody is here, sir. They are watching your demonstration. Wonderful. Kya baat kya It is worth recording for reference. It's 
आपने क्या रिकॉर्ड करने का यार रिकॉर्ड करने के लिए मटेरियल दिस इज बीइंग ट्रांसमिटेड लाइव ऑन ऑथो टीवी सो इट्स देयर फॉर फ्यूचर रेफरेंस अरे वाह और दोस और तो टीवी वाले से पैसा ले लो पहला सो श्याम इज अ गुड फ्रेंड आई नो फ्रेंड बेंड कुछ नहीं भाई ना भैया सबसे बड़ा रुपया यूपी का ही डायलॉग है मालूम है ना क्या रे सो व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इज आई हैव टेकन टू थ्री स्टिचेस एंड आई कम बैक राइट करेक्ट या सो सिमिलर वे आई हैव टू पास फ्यू मोर इट्स अ पेनफुल जॉब बट आई हैव नो अदर ऑप्शन So there are anchor with needle, Doctor Rajiv. Has yeah, yeah. There, there are anchors with needle, but so why didn't you use? Uh, I like Twin Fix. That is a very, very good anchor. Vinay, जब किसी से प्यार होता है ना, तो प्यार अंधा होता है. Ah, Vinay boss is laughing. प्यार अंधा होता है. और Twin Fix का और मेरा बहुत पुराना नाता है. अगर मेरे को और एक बच्चा होता तो उसका नाम मैं ट्विन फिक्स रखता था <laughs> अरे हंस कौन रहे विनय यस yes, और एक बच्चा होता तो उसका नाम ट्विन फिक्स रखता था मैं जैसे परपेंडिकुलर है तुम्हारे इधर यस सर यू नो व्हाट इज एलन मक्स मस्ट सन्स नेम एनीबॉडी कैन से Yes sir Elon Musk son's name No no Are Google marna bahut acha naam hai It's very difficult to pronounce So in the end I am going through the remaining part of my MCL what will happen is this will pull like this Yeah yeah you see this yes sir this is holding like this and then again i am going through the very edge of the ligament okay see this yes sir this is dr wale's technique unpublish hasmat yaar hasmat dil mein chhed kar deta to bhi hasta to bhi ha yes sir दिल में छेद कर देता जब भी तू हंसता है अशोक टू एडिट दिस हो विज अशोक अशोक श्याम आई डोंट नो विज अशोक हमें तो सिर्फ विनय मालूम है गाली देंगे मेरे को मैं इतना टाइम लगाएगा तो पीपल आर एंजॉइंग इट झूठ मत बोल कोई नहीं है उधर ओके कैन यू सी दिस नाउ यस सर या दिस इज द मीडियल कोलैटरल लिगामेंट व्हिच वी विल गेट इट बैक ऑन टू द फेमोरल कॉन्डाइल विद द हेल्प ऑफ मीडियल लैटरल रो एंकर नाउ आई विल गो टुवर्ड्स पीओएल 
So five threads are holding my MCL. Yes. It's not one, two, or three. It's five threads. In fact, sometimes I take six. How do you do otherwise? Same, sir. Same, so, no? I repair on the this thing, but I use that fiber tape and fiber wire uses it's a heavy coil. Augment also. So, augment with the fiber tape only. Okay. Over a post on the TBS side. Forcep, give me forcep. Sir, is there a difference between single row or double row repair? Yes, because you need a very good footprint and good stable repair. That you can achieve with double row repair in medial side. You want a lateral side also, you can do it. But medial side it works because healing pattern of medial side is very, very good. The healing, healing rate is also very good. So look at it, how how posterior I have gone. So you are advancing the POL. POL, yes. And that uh, instability and extension was significant to take that decision, you know. Okay, so now it's very simple, keep tightening it, you will get a better result. Keep tightening it till you get a better result. Hold this, hold this, hold this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this. Only one or two knots because I want others to come there, you know, like this. Yeah, yeah, we can appreciate that. Yeah? And only one on this side. Rest all, all I want is Wonderful compression you got, Dr. Ashwin. <coughs> okay. So, this itself is stabilized, see? That is the beauty of twin fix. Twin fix. Aaj ka party twin fix ke naam pe? Hmm? Chala. Okay. Hey, give me lateral row anchor. 
एक फर्स्ट ए दे दो अपना दो लगेगा चल इधर नाइफ दे दे मेरे को फोर सेप For the sake of the audience, you can just put one needle over the epicondyle so the leg will understand where you want to put your uh, needle. needle no? One needle there, uh, just to show. Just to like, show. Like Laprade was showing here, you know. Yes. Yeah, just one needle so that needle people will have orientation where it is going to be fixed. Yes. Yeah. Just for the sake no? of audience, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Just put a needle there so that. Are you going to insert the needle? Rajiv Raman is saying that you will insert the needle. Look, there is no needle there. नेक्स्ट गवर्नमेंट इधर आजी दादा का आदमी हो कैन यू सी दिस या 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 सो नाउ द वन थिंग विल कम लाइक दिस द अदर थिंग विल गो लाइक दिस यू नो द कंप्लीट रिपेयर सो यूजिंग टू मोर एंकर्स यस टू लैटरल एंकर जय हो स्मितन नेफ्यू की जय हो यस यस एनी एनी क्वेश्चन टिल नाउ एक कॉटरी है नो नो इट्स वेरी क्लियर एंड व कॉटरी है क्या? कॉटरी है क्या? नहीं है। चल मेरे को ड्रिल मारने के लिए दे। वो जाएगा नहीं ऐसा। हाँ, दे। दे इधर दे। गिव मी। एंकर So this anchor is commonly used for rotator cuff. Yes. Retriever. Lateral row anchor. Lateral row anchor. I am using it for my non-rotator cuff indication. Sir, instead of using two, can we use one at the insertion point of MCL? Yeah, there is there is a eight uh, anchor which is available which can take all eight threads. Is not available here. Otherwise, I would have used the one anchor only. There is an anchor which can take all eight three. Don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. Multifix is one here, just? Okay. So, okay. So all my threads are gone through this. Can you see? Can you show the anchor, sir, once? Hey, anchor, dikha na. Camera man. Can you see this? All the threads are going through the anchor mouth. Yes. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Okay, so that is how it will go. In fact, you know, in osteoporotic patients, sometimes we use it without uh, tap. Directly also you can tap it. So you will pull the threads now? Yes, I will put the th pull the threads now. You have to hold the anchor, pull it, and latch it here. You have to pull the thread, latch it here. Rook, rook, rook. Okay. And then keep on driving it till you get a sound. Uh, Dr. Ashwin, can, can you show, uh, stop there? What? What do you want to see? So your hand is in the middle of... Uh, oh, oh, anchor to no. 
okay so once it is tightened you can remove it yeah so this is how pol is repaired can Rail. you see this yeah yeah very yeah. tight and ah, very tight and now we'll put another anchor for this correct right a hold another twin fix idhar pakad idhar pakad skin ha a twin fix nahi ha multi fix skin uh, knife de mere ko 15 number see like this this there will be another anchor here Yeah, that that is the earlier one was a postoperative ligament. Now this is for MCL. That is for POL. And no, this is for MCL. Yeah, uh, this is for MCL. A fifteen number dena raja. Ye kya diya? Pandra number dena. Fifteen number. What will be your rehab protocol for this? See, this patient needs to be uh, in brace at least for ten to fifteen days, minimum ten days, and then you can start gradual uh, range of motion. weight bearing weight bearing you can start after 2 weeks no problem with brace yes yes weight bearing rob laprad says that all multi ligament repair reconstruction you have to start in mob in mob immediate mobilization otherwise they'll fail remember we had this discussion about rehab and he said i am very aggressive about rehab so after seeing him even i was i have become very aggressive on rehab you go up to laser mark yes so how long you keep them in knee brace while walking it week 10 weeks 12 weeks uh, actually not you know you can make them uh, mobile within uh, 8 to 10 days a uh, knee brace knee brace in the hinge knee brace yeah. and uh, they can resume to their uh, activities of daily life as early as possible but uh, the major rehab is in the form of knee range and quadriceps okay. that has to be very fast hai na dusra bhi do hai na are yaar udhar bhi do hai bhai so what is the trick you know one limb little longer so that it comes very easily yeah and then you can take another limb hold it चल इधर ए राइट एंगल लगा हैमर दो चल पकड़ो कैन यू सी दिस नाउ राजीव या वी कैन सी सर ए हैमर दे जरा और जाना है इसको अंदर Yes. Cameraman, can you focus over the anchor? Hmm. Anchor is here. Ah, cameraman, ha. Cameraman, ha. Cameraman, ko. Yeah. Ha, cameraman. So, hai. cameraman. Oh, and cameraman. If you, uh, Roshan, you can show him, uh, the audience how to tighten the thread because that uh, yeah groove because uh, yeah that will be helpful. Yes. So yeah, just you can see. See what I'm doing. I'm taking the threads and that uh, putting it here in the ratch yeah. and tightening it, right? So look at the MCL now. Can you see this? Yes. Actually, and then it's a end-on view. All uh, uh, later on we'll see here. And now you tighten it. Yes. Yes. This sound is good. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Fantastic. And you can show the stability right now, in spite. Of, you can see the whole of the MCL has been tightened up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is the tight MCL. Yes. Fantastic. Huh? 
फैंटास्टिक फैंटास्टिक खाना मिलेगा ना आज हाँ खाना मिलेगा सो नाउ आई प्रोसीड विथ इफ यू बायोस्क्रू ए क्या अपना टनल साइज क्या था गिव मी आटरी निडर होडर टनल साइज क्या था अपना हाँ नौ से ड्रीम किया क्या साढ़े आठ से नहीं किया हम टेन का लेन ट्वेंटी फाइव सो नाउ आई एम टाइटनिंग इट यू कैन सी रमन राजीव Yeah, you are very aggressive. And usually, I <laughs> well, after repair of MCL, <laughs> I used to, oh, I don't deal with this system. ये ये confidence का पैसा है. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are confident about your repair. ये confidence का पैसा है. इसके लिए मैं तेरे को दिखा है ना. तो अगले time तू बोल सकता है कि India में भी कोई Mike Alal है. हाथ नहीं हाथ. हाँ? Yeah. And somebody was asking me how much extension. Yes, yes. You know, I don't do it in complete extension, around 10 degree of flexion, but I don't give any posterior. Broad. You know. So I'll just show you my final stability once I finish ACL. Yes. Tibia posterior. Somebody will do yeah. closure. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can show the graph if there is uh, because yes. You have now, now I'll show you. Look. Now I'll show you rock stability. See this. Fantastic. Karo. Here, dekho. This and this. Yeah, Amit is okay. happy. He will be aggressive yeah. in the hip yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sir, sure. can you show us the intras uh, arthroscopic view of the medial side? How much uh, yeah, yeah, joint arthroscopic space? Arthroscopic view. Just a minute. Huh? How yeah. much joint space is reduced? Light. Yeah. Light. One minute. मैं कभी किया नहीं अभी करता हूँ. ए लाइट सोर्स ऑन कर ऑन रिक्वेस्ट ऑफ डॉक्टर सो एंड सो अमित 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 झा इज आर्थोस्कोपी सर्जन हियर इन एपेक्स हां आई नो ओके आई टुडे आई केम टू नो ही वाज माय स्टूडेंट इन नॉर्थ बंगाल मेडिकल कॉलेज तेरे तो बहुत सारे बच्चे ऐसे पड़े हुए रे ना जायश राजीव Hey Raju, तेरे नाजा है। You are you are live on Ortho TV. तो क्या हुआ? तेरे नाजा है बच्चों की कुछ कमी थोड़ी है। कितनों को तूने ऐसे रस्ते पे छोड़ दिया बिचारे लोगों को? हाँ? ये क्या हुआ? Okay. Yes. Who? Somebody wanted to see? Yes sir. Good. ओके या सर एंड गुड टीवी ऑफ इमरल एसीएल ओके पीसीएल हैप्पी यस चलो मैं अभी थक गया हूँ मैं आ रहा हूँ नीचे आइए आइए सर थैंक यू सर इट्स अ वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटेशन कट कर देना सर एंड बिग क्लैप Today at 7:30 at Four Elements Hotel, we'll be having the gala dinner. So I invite all the faculty and the delegates. And tomorrow we'll be starting the breakfast at 8 o'clock. So I request everybody to be on time so that we can finish at the uh, at time. Thank you everyone for patient hearing and thank you faculty and the whole supporting staff. Um, Actually, we'll meet for it was the very nice session, Suru. I came little late, but I enjoyed it. Very nice. Thank Congrats you, thank for you, such a nice session.